Good evening, and welcome to... Uh, hold for airplane. Okay, we're good? Great. Good evening, and welcome to your second annual George Lucas Talk Show Oscar Night Oscar Show, presented by John Hodgman. Hi, I'm John Hodgman, and welcome to your second annual George Lucas Talk Show Oscar Night Oscar Show. Without further ado, here's George Lucas. Webster's Dictionary defines the word academy to mean a body of established opinion widely accepted as authoritative in a particular field. They define the word award to mean something that is conferred or bestowed, especially on the basis of merit or need. If you look up the word Oscar, it says, used especially for any of a number of golden statuettes awarded annually by a professional organization for notable achievement in motion pictures. But the Academy Awards, popularly known as the Oscars, are more than just a bunch of golden trophies. They are a beacon of hope, a mark of undeniable quality and achievement in our industry, the entertainment industry, the movie business, the talking pictures, an annual event where the best of the best gather together to find out who gets trophies and who doesn't. And we make the ones who don't get trophies watch the ones who do get trophies get their trophies and, and they have to sit there and they just have to take it. It's when our whole business gets together to decide things like, oh, is Star Wars the best picture of the year? Or do we maybe want to give it to Woody Allen for making a movie about how he isn't good at relationships with women? Hey, great call forward, by the way. That turned out really well. Really held up. Hope everyone's happy. You could have had Star Wars as best picture, but you know, you gotta live with that one now. <laughs> anyway, it's Oscar night, and uh, let's do this. Were you enlisted in the German army? Your friends are with you and you steal a goose from a farm. It's World War I and things are crazy. Your buddy gets a letter from his wife, but he can't read it so you have to read it to him. It's World War I and things are crazy. You keep on shooting, you keep on shooting. All quiet on the Western Front. Because now it's World War One. All quiet on the Western Front. Because now it's World War One. Way of water, Omatakaya. Way of water, Sully's my guy. I was a soldier, now I'm Navi. Getting ready for Avatar 3. Avatar, way of water, but oh, oh here comes Colonel Miles. Oh, well, oh, well, oh, well. Avatar, Avatar, making friends with the whale. Avatar, Avatar, that one guy got impaled. Uh huh, blue, blue, uh huh, blue, blue, uh huh, blue, 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 uh huh, blue, blue, uh huh, blue, blue, uh huh, blue, 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 blue. Way 
when it began. I think I made myself clear. I didn't want to be your friend. You want to talk, but I don't want to hear you. And so I told you what I do. Hands, chopping hands, chopping my fingers off of my hands. Banshees of an insurance. I threw fingers at your house. of mine Then your donkey ate them and he died. Sorry. Like the legend of the snowman Huh? Snowman and the showman mm, was working on a hayride. Uh huh. They played the record, he's wise. Ooh. He got so mad when he sang to a dog. I got so mad, told him sing Santa Claus. He's always singing his songs. Sometimes I'm doing him wrong. He will become an icon. I'm up all night to make Elvis. I work as hard as I can, but I am only one man. Some people don't understand. I'm up all night to make Elvis. 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 Welcome to your life In a laundromat At the IRS They will find you Waymond in the elevator Says he will explain more later Everything, everywhere There's a multiverse It's a crazy thing Many different worlds It's a mindfuck There are many versions of you Now your daughter's name is Jobu Everything, everywhere, all at once There's a room Randy Newman, your voice is a raccoon. This old movie is so profound and it's so nice to see short round. Everything, everywhere, all at once. I give an interview at the New Yorker Festival and I am promoting all my things. I have a book I wrote. I also have a new recording of Mahler's Fifth Dam Symphony. 
I teach a master class and it goes viral and then I spiral and I roll my life feels so chiral I play piano, but damn, oh, my life's not going as planned, oh, cause I think I just got cancelled. For the last time. It's me, Tar. I'm the problem, it's Tar. We can't help being just who we are. And in a way, it seems as if my life is slightly tragic, and the things I've done would indicate that I am problematic. Teaching the plain class and paying the bar tabs. All of those students so eager to fly. Doing some push ups and hoping for good luck. All of them want to go way up in the sky. Fly in a plane again, it's Top Gun Maverick Trying to keep my friend's kid from the grave Some people claim that he can really fly a plane But I know that's him that I'll save Well, there's some real rich people on a luxury cruise. Millionaires and models all drinking up the booze. Then there's a storm and some pirates at sea. And some of these people have a violent diarrhea. A triangle of sadness. It is a triangle of sadness. A triangle of sadness. Grow up on a boat. Talking, all the women 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 talking. Now put your hands up. And now, the Oscars.
Lucas. Hello, I'm George Lucas, creator of Star Wars. Welcome to Oscar Night. Um, Patrick, are you there? Patrick? Oh, maybe Pat. Maybe I'm just going to do this one by myself tonight. I hope everyone's ready. The Oscars haven't officially started yet, but our Oscar show has already begun. Uh, and I, I, I hope that everyone... Uh, there you are, Patrick. Thank you for my, joining us. As oh. soon as I went to go click, my computer froze completely. But I'm well, here. Patrick, uh, I, I, it seemed like Crawley, and I, I assume my cold open was in very low res. What happened? Yeah. Well, uh, for the people who are watching on YouTube, they won't have noticed because it will be in perfectly high res. I think we were playing it through a different way because it's a you know it's a long well, opening. This is the way. This, this is the way, Patrick. Yeah, so people watching in the future will have no idea what we're talking about. Well, I assume people in the future will have other things to worry about than what we did tonight. Maybe. They'll have new problems. Oh, you think problems will be solved tonight and people won't have anything else to talk about except this in the future? No, but I just think... Uh, oh, Patrick. I think this will stand the test of time. Oh, wow. That's bold. Yeah. I, I like that. I like that confidence. Yeah. Uh, um, Patrick, happy Oscar night. Thank you so much. Uh, it, it was. Uh, we had a fun time doing this last year, so we decided we would do it again. We did. We Basically, did. what happened, that it's a common experience. That's what happened with Star Wars and Indiana Jones. Like, I like doing something. I'll do it again. Mm -hmm. American Graffiti. Mm -hmm. I'll do more American Graffiti. Like, if I like something, I like to do it again, at least once. Yeah. 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 And now we're here. And now we're here, and we're going to be presenting. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the format, uh, where's your monitor that you're watching the Oscars on, Patrick? Right here. It is a laptop. To your left. laptop, right here. Look who's on TV. The Mandalorian. Oh, he's gone. Mandalorian oh well. Well, I, we, I think we saw it for a second. So okay. off to your left, uh, similarly, uh, I have, a, I have a, 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 a monitor off to my left that I'll be watching. Yeah. And the yeah. thing is, we want to encourage people uh, to, uh, if you're watching this now and you think, oh, I'm going to stop in a few minutes when the Oscars start, we all mm -hmm. have multiple devices. We encourage, even if you, uh, either if you don't choose for our show to be your main Oscar night entertainment, mm -hmm. we, we'd love it if we were your second screen experience. Yes. On a device, on a tablet. I mean, what could it hurt? Just uh, keep us on. Unmute us, mute us, whatever you want. We'd also like to be the primary screen. You know what I mean? Put I the mean, Oscars on the choice. You want to be, you want to be uh, number one choice. Yeah. But we understand there's a legacy to the Oscars. Some people want to see the real thing. I think we offer more value, personally. And we should... We should also get the elephant out of the room. Obviously, uh, Watto's at the Oscars. Yeah. Um, well, because he's uh, Watto uh, is always he's always loved the glitz and the glamour of Hollywood. Yeah. He can't resist. He can't resist uh, the allure. Whereas well, I, the crazy, I, I'm happy to not be there. I'd rather enjoy it this way. I mean, the crazy thing is, like, one of his other friends, one of his roommates, is there tonight too. It's exactly. weird, like. Him and Jake, you never see him and Jake at the same place, but they're both right. at the Dolby right now. Big, big night for Jake Sully. Big night um, for Jake Sully. It could be a very big night. The first yeah. of many big nights if if the Avatar series of movies continue to uh, uh, rack up wins starting tonight. Did the first Avatar That's win true. awards? How many awards did yeah. Avatar 1 win? I don't know. I would ask. I I mean, many, many, many. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? Actually, why don't we ask Jake? Jake will. Jake would know better than any internet source. He he, he would be the authority. Why don't we ask Jake? No, he's at he's at the Oscars. Patrick, I'm Absolutely. telling you, I'm not asking you. Burn the ass, no, he, Patrick. He's at the show. He's at the Patrick, show. I don't want to do this every Oscars. Where you? This is your one <laughs> oh, job. Yeah. This is your one job to do what I say. I'm not. This has already him. been such a disaster. Low resolution. You're not here when I intro you. That was humiliating. Make the call. Make the call, I, Patrick. Either make the call know. or remove yourself from the stream. I can do this by myself. Okay. 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 I'll call him. Hang on. I'm happy about this. Fuck is up, my man. J Jake, it's Patrick from the George Lucas Talk Show. Yeah, I fucking know. I got caller ID. Oh, I drink solely. I got smartphone, bitch. Didn't know you had my number saved. Jake, are you at? Are you at the uh, at the Dolby? Uh, Jake, uh, retired filmmaker George Lucas is asking if you're at the Dolby right now. 
Yeah, of course I am. Yeah, fucking course I am. You know who my date is? <laughs> Who's your date? Natiri, hottest bitch in the game. You ever heard of her? <laughs> so you guys hang because out. You guys hang out know. IRL too. It's not just in the movies. Hang out. We're married. Bro. Oh, my family is my fortress. What the fuck are you talking about? Oh, okay. Okay, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I didn't you know, know it was I, like uh, a. It's like a Mila you know, Ashton situation where you guys are together in real life and on that '90s show. Yeah, we weren't during the first movie, and now we are. I don't know. Get with the fucking program. You know Pyocon? I well, yeah. I mean, I don't know him personally, but I've seen the movie. Well, yeah, I do. Okay. I got his number. I was literally out with him last night. Where did you guys go? Where did we fucking go, bro? We're in Hollywood. I don't know if you heard of biggest fucking movie of the year. Now, Jake, Worldwide. I'll say this. Domestically, top gun beat us. Worldwide, we got them. Jake, I'll say this. You're at the Dolby. It sounds very echoey. Is the Dolby not crowded right now? Motherfucker. What are you talking about? I don't know. I just assumed it would be louder. Um, George, do you have anything you want to say to Jake? Uh, just, I, I hope he has a big night tonight. I, I have a good feeling. Thank you. He says he has a good feeling. Tell George I appreciate it. And thanks a lot, Patrick, for not wishing me good luck. We got fucking eight nominations and some shit. I mean, you don't want to wish me luck? Well, you've just never been super nice to me, you know? What are you talking about? I saved your number. Who else would do that? I guess that's true. I, I don't have your number true. saved, Patrick. Really? No. I mean, famously, I don't even know how to operate my cell phone. That's true. I'm uh, the biggest movie star in the world. Do you understand how busy I am? No, I get this it. This is well, Hollywood's biggest night, and I had the biggest film of 2022 internationally, domestically, Tom Cruise people. Sure. Well, he brought back the people to the movies. Um, now, I, I brought back the people to the movies. Uh, the potato, the potato. Movies now, Jake, if we want to check in throughout the night, will you be able to like send us little messages about how you're feeling? Yeah, absolutely. How about this? Call me at any time and I will respond in a one sentence only and then hang up. Wow. That feels real, uh, real curt for two people I, th- I assume you consider your friends. I'm busy. I'm busy. Oh, my God. You know, my, my buddy James is here right now. Oh, okay. Can we Say talk to him? Say hi to Jim. No, you can't. We you can't. can't. You can't. He runs, he's running hot tonight. He's okay. running hot. Jake, Jake, tell Jim George says hi. I will. Yeah, no, he'll love to hear that. Uh, uh, I, Patrick, you know, if I if I relate to Patrick says hi, he wouldn't even be able to process what that means. Sure. It becomes uh, a whole thing. Yeah. But yeah, if you want my opinion on any one event or like a word outcome at any point in the night, feel free to call me. I will respond in one sentence and then hang up immediately, but it's absolutely something I'm saying live and okay. not like a pre recorded soundboard. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. that's good to know. That's good and to maybe know. I'll call him later and talk more at length, but we'll see. Uh, open bar, you know? Oh, okay. I'm, well, I'm curious to see how that goes. Jake, are you on Mastodon? I, mean, I so rarely get time away from the kids. I want to make the most of it. Sure. Jake, George, George wants to know if you're on Mastodon, Jake. Yeah, of course I am, bro. I'm on everything. You're, I'm Jake right. Scully. I'm the number one movie star in the world. You're on Hive? Yeah. What's your I'm handle so people can follow? I'm on, I'm on Truth Social. Oh, God. Jake. All right. Jake, thank you for calling in. Bye. Bye, okay. Jake. Happy Oscar night. I hung up before you said I that. I don't know why you're surprised that... Uh, Jake talked to you that way. He's got a very specific personality. Yeah, I guess that's true. Um, it's fine. I guess that's I'm true. Not... It is true. Don't no, say I, I know. guess I'm just that's not true. Used to it. I'm just not used to it. I mean, if you truly are guessing, that's a fantastic guess. But Wait, I think you actually have... tell you. George, what? did you... I was watching... Before we got on, I had KTLA on, the local news, yeah. and they were doing, like, the red carpet thing. Votto, they showed Votto. Really? Did I tell you this? No. Oh, it was... Hang on. Wait, I pulled the clip. Yeah. Hold on one second. Um, hang on, let me just finish. Okay, who's he go. wearing? Uh, well, you'll see. <laughs> KTLA's Chris Wolf joins us live from Hollywood, where the countdown to the Oscars is on tonight. Good evening. The 95th annual Academy Awards are just hours away here in the heart of Hollywood, outside the Dolby Theater at Hollywood and Highland. Lots of road closures now in effect for the Oscars. Major roads closed include Hollywood Boulevard, Highland Avenue, Hawthorne Avenue, and Orange Drive. Avoid the area if you don't need to be out here. Enjoy all of the glitz, glamour, and drama from the comfort of home. We'll be back here all night. For now, reporting live in Hollywood, I'm Chris Wolf. John, Kareem, back to you. He must have got there so early because they only showed him. Like, no one else had shown up yet. 
I think they got there so early that it was when they still had last year's carpet. They hadn't taken it up yet to put down the champagne carpet. So he probably uh-huh. was one of the first people there. Yeah. I yeah. imagine probably there's there's footage somewhere of them saying, Wado, you have to get out. We have to lay down the new champagne yeah. carpet. Wait, wait. We're not done putting the champagne down yet. But, you know, he's always been like that. He's always been, you know, he would be the first one on set Yeah. Uh, because we just have him in the hard drive, obviously. Um and and he would be the last one in the render, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. he, he's that he is that kind of guy. That makes sense, George. Can we do some plugs up top? Uh, absolutely. Um, I want to say on March 29th at Caviar. Oh, oh, before we bring this up, hold on, take it down, take it down. That's a big, exciting announcement. This oh. year, the Oscars, the sure. Oscars, uh, in a bid for modernization, they announced that there are going to be special QR codes in mm-hmm. the commercial breaks. And we've got them too. Tonight, we are the George Lucas Talk Show Oscar Night Oscar Show is so excited to present a series of QR codes. So get your, you know, we told you, you know, you've got your device, have another device ready to scan that QR code yeah. or to click it or do whatever you do with QR codes. But these QR co- codes are real. They will mm-hmm. take you. And we've got a number of big surprises. We've got a big announcement later in the show that mm-hmm. has nothing to do with the Oscars. Yeah. Uh, and these QR codes are, are going to be, uh, I think I think pound for pound as exciting as the QR codes. And again, I'm not discouraging people. By all means, try the QR codes that the official Oscars are going to be uh, offering tonight. No, because yeah. we want to be able to compare to see how good these QR codes are. Patrick, sure. you assembled these QR codes, correct? I did. I did. I hope they work. <laughs> I, I, hope I, they I, work. I I specified. So I was in the idea uh, room. It was a virtual yeah. room. Yeah. We were, you know, I was in there uh, laying out the bold vision for where these QR codes would take people. It really is, uh, it's such an exciting time to be alive. The fact that you have these QR codes, these yeah. images that they look like modern art. Perhaps someone one might look at them and say, this looks like nonsense. It makes no sense. But then you hold your device, you scan the QR code, and it takes you on an adventure. Sure. Uh, this is something that would not have been possible 20 years ago, 30 years ago. 100 years ago, 200 years ago, 1,000 years ago. Think of it in the in ancient Rome. If you had a QR even. code, useless. Uh, yeah. For all their innovation as a society, they would. It was. it's only our current civilization that is sure. able to experience the joy of a modern QR code. And I couldn't be more excited to present these digital wonder. Uh, it's like a portal to another dimension. Yes. And now here's what I'll say. A couple of these QR codes... They will tell you what they are on the screen. Yeah. A couple of them are just surprises. Surprises. So you have to click it. You have to go on your own. We're not going to tell you what it is. Yeah. Most of them uh, will stay up on screen for 10 seconds. So you have 10 seconds to do this. This also should hypothetically work. uh, If you're watching this on YouTube in the future, you can also go check it out there. So for the first one that we're going to show, March 29th, George. You ready? Yes. We're doing two shows. Look Look at that code. Two shows at Caveat Theater in New York City. You can either use the code or use the website, the bit.ly down there. We're doing an early show and an after dark show. You can also stream these. Tickets are moving fast, but you can still get them right now. I would would say if you want to get an in-person ticket, grab it soon. But then, George, the next week, right? I'm going to move on to the next one. Yeah. So, no, but before we move on, these are our first in-person New York City shows of 2023 and we don't know when the next ones uh, might be there are none on the schedule that's true so you never know you never know you know we, we i think back to 2020 we had uh you know a couple of shows early in 2020 and then yeah. we didn't have any more in-person shows for years yeah i don't recall why but i i really want to encourage people who want a chance it's the there'll never be another first east coast george lucas talk show after dark in person in new york city ever again this is the one time for the first time that's true and we got some cool guests we're not going to announce them just yet but we've got some cool guests well ideally we want to sell out before we announce the guests so it's sort of a little reward for people who uh yeah who bought the tickets based on our track record the second thing is uh for all those international fans out there who were like when are you leaving the dang u.s Georgie Porgies. Georgie Porgies, we have some news for you. Well, yeah. not news. We've announced not it. News. But April 7th and April 8th at the Soho Theater. We're doing two shows. They're at 9.15 p.m. These will not be streamed. They will probably be filmed, but they will not be streamed. Again, almost 
selling out very well. Like almost all of the seats are sold out and we want to get people there. So that's exciting. And I don't know how much longer these tickets are going to be on sale. So that's that. And I just want people to grab those tickets now. Yeah. Oh, hey. Oh, hello, Rachel. How are you? Hey, Rachel. How's it I'm, going? I'm good. I'm doing Happy Oscar night. Guys. Happy mm-hmm. Oscar night. I can't watch them because I don't have any <laughs> any participating. Because like Hulu dropped something. Do you, want, do you want my ABC login? Literally give me your ABC login right wow. now. <laughs> watching. Is this, is this legal? What's happening? Or is this you know crime? what's so know. hilarious is I just have Jimmy Kimmel like mocking me on my TV right now. Oh, he does that. Which I'm going to see him actually on Tuesday because I'm going to do a Rachel, show on Rachel, Rachel, I actually yeah. have some very bad news uh, because I I talked to Jimmy Kimmel earlier. Right. Um, he ate your Halloween candy. Oh, no. No, that's this okay. Is just, this is real. This is real. Went. It's He ate it. It's gone. It's okay. It's okay. All right. You took it very well. I think a, I was a, only a, doing a comedy bit. That's one of Jimmy's classic comedy bits is that he'll tell, he'll have parents tell their children that they ate their Halloween candy and then watch them have emotional problems. What parents have get hungry too. And it's okay. Mm-hmm. Rachel, what's that over your shoulder? What here? Which no, thing? other side. Yeah. What's there? all that? What's all that's, that? I literally leave for LA in like five hours. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. And I'm spending bad. time with you people. <laughs> Uh, well, actually, we can go run through the checklist before you uh, to make sure you have everything you need for the trip. You got your yeah. passport? Yeah. I do have my passport. Great. You got your, to LA. Uh, uh, what, are you using a digital ticket or did you print one out? Um, I have a digital ticket and I am checked into my flight. Great. Great. Right. Did you check a bag? Uh, I am checking a bag. Yes. You have it labeled. So in case it goes missing. I have it labeled and I have it air tagged. Great. That's good. Because my luggage just got lost when I was doing the Shazam press tour in it. We all got to Italy and our luggage was nowhere to be found. Did they get it back to you? They did. But try explaining that to Helen Mirren. Like, oh, sorry, they lost your bags. (laughs) Like, sure. So are you you're flying in for the Vanity Fair party tonight? Uh, (laughs) Can you imagine? (laughs) Can you imagine? I was like, you know what? I'm tired of, of this Brooklyn lifestyle. I've got to go to the Vanity Fair just for the Vanity Fair party. <laughs> no, the Shazam oh. premiere is on Tuesday night. And right, oh. I'm going right from, I'm doing Kimmel that night and then going right to the premiere. So thanks, thanks for, for the You know, at the- uh, Didn't get the ticket. I'm so sorry. <laughs> if you have a problem with your subscription, can you get that dealt with at the Vanity Fair party? Like if- yeah, I'm going to go up to somebody at the party and be like, can you help me with something? I'm just, yeah. I'm having a little I, bit of trouble. I feel like I've missed a couple of issues. and I don't know if they're going to the right to the ranch or if they're going to, I don't know. Exactly. Exactly. You get it. You've yeah. had those problems before, right, George? Well, it's nice when a party has a practical element, I think. Exactly. It's Are actually, really- it's the Geek Squad is sponsoring the Vanity Fair <laughs> party. I'm not good <laughs> at parties. I didn't go last year because I wasn't allowed because I was doing Snow White and they were very scared I was going to get COVID. So they were like, no parties. And so my right. boyfriend, Josh and I, we just went back to my hotel. We got Frank's hot chicken. Yeah. And good. that was, it. That was our after party. Well, now let's let's reflect on that Oscar experience because we famously, we famously saw you there. How you guys, was you guys were included in my Oscar yes. experience. Did you have fun? Was it a good time? Um, I think it was definitely a weird one for some reason. Yeah. Yeah, definitely a weird night. I don't know if you guys mm-hmm. remember, but you, you weren't um, invited. <laughs> <laughs> that's not even what she's talking about, George. I know, but that's part of the weird thing when you show up to something. <laughs> then yeah, well, publicly well, you weren't say, invited to, and then you, you got to go, and you made a good joke about it on. I did, TV. I did, and I was actually mm-hmm. I was texting with Jacob Alordi today, and I was like, it's so weird that they're even having another one of these things after we totally like tore it down last year. <laughs> yeah, it, some people thought that last year's broadcast was just the Comedy Central roast of the I mean, Oscars, and hosted they, by Rachel. It would have been right. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it's interesting. It's interesting. I don't know how they're going to possibly top that this year because it was really funny. You had the height dynamic. You have this six foot Jesus guy and this five foot nothing girl, and then yeah. she makes a baller joke. Everybody laughs so hard that they almost like they cause an earthquake in California. Yeah, and yeah. then something else happened. Like, what are you going to do to top Not that? 
if they had stopped the show after you made the joke, we'd Nothing be in a completely different place today. We could have saved Hollywood. We could have. Yeah. But alas. Well, uh, no. just to let people know, Jimmy Kimmel is on the broadcast right now. He's making jokes. He's got one hand in his pocket and the other one he's pointing while he makes the joke. He's I'm seeing him to... make I'm seeing him make a joke about Steve. Really? No, buddy. my buddy Steve? Your buddy Steve, that's what Our I'm saying. Buddy Steve. Getting yeah. slammed. Oh, we all now. That's one big difference since last year because Patrick was recently, he took a photo with Steve. So yeah. now all three of us have spent time in the presence with our buddy of Steve. Buddy uh -huh. Steve. That's yeah. true about all three of us. That's true. <laughs> We're all friends. I don't know what Kimmel's jokes are, but I will say this. The left hand is completely dormant. I don't know if something's wrong or if mm -hmm. that's his style. But <laughs> he's he just did a joke where he sort of he did a way, like he's sort of doing things with his hand to emphasize uh, the jokes. Now he's got both hands in pocket. And I will just... say throughout the entire broadcast last year, one of my best friends, DJ Catrona, who's a, a fan of the show, Hello, said DJ. that uh, he was sending me pictures of me whenever I was on camera being like, what are you doing with your hands? What are you doing with your hands? <laughs> And it was it was actually really nerve wracking. So you got to be George. You got to be careful because Jimmy might see this someday and get really mm -hmm. self conscious about where he's placing his hands. Yeah, both yeah. hands back in the pockets. He's holstered them. It's almost as if he heard. I don't know if he has an ear wig that maybe someone's saying like, "Put the hands in the pocket." People are talking about the gesture. Yeah, you're the producers are watching no, this show. Back so out. He just did a gesture where he did four fingers and the thumb was tucked. Now, Rachel, let's say we're it's the year 2029, right? Okay. We it's, made it. We made it. Everything's yeah. going fine. Guess who they asked to host the Oscars? It's Rachel. Call they asked Rachel to host okay. the Oscars. Okay, it's me. It's me. How, it's you. You're the host. It's you. Yeah. Um, how do you start the show? Oh, a musical number for sure. Okay. What it's what saying? people are expecting, and I will give it to them with yeah. with all of like there will be no stops. It, mm -hmm. I mean, that is who I am. I got to give it to them. Yeah. That is yeah. also, the singing is my forte. That's what I know how to do. So <laughs> that's that would be how I would do that. And also, I think I've made more musical films than not. And I have a feeling that sure. probably isn't going to change in, in uh, six years. So, yeah. yeah. Do you want to sing for us right now? I don't. You know, I've decided... <laughs> It's one of those um, things where I've been doing all this press for Shazam yeah. and people mm -hmm. are asking David Sandberg like why I don't sing in this movie. And he's like, I didn't know she could sing. And I was like, my what one weird... credit, my only credit at that time. But it West would be fun if you were the only one in Shazam to sing. I think I as mean, far as I know. As far as I know. I think we could have gotten Zach Levi to do something. Sure. Also, a he, he's literally a Disney prince. Like, I'm a Disney princess. We could have made something happen. Does Helen Mirren you know, sing? She doesn't. She swears up and down wow. that she cannot and will not. Okay. I don't believe her. Lucy Lou sang I, a song on Sesame Street. I just Googled it. She did, so. but she she also swears yeah. up and down that she can't sing. But I I also don't I don't listen to her when she says that. Yeah. My goal um, is to get everybody to sing with me all the time. Sure. Shazam. Yeah, we it's could get the fury on. of the gods. Right, right. The gods mm -hmm. are very mad. Exactly. They're angry at Shazam. Yeah. Now, can you you should pitch the audience on why they should go see Shazam next? Yeah, week? let's let's tell some Shazam it's pretty thing. soon, right? It's, let's make this into a real press stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this so I can I can justify my time here to my publicist. Yeah. Ashton, see, I'm doing it. Um, okay, Shazam two. Fury of the Gods. We got Helen Mirren. We got Lucy Liu. We got me for some reason. And we're really mad because Zach Levi's an idiot. And why did he do that? He gave all these little kids powers. Stupid, dum dum. We bring out a dragon, put a dome around the world. It's getting very hot in Philly. What are we going to do? Somebody might die. I don't really know. Maybe more than one person. Maybe me. You should go see in theaters March 17th. Great. Uh, now, did, did I, I want Georgie Porgies who are watching this now, I want you to. Make a promise and say, make a promise in the comments. Uh, whether you're gonna go to see it in the movie theater or not, promise you'll buy an opening night ticket. <laughs> if they're sold yeah. out, buy a ticket for the next available screening. I don't know, Saturday, see it. Saturday, Sunday, yes. But sometimes people are like, I don't want to go to the movies. 
Buy a ticket anyway. It is Buy a ticket it anyway, is. and then you can justify watching it on streaming whenever it comes out on streaming. But we but we want the theatrical experience to continue, and the, that can only it's like really good too. <laughs> You've seen hey. it. You've seen it. You hey, the... look, I special like guest. Hey. Special guest. Yes. Special guest Josh is crying. Welcome back. Josh. Welcome back. And, and what was the other? Hey, was that a game controller? Remember you were on your year ago backstage at yeah. the Oscars? Yeah. The Oscars. Oh. Backstage at the Oscars. Oh, that's right. That's how right. many how many devices right. do you have? You have a, a game controller and a phone? Um, if you count the headset, that's three. Okay. Three. Um, I can grab my laptop for you and make it. Yeah, please. Work. Let's do it. Yeah, That'd be great. <laughs> There's some Y2K nightmare that's about to take place for sure. Oh, Rachel, you weren't even alive for Y2K. <laughs> Shut up, Patrick. <laughs> Jimmy has both hands out of pocket. Oh no! He he's means business. He's a, he's in the two-handed. He's gesturing like crazy. Whatever he's doing. Wow. This guy planned his hand gestures uh, magnificently for this set. I wish that were me. <laughs> Who did you meet last year at the Oscars that was like, oh, this is crazy? Was there anyone? Um, I will say Nicole Kidman came up to me and it was like crazy because I was backstage walking back to my seat. It was right after I got off with you guys, genuinely. Right. And I was like, put my phone away, walking, walking, walking. Nicole Kidman grabs me by the shoulders and she's like, Rachel, you were so wonderful in your film. And like, I'm looking up at her because she's so tall. So you're saying we were so close to having Nicole Kidman on the show? <laughs> you were this close to having Nicole Kidman guest on your show. Wow. And I would assume in that in that venue to have her say that, that compliments feel good in a place like that. You know what? Compliments feel good in a place like this. Yeah. 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 And and I was, I, I could, after it happened, I walked away being like, what 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 just happened? And now we're doing a movie together, Spellbound, which is crazy. so fun. That's crazy. Which and I didn't know she was in that. I think she knew she was in that at the time, but I didn't know. That didn't get announced till way later. Have you recorded with anyone or are you guys all recording separately? All separately. I I have heard a lot of Javier Bardem stuff though, mm -hmm. and it is just so wonderful. Like he's so wonderful. He's You're great. saying this is a Lucy and Ricky reunion movie? They are my parents. Lucy and Desi are my parents. That's, yeah, that's right. Yes. Wow. <laughs> wow. It's kind of crazy. That's wild. And that's being the Ricardos. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, are you excited about any particular thing that's happening on the Oscars tonight? Is there anything category you're really looking forward to? You don't have to express your preference publicly. Just is there a category you that know, you're like? I feel like there's a lot of toss-ups this year. We've had a lot of sweeps throughout awards season this year, which mm -hmm. I, I'm happy about what has swept, but I find sweeps boring. You know mm -hmm, what I mean? Right. You want Where some I really upset. Like, I like that right now best actor is a bit of a toss-up. Like sure. I like thinking like I don't know what's going to happen sure, um, yeah. because there there is a science behind it and, and everything like that. So I guess I am kind of excited to see who wins best actor. Um, cause I feel like there's like a shoe in answer that the Academy would vote for, but there's so many powerful performances in that category. Yeah. Um, you know, but my, my, my disappointment in the lack of like ethnic nominees this year is real. So I'm just sure. kind of sitting here supporting everybody black and everybody Asian. Yeah. So I'm like here, like really championing. So I think know. we are gearing up to the first uh, the first category of the night. There were just some dancers that came on stage and danced Jimmy Kimmel off. Mike Feist, Mike Feist, Feist. Mike Feist. <laughs> <laughs> um, someone is saying uh, another Rachel GLTS appearance means you're going to book another movie soon, which is great. Okay, that seems to be the, really, that's, that's, that is so good. It is true. Every yeah. time you've appeared on the show, you have uh, booked a big thing shortly after that. Yeah. True. But uh, someone, uh, someone is pitching something, and I think this is a good thing that we can all get behind. Oh, gosh. Hey, you should be in the next Fletch movie. Oh, God. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, <laughs> uh, done and done. We're in. That's all right. Great. We're going to announce the first winner of the first category. That's the first category. Moments after. We, we're going to fall behind over the course of this show, but we like to be yeah. able to say that our Oscar show is just seconds behind the yeah. official I mean, one. it is. It's yeah. a, it doesn't matter how many seconds. It's still yeah. seconds. It's it's we're aggregating content. This is a, mm. we're aggregating it, which yeah. is a, a completely valid way to treat content. I feel aggregated. I feel aggravated. Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, Rachel, we were plugging. We have some live shows coming up soon. Where um, we're we're going to be in New York on March 29th. 
DJ Catrona right. wants to come so bad. I'm not even joking. It ha- ha- you reach out to me and I'll I'll set aside tickets. Yes. Um, and then we're doing London in April. Two shows in London. Gosh. Um, oh we're gosh. Getting, but we were just talking about that. George, is the Soho I- Theater? Is that the one that's like, where is that? I mean, obviously it's in Soho, but. Uh, <laughs> it's just around the corner from Les Mis. <gasps> By the Sondheim yeah. Theater? Yes. Very close. Oh. Great. I know a great Indian restaurant near there if you guys want to go. Love <laughs> it. Okay, yeah. Love it. Um, um, uh, George, should we show another QR code? Yeah, let's show a QR code and then we'll announce the best animated feature film. All right. We've oh, been showing off QR codes tonight. Uh, I'm going to start with this one. I'm not going to tell people what it is. So you got to go to it and find out. I'm going to go to it too. Okay, so here we go. Need... You ready? Right. One, yeah. two, three. Oh, oh, no. oh, it's a GIF. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. I'm going to it. I'm going to it. <laughs> this is great. Mm-hmm. Now, let's That's not really say what one. it is. We're not going to say what it is. This is for people to find out on their own. But it is by... Sorry. It is by... Oh, oh, uh, uh, Guillermo del Toro won for Pinocchio. Yes. Um, Ross, you just got money, honey. Yeah, this is the Netflix Pinocchio, not the Zemeckis Pinocchio, because we had a bit of a, a Pinocchio fest. I'll be honest, guys, I was up for Zemeckis Pinocchio, and I did not get it. You didn't get it. Uh, which because role I didn't were, come on the show first. Who which you role up you were, were you up for? I don't remember, because it was like a, it was one of those scripts. Disney does this all the time. It happened for right. Snow White, too, where they don't give you what you're doing. There was like a, there was a girl puppeteer, and she puppeteered a girl puppet. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that was a thing. And then they were like, an associate, an associate of Stromboli's, perhaps? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, you know what? I think I I think I did okay for myself in the end. <laughs> yeah, oh. I think your life is, uh, professionally speaking, it seems like you're doing well. It was Jack Dylan Grazer and I both bonded on the fact that we didn't get that. And then we were doing Shazam 2 together. And we were like, oh, we're okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're like, Helen uh, Mary's here. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. What? Uh, what's, um, the, what's the release date for Shazam? March seventeenth. March seventeenth. I the same day as uh, Pinball, the man who saved the game, uh, starring Mike Feist. I'm starring Mike Feist. That's right. Yeah. You, you can go see both those movies that weekend. It'll be a great weekend. I love me some Mike Feist. I really do. Yeah. Um, I mean, Guillermo's giving a speech. Uh, he's got the Oscar in hand. People seem days, really guys. happy about this. Five days. Five uh, days. Very exciting. Oh, oh, there she is. Five days. Wow. Five days. Five uh, where, and is that is that a social media element? Uh, do you have one for every day? And they say you got to post it. I, I wait for them to post. They don't send me shit. I wait for them to post it. <laughs> um, the, I want to put it out there in the world. Because you we I, at one point, I remember we were all talking about how uh, we didn't get the Ted Lasso um Cookies swag bags and, or whatever yeah, you yeah. you still haven't received any uh ted lasso swag no i want to put the word out there into the industry with Roy Kent himself would get me something and it hasn't it brett can. has not being friends with brett has gotten me nothing but good friendship and frankly i'm pissed wow you are owed some ted lasso zed zasso needs some ted lasso swag maybe i need to make zed zasso swag and then get sued by them and then be like well maybe i wouldn't make zed zasso swag if you would just send yeah. me I mean, who knows what's going to happen on Redbubble later tonight? Once independent artists get get the idea to start making Zed Zasso merch and putting up on Redbubble, you never no, know what's going to happen. I have a Zed Zasso shirt. Let's, let's Someone see it, made me a Zed Zasso. Oh, You're, such a find it. For that. You're such a bitch for that. Frankly, I just don't. A, look at all of his shells. I made. I know. I know. We 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 kind of ragged on him for this at the live show, and I'm still kind of annoyed by the amount of stuff he has on his shelves. Yeah. Uh, do you uh, do you collect any physical media, Rachel, or do you just? You know you... what I have, George. What? I have four Shazam Two Fury of the Gods Funko Pops. That's great. Of, of my friends, which they're all my friends, but like my friends that I'm like, oh, cool. It'll be like we're hanging out if I put these <laughs> together on my shelf. So one of them is of me, and then we have Super Pedro, played by DJ Catrona. We have right. Super Mary, played by Grace. You're Cameron. looking at them right now. I am. And are I you have... able to show us your Funko Pop? Yeah, wait, give me one second. Please yeah. ignore the messy pillows behind me. 
well, if I had the power, I don't have the power to take you your frame him, George. Uh, unfortunately, I'm the only one here who doesn't have manual control of the. Uh... Okay, now is this has this been released? This uh, this okay. So this it is has. Can you imagine though if it hadn't, and I decided to debut it here on your show? <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, I feel like Funko understands when stuff like that happens. He would get it. He yeah. would get it. Look at her; she's so cute, guys. And uh, the and the outfit is that sort of uh, fanning out. That is my cape fanning out, and I'll tell you funny story. Yeah. When we when you do the photo shoots for these things, which are mm -hmm. they're just general photo shoots so that they can make the poster, yeah. but uh, they're also going to be used so that they can do very accurate renderings and stuff like this. Yeah. There was no fan powerful enough to blow my cape up because it's very heavy, and okay. uh, I had to throw it myself and then go into the pose. So the videos from that look like I'm having some kind of muscle spasm problem. Right. Uh, where I go, where I throw it and then immediately go, <laughs> but it worked. Right. It worked. It looks great. And yeah. number, is that number 1285? 1285. All right. That's a good number. Oh. Is that a lucky number? Um, it could be. I think it might be. I think we could make it one. I'm scared to open it. I feel like people don't like it when you open Funko boxes. Yeah. Like, um, uh, I get a second one and, and at some point and yeah. open that one because it, it, they're also, they don't balance very uh, easily. They don't. You have to get little stands for them, yeah. Um, which I don't have. Um, but I, I do have just all my little, I have Lucy's as well. Um, and it's, I mean, I've gotten so much fun stuff on this tour. People are so sweet. I got like a, you have, are those stands for Funkos, Patrick? They're not for Funkos specifically. They're I didn't for, recognize them, not on your like shelf. My, they're for my friend Alf, you know oh, what I mean? Oh, there you go. In some way. I imagine it would work on a Funko too. I can't find the shirt, but I did find a picture. Um, uh, Bring the Noise made this, who also made my shirt tonight, uh, which is us on the red carpet. Look at um, that. I love it. There it is. Proof. That's pretty good. That also looks like a proof of life photo. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does. You're in a bunker somewhere. Not a good photo. You're in a bunker. It's, it's a photo. upsetting. Show yeah. me that he's still. Show me that he's still there. <laughs> All right. We'll transfer the money. My God. Um, uh, so are are you used to premieres at this point? You know what? I'm not because the first one that I did for West Side Story, obviously, mm -hmm. was so much smaller because of COVID. Right. Um, and obviously, COVID is very much still a thing, but people don't really care anymore. I don't know if you guys have noticed. Right. And COVID uh, killed, killed the ability for humans to care. That's the... Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. Exactly. That was one of the long-term side effects. And so oh, oh uh, clip of Avatar on screen. I'm seeing uh Jake Sully. Jake Sully. Jake Sully. Wow. Well, we'll see. If Avatar wins or loses, maybe we'll hear from Jake. Oh I think this God. is just they're doing that thing where they 10 times during the ceremony present one of the best pictures to, Oh yeah. When uh, they introduce. Yeah. Oh, wait, I, hang that's on, what Jake. This looks like. Wait, George, I'm getting a call from Jake. Hang on, let me oh, pick up. Right. Hey, Jake, are you there? Yeah, Avatar, Avatar, Avatar. Jake, okay. what do you think the odds are of? Uh... He, already, he already hung up. Okay. He already hung up. All right. He's gone. Did you He's see gone. Avatar, Rachel? No. Did you see Avatar Two: The Way of Water? No. Well, no. I wait. You're asking. <laughs> Sorry, I have seen the first one. Okay. Um, but uh, and I actually I think the my latest rewatch was a couple years ago. I, I'm probably due for another one because I haven't I haven't seen the new one. I ha I really genuinely haven't had four straight hours to spend. Um, so this is the first time that you've had doing this show right now. Is the first free time it's you've the had. first free time I've had, and so I decided to do this instead of going. Well, to see, and see the thing is, Avatar: The Way of Water is going to be around for the rest of our lives. You can watch exactly. It we only have mm -hmm. this moment right now, George. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is a smart choice because you can watch it on the uh, on the flight if you want. Probably I could watch it on my flight tomorrow. Yeah, I, would I won't, say but I could. <laughs> if you if by some chance you do. Mm. Make sure you have water to drink because there's so much water in the movie that if you don't have water, uh, you'll be very thirsty. Water the whole movie is a, is a thirst trap because there's just water in almost every shot of the movie. Yeah. It's probably not good to watch that on a plane if you don't like plane bathrooms, which I don't. The flushing freaks me out. Mm -hmm. Right. But if, yeah. you, if you, by that logic, if you do like airplane bathrooms <laughs> probably is great to watch uh that what a great pull quote that actually, i was gonna say they could put that on the, the side of a bus 
Wait, George, who's to watch on? You like airplane bathrooms. Who's on screen right now, George? Oh, right now? Because uh, I think it's a friend of Rachel's. Who is I believe it? Right it's now? I believe it's yes. Ariana? <laughs> yes. Yes. Is she doing a, a her BAFTA rap? Is she, she doing a thing? I don't know. Uh I love that. I love the rap. I don't want to get into it here. I love it. It's one of my rap, favorite Patrick. things. Huh? Yeah, I would love to hear Patrick do it. Let's hear you do it. All right, let me get the words up. Hang on one sec. Oh, I know the words. Angela Bessa did the thing. Right? Hang on one sec. It was really good. I don't know the words of the whole thing. It's much more involved than that. Okay, here we go. I hope I never meet anyone in that rap because I can't say their names any other way now. Hong Chow, Dolly D, Carrie and Carrie with a C, Dame Edna, I'm so fond, Anna girl, you were great in blonde, Danielle D, you broke my heart, uh, uh, Michelle, I loved you from the start, Angela Bassett did the thing, Viola yes. Davis, my woman king, Blanchett Kate, you're a genius, Jamie Lee, you are all oh, of us. us. Yes. But you, you didn't start at the beginning because there's a part where it's like these ladies and she did the thing all I here, I presume, and she did a great like on the lookout Ooh, she killed it i don't know why that, was, so mean. that was that was more impressive than you guys thought it was because it was a buzzfeed quiz so i had to go down look at all <laughs> the answers pick the right one and then say that and go to the next one pick all the right answers. oh fablemans judd hirsch for the fablemans is on screen right now well we hey our first steve win of the night i think we're a best supporting actor or short round win yeah i mean give us a short round win please have you met him yet I have not. I've met nobody this season. I haven't yeah. done anything this season. I know, but I just thought maybe you're running to him it's somewhere. It's sweet. I would love to. He seems so... Everybody who... I really do think so many of the nominees this year seem so lovely. Yeah. And so, yeah. like, thankful for where they're at right now. It's yeah. a really beautiful thing to see. Yeah. Uh, Barry from the uh, Banshees of uh, Inishman. Yep. Uh, George, oh, I, should just, also, oh. I should also say... Yeah. yeah, here comes short round. Here comes short round. Very exciting. Yeah, I forgot this was all the same category. So This is so exciting. And the odds of it being the Steve win are so high because you got two out of the five, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, mm hmm Let's see. Let's now, see. this is crazy because my stream is like 20 seconds behind. So I, <laughs> I'm relying on your Here we go. Hold on. Yeah! It's short round. Yay! It's his first Oscar. That's great. That's great. That's Hold great. on to your potatoes, him. everybody. Yeah. Oh, that's so that's wonderful great. for him. I'm so happy for him. Fantastic. Ah, oh. oh, very exciting. That's great. Uh, now he's going to give a great speech. Yeah. And uh, and hopefully, hopefully now we're going to get to see a lot more movies uh, with him in them. Yeah. Yeah. He has a new. He has a Disney Plus show coming out with Michelle Yeoh. Was yes, with yeah. both of them with that's, Michelle that's and Stephanie. Show run by friend of the show Kelvin Yu, who was on Studio sixty on the Sunset Strip. George, hey now, that's right. And also, he's going to be in season two of Loki, a show that's made by your former employers. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, they you're were a boss. right across from us when we were doing. We were finishing up Snow White. They were filming yeah. right across the way from us at Pinewood Studios. Wow, Loki. Yeah. yeah. Oh my, were you worried that they were going to cause some sort of random chaos? I was more nervous about running into Tom Hiddleston on the back lot. Right. And sure. it didn't happen? It did not happen, thank God. Because I, you know, the way yeah. my hair is clipped, I'm like a little mushroom. I did meet him at the BAFTAs, though, and it might be one of my favorite celebrity interactions I've ever had. That's great. He was so uh, kind. That's, that's very... Uh, is there anyone who you didn't uh, uh, keep your cool for? Oh, I mean, it's probably a given that the Lady Gaga meet was hard sure. for me. <laughs> that, that was like a, I was looking up at her being, I went like this a bunch. She was like talking to me about, she said, I love your movie. I think your film is so wonderful. And she's like talking to me the way she does. And I was like, and then okay. she said, I know. <laughs> wow. She knows. So sure. that's good. Sure. Um, now, Rachel, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we have a guest who's here. I was gonna say, are you gonna kick me out? <laughs> no, no, no. I was gonna say, do you want to help us talk to our guest? Oh, I can help you talk. You can also leave whenever you need to leave. I want to make that clear. You know, I'm that. gonna, make, I'm gonna pull an Adam Pally and just Irish exit. <laughs> right. And also, if you have to leave and you decide later on you regret leaving, you want to come back. It's just open door policy here. I did tease Patrick and say I'm going full Irishman assholes. <laughs> wow. I don't even know if we'll do an Irishman tonight. You know. 
<laughs> we'll find out. Oh, the, the speech that's happening is clearly very emotional. It, it seems to be very moving by the comments. Yeah. <laughs> George, we have a guest here. Can I bring him in? Right. Yeah, well, go ahead. Well, I mean, after that. I want to yeah. introduce our, our first guest. Because, Rachel, you're more of like a, a co -host. A given. <laughs> you're more a of a co-host. Co -host. Yeah, you're a co-host. And you've been uh, promoted to co-host, and that's the credit on IMDb. I figured since Watto decided to not show, um, I would come mm -hmm. in and hold down the fort. So, yes, please introduce Pretty the guest. Why don't you? Uh, our, our guest won an Oscar for Best Live Action Short in 2021. Uh, he directed a movie called Colette, which is really great, and it's on YouTube. Please welcome Anthony Giacchino. Hey there. Uh, I, 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 I'm sorry to have to correct you so quickly. Okay. Uh, but it was documentary short. We'll oh, fire you later. Okay. But that sorry doesn't about my surprise friend. me because... <laughs> what what did I say? You said live action. Oh, yeah. But that's okay. Listen, great that's right. Patrick. It kind You're of, right. I'm You're right. right. I'm sorry. Uh, what it, it it reminds me of actually a, a story. Uh, it was something that happened that night. Yeah. Uh, not not that. It, I, anyway, this is it's all conjecture on my part. But I was Pete Doctor um, uh, won the Oscar uh, right before my category. Yeah. So I was like behind him the whole way, like through the press, the stuff, you know, and all of that, and yeah. getting the pictures the process. And then, you know, we're sitting around waiting and you have a handler and they're like, you know, that's uh, that's going to be, you know, ABC. They're, they're talking to all the, the uh, all the winners and Pete's doing a uh, interview with them. So I'm just like sitting there waiting, waiting, waiting. And then Pete's done and I see him kind of motion over to me, the interviewer who I don't know. And they say who it is. And he's like, yeah. And uh, yeah, so I was just like, I guess documentary short wasn't uh you know it's why they weren't on last year but they're now, back this year that's good and here's what i'll say it's on youtube and i watched it yesterday and it's great oh thank you it's really good and people should uh check it out um but thank you for joining us on the show tonight yes of course and congratulations cool. on your oscar win thank you so much do you, have your, do you have your trophy in on your... checking Patrick within the first 30 seconds? Of well, the I, I mean, I say that with all respect, I, you know. I, you with... know what, I say it with disrespect. <laughs> no, I say because I don't want I don't want to disrespect the the live action person. Mm, of course. Right. Yeah. right. Fair, fair. But that's what Patrick yes. did. He not only disrespected you, he also disrespected the winner of live action short. And. It, it goes to your credibility as a documentary filmmaker that what is what is our, our what is our uh, North Star? It is what is truth? What that's is right. true? Yes. A, a documentary which is false is worthless. That's right. Yeah, um, that's well it, said. And and so for you to come come in strong with the facts <laughs> on your side is proof of your veracity as a documentarian. Now, yes. Anthony, do you have your physical Oscar anywhere near you? Um, I mean, it, it's down the hall. I mean, that's so. That sounds close. <laughs> <laughs> I can you, hear did it. You, can hear did it. you want? You want? Should I? You want me to get it? I'd love to see it. <laughs> okay. Period. Uh, maybe I'll. Maybe I'll. Okay. What? Well, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. We'll this is my yeah. show where we mind when people walk down the hall and come back. It's that's true. one thing that most shows don't have. Like most talk shows do not allow the guests to walk down the hall and come back. That's and true. we not only allow it, we often encourage it. Um, oh, wait, uh, did someone else win? Well, they're doing, I mean, I'm seeing best supporting. It looks like Jamie Lee, right? Oh. She is all uh, of us. She is all of us. Uh, I should say the QR code that went up earlier was uh, made by Steve Dressler, who's really great. I just wanted to make sure people know that. Thank you, Steve. Another, another buddy, There's Steve. There's a character in Shazam 2, Fury of the Gods, named Steve. Dressler? No. Oh. Gilbert? But, uh oh George? But he is a pen, and Steve is very obviously very talented with a pen. So That's very good. Fair. Just saying. All right. Here we go. Wow. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Holy wow, that shit, looks so dude. good. That's Whoa. it. Whoa. Oh, is so this a Home Depot? Because I see some hardware. 
No. Yes. Thanks, guys. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm the co-host. Um, you know, when I I I live in New York, I'm I'm in uh, Brooklyn right now, and yeah. Wait. And I and I. Are you in Brooklyn too? Should I come over and we can do the shoot again? <laughs> yes, because Brooklyn is so small. I know. It's so big on the map. Yes. <laughs> yeah, open your window and see if you can see. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, Anthony, continue. continue. Yeah, no, I was um so I um I I was in LA and my kids were doing um remote school at the time. Mm -hmm. So we were, we thought we were just gonna go out there for a week. Um, and long story is we ended up staying until we went out in April and then we did st stayed until the end of June. Um, and when I brought this home, so it was like way past Oscars, no one's thinking of the Oscars, nothing. And I'm taking the red eye back to New York and I just have it in my carry on. And it was, um, you know, I was almost the only one like in the terminal and I, I put it through <laughs> the x-ray and, uh, and, and I, I wish they didn't let me take a picture of it. Cause it was pretty amazing. It, Cause it was just this black silhouette, but it looked exactly, I mean, it was like, it was yeah. unmistakable and it was kind of funny. And she said, you know, is that what I think it is? <laughs> um, and I said, yeah, yeah. And they took it out and they, yeah, they, like, you know, they wanted to see it and stuff. So you gotta eat it. You got to eat it here or throw it away. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, now, so it's, it's traveled once and then is kind of um, just been sitting around. So shiny. Did yeah. they did they engrave it at the ceremony? This is always something I'm interested in. Yes. So, you know well, well, so um, what I can tell you is I watched them um, screw this plate on there. Mm -hmm. Now, they may have engraved it there, but sure. I didn't see that because it was after the Pete Doctor incident um, that I then went, went to the... A uh, place where they 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 would sh you know they screw this thing on. Uh huh. For you. Um, but I thought mine, I mine was uh, they had already engraved it because it was the Thalberg. Oh, uh, so yeah. For an honorary one that's not going to go to anyone else, they can go ahead and do the pre engraving. So I didn't. What what what, do, what does it say on it exactly? This is Just great honorary? job, George. <laughs> great job, George. <laughs> it, <laughs> yeah. I will well, say I, my I, Golden Globe is spelled wrong. Is that true? Um, yeah. Wait, it why? How? It says it first... says best actress with one S. Oh, really? Yeah. And I asked for a replacement, and they did send one, but it doesn't fit on the actual <laughs> word. So that is have... perfect. Do not change. I'm it. not going to change it. That is I, so good. I wish I had it to show you. But can I it... make a suggestion? Yeah. Why don't you get a a fake Golden Globe and put it on yeah. that, and put both of them up? I think yeah. it would be great. And then I can make it look like I won two Golden Globes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, yeah. I, I actually, they gave this to me also. Yeah. Well, they, they got it right. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 yes, they did. But, I, but so they, they handed this to me. Uh, and like that was. Wow. And, gorgeous. But I'll, I'll tell Is you. That Futura? Oh, the, the, the font? I'm not sure. I think that might be Futura. It's certainly in the family. Yeah, I'm not. I'm. I'm not a font person. Yeah. But um. But when um when the evening was over, and we were um walking to our car, my co nominee um Elise Doyar, we were walking together, and some guy with a suitcase comes running after us. He's like, "Excuse me, excuse me, wait a second. I'm with Price Waterhouse Cooper, and I was like, "Oh my God, run!" You know what I mean? like, <laughs> They're taking it fast. Maybe, maybe, maybe he gave the wrong right, and he's like, and he, and he opens this thing, and he pulls out an, an envelope, and he gives it to Elise. He's like, "I have the backup envelopes. I oh, wanted you to." Oh, have. sweet. Oh, that's nice. That's yeah, cool. cool. I was given the job of deciding who got it because I, when I presented. I'm the one who opened the envelope. And so I gave it to the one member of the Dune VFX team that didn't get to speak. Ah, he got nice. cut That's off good. before. And so I was like, oh. hey, this is yours. Ah, like it was some wow. kind of heist. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's good. Yeah. But I, I do assume that they had other envelopes to give the other guys as well. <laughs> there's yeah. so many of them. It was well, like, how are you supposed yeah. to? There's like, there was like five guys. How are you supposed to? I went to down the hall to get my Thalberg. Um, <laughs> 
Yeah. I don't know if this is it or if uh, this was, I know someone swapped it out, but uh -huh. um, <laughs> it's, it's quicker than a normal one. <laughs> I don't know if that's because it's Lifetime Achievement I think Award. That's great. Did how you much, do uh, this before you grabbed it? Yeah, yeah. And how much does it weigh? I don't know. I get the feeling we have uh -oh. a uh -oh. we have a security system where if someone takes it off of the the shelf that it's on, yeah, uh, yeah. it registers. So, <laughs> oh, good. Unless someone swapped this out for the Thalberg, it looks different <laughs> than I remember. But. This is crazy. I well, love, uh, a great job, George, on it. So I think that's the real one. <laughs> Now, Anthony, you sent me a photo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I want to show this photo. Do you want to, how, how should we do it? Should we show it first and then you tell the story? You tell the story, um, I show it. What do you want? I just want to say someone in the chat said, Rachel, say the hardware line again. So it worked, okay? <laughs> uh-huh. You guys just um, don't get it. Well, it's, um, you can show it. It's a it's a friend of George's. So, um, you know. Oh, Harrison. Look at that. Yeah. Look yeah. At yeah. That. So, uh, you know, that was, again, this, that was, post um uh pete doctor incident <laughs> and I, um, so i it was right before going into vanity fair the the photo shoot and i saw harrison ford walk in there and i thought to myself okay there's no way he will say no to a photo if i'm holding one of these right. yeah yeah so I waited for, for him to come out, and then I went up to him and I said, uh, "Mr. Ford, I um, I, you know, if I, if my twelve year old self could see myself now <sighs> talking to you and holding one of these, I think my head would explode. Mm -hmm. would, would uh, would it be okay if we took a, a picture? And you could say I, I was nervous enough that I didn't even remove my mask because yeah. I should have taken okay. my my mask off." But, but uh, he's, good, he's making a good expression in it. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's a very central Harrison Ford face. Yeah. Yeah. It's also another proof of life photo. It is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, a, but he a was a nice man and... wielding a golden weapon of some sort <laughs> has kidnapped Harrison Ford. Yeah, but but he but he was he was very nice and said, you know, I I, I like what you what you set up there and um, oh. you know, yeah. He's That's so great. kind. He's so and I love his sense of humor so much. Yeah. Um, oh now that was the, your ceremony was the one that was in the train station, right? That's right. Yeah. How was that? What was that like for everybody? It was um, it, well, it wasn't what you see going on now, obviously. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I don't know how many people that the theater that they're in now holds like 2000 people, three, I mean, a lot mm -hmm. of people. I yeah. think there are about 200 people at our, wow. uh, party, which was actually kind of cool. I mean, I've never been before. So I don't I yeah. I can't really like compare as someone who has been there, but um, but it was kind of cool because it was like a small party, and mm -hmm. they had TVs outside where you can see what was going on. But they would cycle uh, people between the commercial breaks into mm -hmm. the theater, and mm -hmm. um, and and I I have to tell you I, I really felt like. I don't know. I, I don't know really how I was feeling. I was just kind of, I was happy to be there. I didn't really have a sense of whether we were going to get it or not. And I really wasn't so nervous until they're like, okay, documentary short. Yeah. Documentary yeah. reader, right? And then all of a sudden, I just thought it'd be like, you know, I was like, all right, yeah. but why am I getting so nervous? You know? Uh, and they, we, they, or would line up, a commercial was going on, and we walked in and they have assigned seats, and they're like, okay, you're over there. And, you know, and okay, that's your table. And, and we walked over the table and I sat in the wrong seat uh, and someone moved me. They said, no, no, you have to actually sit on this seat over here. Um, and it's, it, it all very, went very quickly. And then they're like, okay, 10 seconds, you know, and then they did this countdown and then it was just like, okay, next, the next is a documentary short. So I was, and they, they called it and like, they didn't even tell us how to get down. It was just sort of oh, like, gosh. you got to make your way down there but i i don't think i was sitting for 90 seconds there before it all happened and wow. uh, yeah and that and and that was it but so i didn't get to really experience sitting mm -hmm. down there but they came and they told um my wife and um elisa's uh, partner that um uh, you know you you guys can stay for the rest of the ceremony if you want um because then generally everyone else was cycled out so yeah. they sat and watched it live now that was the that was the oscars that was produced by steven soderbergh yes yes 
Yes, Did it was. Did you ever see him? Was he at only, active presence? Only on a Zoom that I see him once. And it right. was on and it was on, on the Zoom where um where they said, you know, we're not going to be in our living rooms, you know, you're everybody's got to come to LA. Uh -huh. You you must come to LA and there was this whole process and they were like and and they were also saying you only have 90 I can't even remember what it was. It was like a minute. You can you can't be up there for more than a minute. We're going to be hmm. moving things along. But then they ended up actually just letting people I think speak as long as they wanted. Yeah. It did seem a lot more like community when it was your year. I yeah. watched from home and it just seemed a lot more like a celebration rather than a competition. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and you know, we, we, and then just, um, you know, beforehand, I, I got to meet the other um, documentary nominees and that was fun. Uh, I, I, but I'm told that the stuff that I missed was more the week leading up, you know, they would mm -hmm. have screenings. Like you could actually go in and sit and watch everybody's films. You can watch right. them together and all of that. And, and the dinners you know, and the, yeah. No. And they didn't. Yeah, Questlove is is presenting now, so I assume documentary uh, oh, is about probably. To now, were you in the room when they did the trivia, uh, and and Glenn Close did the butt? No, I I was not in there. Glenn Close Again, was not present. I, we came right at the top, you know, at the, a, after a commercial break, and then I yeah. was down there and then off. Well, uh, when you were up there on stage, was there anyone that you like focused in on? Like, did you see someone and you're like, oh my god, there's. Michael Douglas, I don't know whoever. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, yes. Um, Thank you. So, <laughs> right afterwards, so when it was like, okay, we turn and because you were not given any direction on like what yeah. to do or where to go, so yeah. so somebody was doing this. So was, okay, so it's that person works yeah. for the show. So I'm following, and then um, Brad Pitt was standing behind the thing, and he's like, "Congratulations, man." And I was like, thank you, <laughs> you know, and uh, and then they're like, no, no, this way, come this way. <laughs> you know, so, yes. And then I I, I had to, to follow them. So it was Brad Pitt um, and uh, Harrison Ford. Sure. Were the, were the, big, the big two. So and who they, won? Have That's you seen it. any of this year's documentary yeah, short? I, I, oh, is it the short? So I don't know. I, I don't know if it is yet. Oh, it's, um, yeah, I'm, um, you know, I, I liked, um. Stranger at the Gate, I think that it was, it was called. Mm -hmm. um, but he may be, he may be, uh, it, it's Questlove, he, he may be uh, announcing. Feature, right? Feature, right? He, he'll, well, actually, he'll probably do both. Fire of Love mm -hmm. is uh, on, on screen now, A House Made nope. of Splinters. Navani, have you seen Navani? I saw Navani. I saw Navani and Fire of Love. Those are the two I saw. Rachel, you Navani Fire of Love? Crazy? That, I haven't that, seen no. anything this year. Uh, <laughs> anything. Navani's on, on now. The yeah. Nav Navani's Great. It's really interesting. And there's that one scene where they're on the phone. I'm not going to spoil that, it. Oh, no, it. don't. But I, I was, I couldn't, I know. It would be it's crazy. Really to operate myself. I wonder if that guy, I, I wonder if, what do they call it, a Moscow 4? I, I, yeah. I wonder I wonder if that guy is still yeah. alive. <laughs> <laughs> I, I bet he's not. I imagine I think, he is I think not. Navalny just won. Okay. Oh, it did? Great. I think, I think. Let me make sure, but I'm pretty sure. Oh, it's hard watching this Wait. show on mute. I thought, yeah. <laughs> Um, this is Navalny's first win. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Navalny yeah. win. I am confirming it. Wow. Navalny has won. Look at that. This is Navalny's first win. It was not a movie <laughs> before uh, this year. Someone, this is in <laughs> yeah. See, that's what I do if I was hosting the Oscars. I would announce things like that. And yeah. everyone would have a great time. <laughs> Say it again in case people didn't hear it, George. This is Navalny's first win. <laughs> Prior to this year, it was not a movie. It was nothing. It didn't exist. Um, they are this walking. Is the, yes, out. this is the first year the film was nominated. Right? Yeah. Yes. Was, this is the first nomination and first win for Navalny, which will not be eligible next year. Uh, now, I mean, Anthony, you also belong to a small club of people in, in addition to having won an Oscar because you're part of a pair of siblings who have also, like, both of you have won Oscars. Yeah. That's, just, that's wild. Yeah, uh, I know. Um, Thanksgiving sounds fun. <laughs> hey, what'd you do this year? <laughs> yeah, I I don't know what the um, I don't know what the uh, the number is. I think that yeah. night I looked it up because someone asked me. Um, yeah. And I I don't I don't know what the actual number um, it's is. Small. It's a, I think it's a small number, and obviously yeah. different 
um, different categories, of course. Sure, sure, sure. Um, but um, yeah, it's kind of weird. I, it's the, so weird to the, me. <laughs> who won best documentary feature your year? Uh, I think it was the uh, my octopus teacher. Mm -hmm. And did you interact with yeah. those filmmakers at all? No, because we we only we um, I, I did with some of the documentary short um, folks, your fellow but, nominees, but but not be, because it was COVID and, and the the right. traditional uh, let's say documentary um, like the gathering that they would have had the documentary branch that didn't happen. So we had something on Zoom and that was it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I didn't. Yeah, we just, um, I mean, as uh, intimate as it was, the ceremony, um, it, it, we we didn't really get the connection um, that, uh, yeah, I kind of re regret that, obviously, that, 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 because I'm just told that that's sort of a really fun part of it, actually just meeting them and hanging out. Right. And yeah. Stuff, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, George, how do you think the show is going? Because you're the one who's really watching. Our show, yeah. this show. Well, <laughs> I'll ask about both, I guess. I think our show is going, George. I think our show is going, going really well. Okay. Uh, so far, uh, on camera, no one has hit anyone else. So already <laughs> okay. we are, uh, as far as I know, the, the only uh, crime that has been potentially committed uh, uh -huh. was earlier when Patrick uh, offered to share his ABC uh, password. With Rachel, true. And, I don't I, know I, and I accepted. Yes. I don't know if that's one crime, two crimes, or no crimes, but in my heart, I believe it is zero crimes. Sure. On I this Oscar fine. special so far. Oh, and now are we are we at documentary short, maybe? It's gotta be. Evalu. Uh, I, I missed what the previous one was, but we'll get it if they're a winner. Uh, Le, Le Poupel. Le Poupel. Oh no, that's this is this oh, is this is this is, this is um live action. Famously, the one that hey. I said by accident. Yes, I, oh, I, live I, action short. Probably yeah. so. That so probably I've means I would say that probably means we missed documentary short. I don't. I don't think we did. I don't think we did. But if we did, then I will. I will uh, reappraise how well I think this show is going. This is, so <laughs> this is so embarrassing. Um, the only thing that could be more embarrassing than this is if they read the wrong movie for best picture. But that's never going to happen. Never going to happen. Um, so Avatar Way of Water has won best live action documentary short. <laughs> this is its uh, first win. <laughs> like Irish Goodbye uh, has won whatever category this is. Do you know, Patrick, do you know what category that is? Oh God, guys, this is a mess. This is a mess, but this is what it is. Uh, it live action short film is what they read the wrong best picture a few years ago. This is clean it's by Oscar. To make uh, it this doc, early in oh, the evening, doc short is after international feature. Mm. Wow. Now so I maybe. think that that that's crazy. They should yeah. go doc. They should go little doc, big doc. Yeah. yeah, and they should do live action short right before best picture. Doc Brown, and then Chris <laughs> Lloyd comes out on stage. <laughs> doc Brown introducing the docs. That's yes, great. Yes, right. A good idea. Oh yeah. man, they missed um, out. They should have brought me on the team. <laughs> I'm on the team. I did such a good job last year. Yeah. I, I now, just Rachel, really... when, when you made your joke on camera last year, was there any sense that anyone in the, was there anyone like kind of I don't get it. To the end? It was like no. That was the that was such a crazy wall of laughter that hit me. I've never mm -hmm. in my life had you such laugh. a reaction to something I said. Um, I just, this, and that was just a testament to how far that story traveled, which was never the intention. Sure. And, um, and JK as a as a storyteller, because that's my craft, that's my trade. I'm a storyteller yeah. by nature. You can never uh, retire that, George. When when you tell a story and it gets out into the world, it can its expanse is infinite. It, it can trap a story will travel, and yeah. certainly your story did. Oh, two yeah. dresses, uh, two very fancy dresses with people in them. Let me see what award and who. The now, I mean, are. Anthony, while yeah. he's while he's figuring this out. Uh, how did how did the story for Colette come about? Like, how did you get involved in that? Because it's a fascinating story, but not something that I had ever heard of before this. Um, it's actually um, it's a really strange story because um, it started out as um, pause what, one second. They're doing Little Mermaid stuff, so this is, just pause for a second. It's Little Mermaid stuff, so we got Disney live action Disney princesses. This is very relevant to, to on Rachel. that show and this show. Yeah, we got, we got two. We got, ah. Okay, continue, Anthony. I just had to note it. You know, that's fine. 
I it it it, it actually was um, it started out as not that film in particular. Yeah. The project started out for a video game, um, and the video game was Medal of Honor. Mm. Um, and basically, what happened was is that the producer of the game um, in 2016 called me, and I had known him. His name is Peter Hirschman. Uh, I had known him because I did some archival research for him for the original Medal of Honor mm -hmm. back in 1999 or was in 2000. Um, and, uh, and they had done these little mini documentaries about World War II battles and stuff because, they, because Steven Spielberg, who produced that right. initial game, had just come off of uh, filming Saving Private Ryan right. and said that um, he, he thought that... Uh, Kids playing uh, video games could probably also learn something while they're playing. And he wanted to have these small documentaries uh, on uh, the sure. original. So I had help with archival stuff. So Peter called me many years later, 2016, and said, hey, we're, we're actually going back to the original World War II. Would you want to work on that the gallery content? Yeah. We got to make sure that the kids playing this understand that this was a real conflict. Sure. Um, so I was like, yeah, and you know, and I, I thought about it, and and he said, you know, one thing I would like you to do is just talk to real veterans. So, over a couple of years, that's what I did, um, and then came up with this concept: like, why can't we bring veterans back to Europe to visit uh, sites that had meaning to their service um, or their part of the war? Mm -hmm. And they went for it, and we traveled back with three World War II veterans, all in their nineties telling specific um, stories about what happened to them. While I was in France um, scouting for that, I had a really wonderful tour guide and we were having lunch and he said, I know a woman who was in the French resistance. I could probably introduce you to her if you'd like to meet her. Um, her name is Colette. And I didn't have time to meet her on that trip, but I said, yeah, why don't we, and, and Elise, who ended up being my co-nominee, She's French, uh, lives in Paris, and um, and we made arrangements for Elise to go meet her some at some point. And she did. And she said, "Wow, she's got a really great story." And um, then a almost almost a year later, I went back and interviewed her, and then that's how wow I met her. And that that so all this stuff was made for the video game. That's so wild. And then and then uh, after I filmed. Uh, that journey with Colette, I talked to Peter and I said, I think that this could have a life outside of the video game uh -huh. and we should really try to do that. Sure. Uh, I think it would just do well in film festivals. That's really all I was thinking. I, I think people right. would really respond to this. And they went for it. They supported it. They were like, okay, this was electronic arts. Yeah. All right, you know, let's, let's, let's try it if, you know. Uh, and we did and we went to Big Sky, a documentary film festival which is great in Missoula, Montana. And uh, we won Best Documentary Short there, which qualified us for the Oscars. Yeah. Um, and then we won two other um, as well that had qualified us. So we were just like, well, we might as well just go for it. But again, never really thought that that would, um, that it would happen. So, yeah. Wild. That's a wild story. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and again, that's about the power of storytelling. Like you had a story that that uh, sort of leapt from one format to another. Yeah. Uh, it couldn't be contained within the gaming world. It, it had to it had to find a, its form somewhere else. Yeah. And I'll tell you the, the, the reason, because, uh, as you know, more people play games than go to the movies. Oh, believe me. I know. And <laughs> and I and I just thought like it would be. Like it would ha I would have to do this project because I could possibly never get these subjects in front of that audience. Sure. What a great audience to to have, you know, to to watch this. You know, sort of that was sure. also just my, my my thinking about, you know, eventually eventually doing that. So, yeah, I'd say uh, it was a it was a crazy a crazy journey. Now, George uh, Vanya in the comments is asking a great question. You've never produced any video games, right? Well, LucasArts, uh, tons of games. I guess that's true. But did you I mean, have any direct impact on that? 
yeah, I, I would stick my nose in. I would say, like, let's do this, let's do that. I, mm-hmm. you know, but I don't need to hog all the credit. But LucasArts was one of the major gaming companies, and you know that, Patrick. I did know that, but I forgot. Why would you, like, you want to ask me if I've ever made a movie? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> um, now, one thing that I think is really interesting is we, because uh, it could affect Rachel's, uh, this could be a reading the tea leaves for the future, is that they just had, like, cast members from, from Little Mermaid come out mm-hmm. on the ceremony, and they cut right to the trailer well, is the premiere of the little mermaid trailer so uh, this is setting a precedent where i think when snow white comes out you want to get that oscar presenting moment that leads right into the trailer in the abc commercial the thing is we come out on oscar what, night like basically yeah we come out march 20 something of next year so are they going to do one of those like uh, it'll be like a comic con thing where all the people think they're going to the oscars but then they actually just show them snow white yeah that's what we're going to do. We're actually going to, and I'm going to be like, yes, guys, I'm hosting the Oscars. I know it's mm-hmm. crazy. I've never been nominated. I had to uh-huh. beg to be at the ceremony the only time <laughs> I've been on, but uh-huh. I'm hosting. And then they yeah. show up and it's just me and Gal Gadot in costume reenacting the entire movie. Now, here's the thing. My buddy Steve was for many years snubbed by the Oscars. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so how many years? Speak- what? I mean, wait, and you mean Steven Spielberg? Yeah. So, I, and I, but I, I just learned tonight that he was nominated for six decades or five decades. Yes, but, ne- but they, they would like, they yeah. would nominate him, but they wouldn't give, they'd give it to like oh. Fellini or they'd give it to oh. someone like for so long. They would like, Cal, it was like, like Color Purple got all his nominations and it was just like, he couldn't win. He couldn't win. And mm-hmm. it, it got to the point where, you know, um, you look at some of those wins and you're like, it, it's unbelievable. So it's possible, Rachel, mm-hmm. that, your initial uh, snub by the Oscars uh, could be the beginning of a pattern. I would not be surprised. And I, again, I am not trying to manifest this. I just want to prepare you. I want to say that next year, Snow White should be there in the Oscars, just like Ariel was. But it's entirely possible the Oscars will be like, and now the seven dwarves. And then, and then, and you are once again, not invited. It's like, well, we don't have room for eight people. Well, we know she was on the poster, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> there's only and there's seven only this. opportunities. You also did say you wanted to start with an opening number if you ever hosted. Famously, Snow White was in a musical opening number. Yes, she, uh, yes, she was. So there's, precedent, there's precedent for this. Um, I would do some whistle while you work to open the Oscars. Uh, if, just like, another win for All Quiet on the Western Front, a World oh. War One. That's this is a prequel. We were talking that's about World War Two before. <laughs> this is a famously the prequel. What the prequel? World War One. Um, yeah. You know, nobody <laughs> likes prequels. Um, and yet you have a win for hey. a prequel, All Quiet on the Western Front. People are excited about my prequel, George. Okay. That's right. true. Hunger Games. Hunger right. Games comes out November seventeenth. Please don't see it. I'm so mm-hmm. proud of you to be doing a prequel. I did this, it for you, George. I this, did it for you. And I threw in a dry cry just for you. And <laughs> and now, because it takes place earlier, are people less hungry? Because like No, no, we're hungry than ever, my friend. They're hungrier before the the first Hunger Games. We, you go back and they're hungrier before. before. They're still hungry. Mm. And they're still but playing. But still, games. but still implies later. You're hungrier before the Hunger Games. Yeah. Pre hunger. Yeah. The pre hunger is worse than the actual hunger. I can't make it make sense for you, George. You're gonna have to go. <laughs> you don't need to. Movie. That's that's the magic of cinema. When I'm that's in the, the movie theater, prequels. I'll understand. I know you will. Prequels uh, don't have to fully make sense. Also. No. No. You like, could just say it's because of midi chlorians or something. Yeah. <laughs> George, I was gonna say, do you know your buddy Steve? Uh, very well. A <laughs> well, <laughs> yes. Uh, he, he he watched his first movie in South Jersey, right? Yes, he did. Jersey. Yes, Jersey. yes, not far from where I grew up. Yeah, you guys are both Jersey people too. I forgot oh, about that. Right. Right. Yeah, what, what county are you? What what? Exit? I'm from Passaic County. I'm from North Jersey. Yes. Which exit? Oh God, that's a great. I know it. It's great sorry. Name. I know that that sounds like I Which shouldn't. You should know it. I know. Exit six Rich. or five. Rachel barely got her driver's license and then got cast in a major up, motion picture. <laughs> uh, I don't know what it was. James Friend winning. I don't know what. Uh, one fifty three. Category. Sorry. Exit. Wait. Exit one fifty three. There's one hundred and fifty three. On the park. On the, on the parkway. Oh, then, on the parkway. <laughs> and then sixteen west on the turnpike. Got it. Okay. 
Yeah. Um, cinematography. That was for cinematography, and it's a very good looking movie. The camera catches everything. <laughs> Uh, all. Now, Anthony, another thing I wanted to talk about is uh, yep. Director by Night, which is on Disney Plus that people can watch. Uh, yeah, right. Which is another documentary that you made about your brother Michael, and it's great. Um, and if people haven't seen it, it's, uh, it's, it's something I like about it is you show a lot of like uh, the home movies from when you guys were kids. You have a lot yeah. of like the footage of him like showing off that he he mm. has always wanted to be a director, always been trying to be a director, and, and now he gets to do it on this cool uh, project. Um, yeah. how, were, was that something that got set up when he signed on to do that? Or was that something he was like, I'm going to direct this, do you want to do this? How did that work? Um, it was it was kind of more of the latter. Uh, yeah. When he was doing it, I, I, I but I also was like, I would love to do the behind the scenes of your film because um you know it it made sense to me mm -hmm. that he was going to direct that film or that he was going to direct a film hold and, on uh, one second if i can pause you anthony I, yes. I i wouldn't i wouldn't interrupt but i have a burn notice yes david burn is singing a song on the oscars oh. continue oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh yes so um i said it was not it was not weird to me that he was directing. Yeah. Uh, because I had sort of known that all my life, but he was not known as that. He was known as a composer. Sure. And, you know, I was thinking, oh, people, I, you know, was this, I wonder if people were just thinking, is this some Marvel gimmick? Let's throw a movie to a composer, mm -hmm. you know, see what happens. So, I, you know, I was, I was more interested in telling that story of, you know, no, I've seen this my whole life. You know, and I and I wanted to show those films. And George, I don't know if you've ever you probably haven't seen any of Michael's teenage films from when he was a kid, have you? Because I haven't no, I'd love heavily, to heavily, heavily influenced by you. Oh yeah. not surprised um, and, at all. And, I, and I think that I could probably share my can I share can you share screens on this? Uh yeah. You, uh, Is it the link that you sent me? It's the link that I sent you. Yeah. Okay, give me a second, I can pull it up. Yeah. All right. And there's and and I actually um or I, played, I played Luke Skywalker and yeah. You played Luke Skywalker? I, I did. Yes, I was I think 13 Another years crime. old. <laughs> yeah, I mean I I'd uh unauthorized was, illegal performance of Luke uh -huh. Skywalker. You know, you it was a lot it was a lot easier back then. Yes, of course. Everything was. Yes. Oh my god. Wait, that, are those okay, hold on. Oh, this is fantastic. Now this is analog. You shot this this, this isn't is visual. Well, no, I, let me be clear. This Michael shot this. Michael yeah. Shot the music, the the music he composed. This is from. Um, oh yeah. Should I mute? Maybe I'll mute the music. Well, yeah, you can do it. Well, that that yeah. it was. Well, from I just think I don't want it to get pulled down later. Yes. Yeah. It was from. Oh, from we can. Super 8. Yeah. Right. So, so this was. Record. Um. And 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 um. This very, is actually very a, Sammy Fableman so far. Yeah, well, this is a film I made for uh, him for his fiftieth uh, birthday. MGG Studios. Yes. That's... Michael George Giacchino. 1979. That's, yeah. And uh, Empire. This, this, we showed this at Royal Albert Hall for his 50th birthday. The Empire Goes Bananas. That's very funny. Yes. And um, good effects. Yeah, right. And yeah. It, like, that, how, old were you? Was, how old were you two? What did that say? 82? I would have Yeah, yeah, 81. So I would have been 11, 12. He was 13, probably. But this is, I, I, I don't want to take credit for any of this. Like, this is yeah. all him. He, he, but these are these are all this is a lot of this is done in camera. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, he was a big um, fan of this of the space shuttle. You know yeah. what's the uh, what's the what's the story here? The, so the Empire. This takes place after this takes place around. I assume that this sort of in a in a uh, parody way it supplants Episode Five. This is the <laughs> follow up to yeah, what's well, going on here. I, well, plot? this this is not this is not Empire's Goes Banana. This is called Space Adventure Three Thousand. Space. Mm -hmm. So this uh, is an original yeah. IP. Yes, but uh, <laughs> I think this, this. Oh, this Very is smart. the one here. This is the one I really wanted to show you. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's me. Oh my gosh. Oh. Not bad. Yes. What do you think? Now, is this the is this where you guys go back to in the documentary? Yes, that's exactly right? that's the space we go back to in the documentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so cool. That's good. What do you think? That's I love so it. I think this is the, great. I, so I I would I would say the um 
the uh, time sleeper. Yeah, time sleeper. This was an original. Nineteen eighty three. We 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 um we survive. Uh, my friend Sean and I sleep through a nuclear war. <laughs> go, you know, twenty years into the future. Oh, what a mess! Um, oh man! Yeah, and then we we save the town from uh, these mutants and this guy who takes over the town. His name is John Terax, um, and he actually was in the you know he was in Director by Night. We went yeah. back to, and then I, I, I had him in that in Director by Night uh, recite his big monologue. <laughs> <laughs> now, did this uh, did this kick off a a uh, an urge to be in front of the camera, or was this the thing that For killed me, the urge to be? I, I I have to tell you honestly, I didn't I didn't love it. Yeah, you know, yeah. I always thought that I was really bad. Um, see, that's Dries the Arms Race. <laughs> Political. Yes. Exactly, <laughs> you know, and uh, that's our backyard. Amazing, yeah, yeah. That's so, so uh, impressive. Well, yeah. Okay. Well, again, this was all this was all Michael's stuff. It was not. Yeah. Really, it was you not were you were part of the filmmaking is a collaborative process. You were yes, involved in absolutely. all of these. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, 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 for sure. So and it's we, it's we, gracious yeah. of you to to give credit where it's due, but but you're the guest here. Yeah, this what is, is my what? Star Wars detours, guys. This is my <laughs> Star Wars. <detours. laughs> There's look, and there's plenty of people out there who claim that they made Star Wars work, you know. Buddy so, like, yeah. you gotta oh, look at this, Steve. Oh, yeah, there's buddy. my buddy, Steve. Yeah, now this didn't, I mean, like, this they didn't, I don't think they didn't drive, they didn't drive a car on a baseball field in the actual ET. No, you're actually uh, but, you're topping him, yes, but, but, but we did that. Um, which I don't know how we got away with doing that. Indiana Jones and the Golden Snake. Yeah, he hates snakes. Yeah. You know, I never thought about that. This is like his least favorite adventure. He really said, "I hate, I hate yes. this job. I'm getting yeah. too old for this shit." Oh <laughs> no! Well, that's who's Mike. Playing, who's playing indie here? Michael is great. And what are the, what's your role on this on this feature? I I, I was just kind of like uh, you know one of the guys who was digging at the. Um, at one of the sites. You were so smart because yeah. you, you really diversified. Some of it is uh, illegal or, <laughs> or covered under parody law because let's be honest, parody law gives a lot of leeway in terms of what people can get away with doing. You can do uh -huh. whatever you want as long as you yeah. make it clear you're parodying someone else. You can take someone's name, pretend to be them, whatever you want. Just put For, all you got to do. You put quotes around the name. It's a parody. It That's it. Make it obvious that no reasonable person could think it's the real thing. Yeah. Yeah. But, but you, know, you can you see also it. do a lot of your own you, 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 as a team. I like that we're seeing a lot of original IP here, a lot of original stories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you can see a lot of this in Director by Night. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it, that, that, that was a because it's not, I mean, it was some. I mean, I think people were expecting a behind the scenes thing, but it's not really what we did. And you see a lot of this stuff. All right. We got, we got another big award, I think, coming up now. I think we're getting ready to. Uh, oh, we just saw The Grinch. Uh, I, I don't know if that's an Oscar debut of The Grinch, but we just saw The Grinch. It's makeup and hairstyle. No, no, just a clip on the big screen <laughs> in the back. The Grinch went by. It was Jim Carrey's Grinch from the Ron Howard uh, Grinch yeah. movie. Um, Anthony, did you choose the title director by night or, or was that, how did that no, title? No, out? no, no, no. That, that, that was, that was chosen by uh, Disney. Uh, I liked it. I, I, um, we, you know, we were thinking of calling it creative trouble because, mm. because that that's on tummy I'm trouble, the, the Roger Rabbit cartoon. No, no, creative. Tr my mother yeah. said Michael would get into creative trouble. Like she would gotcha. say, you know, he's getting into creative trouble and the good trouble yeah yeah and we uh, we liked it but um but even we never we never believed like us who made the documentary that mm -hmm. that actually really described the film but we kind of loved the title right um sure. and it was among a, a bunch of them but then um our friends at disney were like no you know we were thinking director by night you know composer by day director by night you know and yeah. uh, but then also werewolf by night Right, and, so it's a play um, on. It's a fun play because it's like not a werewolf, a director. It yes. makes it clear this is not. He's not a werewolf, although yes. he could be both. Yes. Although George, this is a great pitch for a movie. Movie director gets by bit day. by a werewolf. Oh, right. Has to only shoot day scenes. All yeah. of his stuff is day for night because if he's out at night, he turns into a werewolf. Oh, that's a great pitch. 
for moving yeah. ahead. I, uh, you know, I, I, the werewolf was the one monster that I wanted to be. Yeah. yeah. When I was a kid. Oh, yeah. 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 Did you ever grow a beard out? Never. Never? Mm, no. Anthony, you, you wanted to be a werewolf when you were a kid. It's the one thing that you actually have some control <laughs> over. You could grow that beard out and you'd be very close to I, achieving your childhood dream. I guess so. But you don't think uh, you could rock that look? Look at him. That could, what do we do? You're rocking this out. look. You need to rock this look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I don't know. Maybe someday. Hairstyle. We're talking about Wait. hairstyles now. We're talking about the werewolf look. Somebody yeah, just yeah. won for, uh, let, let's see, someone in the chat, tell me who won. Who won? Uh, yeah, this was for hair and makeup. My hair and makeup, Judy Chin on West Side Story was nominated for the whale. Oh my God, she won yeah. an Oscar. <laughs> whale. Look at that. Judy won an Oscar. Oh my God. <laughs> this is great. You're gonna you're gonna text her. I'm gonna text her right now. <laughs> you to call her, Rachel. Call her. All these kids. I'm not gonna want to text. Like on stage, probably. Yeah. Oh. See if she'll go on to a Zoom call with you. And my we'll, last we'll, text to her every was year. We'll make it a tradition. Then the next year, she has to call someone who's at the Oscars. Oh my God! My literally, my last text to her was Oscar nominee Judy Chin. Congratulations, oh my, my angel! God. And now she she's Oscar holding an Oscar, Oscar on stage. Uh, someone else is talking. He's gesturing with left hand, holding Oscar right hand, using left hand for gestures, right hand to hold Oscar. Um, <laughs> I'm so happy for her. She took care of me, y'all. She is mother, and like. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oscar winner Judy Chin. She's the reason Carrie Bradshaw has iconic makeup looks. Okay. She did wow. original Sex in the City. Wow. Dun, dun, That's dun. my girl. Dun, 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 dun. Oh my God. Um, Anthony, is there is there a dream project? Well, I don't want you to have to like say it if you don't want to talk about it. Is there a nightmare thing? project that you don't is want to there make? Is there a documentary that you'd never want to make? <laughs> <laughs> you can say that. No. <laughs> uh, um, uh, that's a tough one. Uh, yeah, because it's a crazy question. Yes, yeah, you can say it though. It's I've not asking asked that. that question before. Uh, <laughs> that I would never want to make. No. They cut, sorry, they cut yes. off her speech. They cut off her speech. The way I keep cutting off Anthony whenever something important. <laughs> so sorry, and so did I just now. <laughs> that's right. There was an. Oh, an they Asian played her off. I think she got a little Asian wave. She got like a little wave in. And then she was like, ah, what am I going to do? Well, well, that means you can call her. <laughs> Tell her she can do her speech live on the George Lucas talk show. We will give her full screen. Yeah. Everything she wants to say. Text her. Text silence her and say if you want to give your full speech. You make it There's a live stream happening right we now. We don't that silence will... women here on the George Lucas talk show. Mm -hmm. No, we don't. Anyways, Rachel, hang on one second. Anthony, I do want to hear the end of this. But, but I, I don't like that joke, I, I Patrick. Figured out I know the film that I don't, don't want to make. Joke. Okay. I, I, I would never want to make a documentary about the day after a nuclear war. It's a good answer. How many days <laughs> after? <would> you... <laughs> What's your number? <laughs> uh, What's the number if they just go back? All right, two days later, a week. <laughs> Anthony, what are we going to do? <laughs> A year, uh, ten years. Well, that We're could making be the stock with you. Yeah. yeah, ten years after might be interesting. Yeah, ten years after yes. is a maybe. That's a soft yes. yes. Look, if you after. thought if you thought people weren't going to movie theaters before, <laughs> yes. they're not going now. Oh, radiation feels good in a place like this. <laughs> oh God! Oh God! Yes. <laughs> um, that's uh. <laughs> Uh, oh that's a good God. answer. That's a good answer. I hope you never have to make it. Yeah, I hope I hope not either. Um, but in terms of a, a, of a dream thing, I'd like to do something in Italy. How about mm -hmm. that? Okay. I, you know, all right, I'll, I'll say this. I, I would love to do a documentary about Panettone. You know, the, you know, the Italian mm -hmm. Christmas? Do you, no. you, you don't know what a Panettone is? No. George. Well, George, what are you cool? doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I got a feeling. Got a little feeling that there's going to be it, a version of that. Now, it's a, is it a fruitcake? Well, that's, I mean. This I, is what Google I said. Mean, you, you could, I mean, I wouldn't call it a fruitcake, but uh, you, you, you can. It, it's, um, you know, you know, that once Trader Joe's like starts uh, selling sure. that you, you, you have arrived. 
Um, they, no, it's um, you know, it's, Shazam just spotted on TV. <laughs> I can tell you uh, a film about Panettone in in, in Italy, um, how it came to be. Yeah, I uh, yeah. I mean, I know that sounds crazy, oh. but I'd do that movie. That's crazy. That's a. I mean, I hope you get to make that just because I want to see what that is. <laughs> if you know, I, I I did some um you you know the um I I did a what is it what is the 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 open AI um not oh, chat not chat GPT but their their image version of that sure 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 you know, I did many versions of like UFO penetones volcano penetones and all that kind of stuff you should try it out sometime wow okay uh, you could um you know. You'd be people surprised. in the chat saying, "People in the chat saying we need more films about bread." It's true. Yeah, let's get this bread. Yeah. That's it, Dolly. Dolly too. Thank you. <laughs> Radio free yes. multiverse. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. Um, that's wild. Uh, well, Anthony, thank you for coming on. I don't want to keep you much longer because I feel like yes, I've I, kept you longer than I said I would. I, I uh, really um, appreciate being asked. Yeah, thank uh, you for thank you for coming and ta sharing uh, all all these memories and showing your trophy and uh, it's been so nice talking to you. Yeah, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the show and if you want to film about this show someday, let me know. We love it. Do you want to make a documentary about this year's Oscars? Yeah. No, about your show. No, about, about this show. This, this yeah, show. Yeah. Your we, show. It's actually really competitive, Anthony, but we will be in touch. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Anthony. I'll see you across the Thank street. Thank you very much. Okay? I'll see you yeah. in a sec. I'm going to wait. I'll see you at the deli. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You know the one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Brooklyn. See you. See you. Bye -bye. That was a commercial oh, for uh, Warner Brothers 100. Oh, wait. I'm like, seeing uh, you right here. Hang on. Hang on. Yeah. I wasn't oh, sure. They're all. See him? Yeah. That's, That's, how far behind. That's how far behind you are, Patrick. When I said you Shazam, that. Um, right now I got banshees uh, on the screen. They got a little donkey. They got the guy with the fingers. Um, yeah. And um, tons of spoilers in these clips. And um, they were showing a lot of De Warner Brothers clips for the. I know Disney's got a hundo. Warner Brothers got a hundo. Yeah. Everyone's doing hundos. Mm. Now, George, I'm going to show another QR code. Okay, great. I was so now, excited to show QR codes to people tonight. This one says what it is. This one says what it is. So I'm going to. Oh, if you guys have been enjoying the show. You can donate oh, to the PayPal. Gonna... Look at that but, but little what... beggar boy. Is that you? <laughs> the little beggar boy on there. Uh, but we, you know, we got a lot of traveling shows coming up soon, and uh, uh, any money you can give is greatly appreciated. Look, if everyone on this stream gave two dollars, it would help pay for multiple flights, and it would be great. Um, um, but I will say we have a big, we have a big, right big, big uh, announcement. We'll do later in the show when we run out of content. Um, yeah. <laughs> And yeah. um, Patrick, I'll did tell you get Rachel the thing I said? It, I did. I'm going to tell Rachel in the chat what it is. Okay. Oh, and then I'm going to not say it out loud. And you can react yeah. without any specifics. Just give our, your reaction to what you think of this idea. Okay. I'm going to look in the chat and make sure he's representing it correctly. Um, oh, my God. Oh yeah. You're yeah, kidding. Yeah, yeah. That is exactly right. You guys are lying to me right no, now. No, no. That's true. It's true. No. But we Rachel, don't have I'm the gonna, money to I'm do gonna, it yet. We don't have the money on. to do it yet. So we're going to have to do a fundraiser to raise a little bit of money. Yeah. Costume design yeah. is the next uh, category on the Oscars. Uh, Rachel, I'm going to send you a uh, a An promo image. image that is being made of this thing. Please. Um, it's a it's crazy, thing. right? It's a, <laughs> it's a legitimate thing. It's a legitimate thing that's going to happen. Oh my god, yeah. guys! Yeah, um, but uh, it's such a dumb idea to do. But it we're going to do so it. Very dumb. I can't wait. <laughs> very dumb, and it's very expensive. <laughs> and, oh my god! Uh, it's so expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got. Is it Paul Dano and Julie Louis Dreyfus? I believe are on. Oh uh, man, right? Julie Louis Dreyfus! I want her to play my mom in something because I feel like she's what her and my mom look so alike that I want her to wow. play my mother. Wow! I've got two celebrity look-alike parents. I've got Julia Louis Dreyfus as my mom and Stanley Tucci as my dad. Okay, I mean those That's good great. parents. That's now I just sent you. I just texted you a poster for this thing. Um, don't show it. I'm don't not. It. Oh, but it's on the phone. It's on that device. It is on the device. 
what is going um, on? And now while Rachel's looking at this, I am getting some donations in, and it's very nice, and we appreciate it. Uh, oh, but uh, look, you know, putting in a lot of hours that. tonight, and a couple bucks would be very nice. Um, uh, Everything ever Rachel, I'm so, happy your, I'm so happy your friend won, Rachel. I'm so happy that my – she – she took care of me being a new kid on a who's never been on a movie set yeah. like you go into the makeup trailer to cry that's where you go yeah. so yeah. Judy cry Chin, from stress cry from stress being overwhelmed it was hard that was a yeah. really hard time in my life so i i have her to thank for so much i hope First, she gets an opportunity to thank the people she needs to thank was that, that your that's such legitimately, you can offer. Legitimately, you can offer if she wants to give her speech. <laughs> she can do it over the phone. She would be uh, so confused. <laughs> oh, right. The Oscars. Rachel, do, you, do your won? reps know you do this show, Rachel? Um, I'm sure they're not thrilled about it. <laughs> because yeah. no, because I come on here with no agenda, and I'm pretty sure that yeah. they wish I would do things that had an agenda. But I'm just yeah. here to have fun. Uh huh. That's great. Right. Everyone's uh, yeah. Everyone's saying Ashton everyone's is probably saying Ashton is, she is. <laughs> no, you know what? She's never mad about this because she knows that it's not like you're not pandering to get something. Yeah. Um. But she was so mad at me when I did Josh Horowitz's New Year's live because then I ended up telling the story about how I turned down Hunger Games and there were like 18 articles that came out the next day. And she's like Rachel. But, but I think that's a good story. I think that's like a uh, story. Press the press. Yeah. I think, uh, uh, Wakanda I Forever has won for costume design. Didn't they win for the first movie too? I think so. Oh That's Gordon, amazing. Right? That's, That's a Marvel win. Cool. That's your old bosses, Patrick. Marvel. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. That's right. Um, uh, now, was that was was Westside your first experience on a movie set? Yes. It's always so hard. The first. My first movie that I was worked on in any capacity in any like professional sense was mm -hmm. uh, the the documentary "Gimme Shelter," which is about the Rolling Stones at Altamont, um, mm -hmm. where I was I was running a camera and the camera jammed, and so none of my footage was usable. And then there was a murder at Altamont. It was a uh, which is what the documentary ended up being about. It's a rough way to start a movie career. Yeah, yeah, that that's that's not my experience, George. So well, everyone's experience is different, but it's all kind of tough. It's all hard, isn't it? Right. Something we haven't talked. To, I mean, this is relating to your movie experience. George uh, uh, officiated a wedding in a location that West Side Story was shot in. That's right. Yes, it was, I it actually I did hear there, that was yeah. the boxing gym that. Patrick, yeah. do you have any photos that of that wedding you want to share? We shot America. I don't know if we, I don't know if we should. We, is Nachu Nachu performing or is right it now? Me, not anyone else. Are they performing Nachu Nachu right now, George? On the show? Yeah. No, someone's talking. No. Are you sure they're not? Are you no. sure they're not singing? I have to say, that's one of my favorite movies I've ever seen in my life. Was RRR. Wow. Such a great fucking film. I didn't see it. I wanted to present best original song this year just to give it to Nachu Nachu. I, I not to your I friend about to get Stephanie? Performance. Sorry? Not to your friend Stephanie Germanata? Oh, my girl, but I mean I I can't I can't sit here and yeah. compare. Not to <laughs> not you roast white people. <laughs> it's a great fucking song. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, that's very funny. Um now I'm just watching. This place is too big. This theater's too big. Too big. Is it the same? Where where is it this I think year? It's at the Dolby. It is. Should I walk down to the Dolby? Right now. Go. How far is the walk to the Dolby? <laughs> oh my God, George, no. It, it it's like a mile and a half, maybe. Is it a good walk? One of those good LA walks. I don't know if I want to walk down Hollywood Boulevard now. Oh my God, it's not dark could, out. It's not Patrick, dark. You could be the me of this year's stream and actually stream from the Oscars. Maybe later. Maybe later. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, wait till it gets nice and late. Well, the thing is, if we have other people showing up, I want to make sure that they're able to get onto the stream and, you know. That's right. And, uh, um, that you maybe know who they are. Oh, this dance. You know is, who they are. Looking great. The dance is looking great. Not you, not you, yeah. not you, not you, not you. Uh, not yeah, this is a. Uh, 
you know, it, it's funny because the every now and then people will say uh, for the actual Oscars, like, oh, get rid of the dance numbers or something. And I'm like, you have to have aspects of this show that are performance, even though mm-hmm. uh, it, it it's theatrical performance to see a live performance like this. I actually think that like some of the camera work that they're able to do now is more advanced than what was possible before. You know, they have many, many cameras. Mm-hmm. They have moving cameras. They got jibs. They got all sorts of things that, you know, it's not pure cinema in the, in the sense they can do whatever they want and uh, it's ha- happening live in real time. But I think it's yeah. an important part of the just the pageantry to make it feel special. I think it's proof that we need a choreography Oscar. Yeah. Mm. What else do we need? We need stunts. We need, we need choreography. Stunts, we need choreography. Also, um, some Oscars for the people who work in movie theaters. Yeah. Huh. We come here for magic. Do you know? Do you know? Sometimes in like a sci-fi movie or something, they'll go see like a little guy, like a Babu Frick or something. Yeah. We should have like best little guy. Best. Oh yeah, best weird little guy. Best little yeah. guy. Yeah. Uh, that one in Shazam. Patrick, are you are you trying to do that because you're thinking you could end up winning an Oscar for best little guy? Oh, I'm not that so little. Weird little guy it feels self-serving. Um, we everyone's do need clapping. A, um, we need a casting director Oscar too. Standing ovation, it looks like uh, within the theater. Yes, Nachu, Nachu, let's fucking go. Great, Great stuff. Oh. Also, whoever had the most fun, you know what I mean? Like an Oscar for whoever uh-huh. had the best time. Well, that's <laughs> right. Fun Heather. Yeah. And someone My whole thing this year was I was like, I just I want everyone to have a good time and I want all yeah. the best picture nominees to get on stage and do a good game, good game, good game, good uh-huh. game after uh-huh. the show's over. Uh-huh. The, I, you know, I, I, I had a thought recently because there is something, there is an element of obviously people vote, so there's an element of fairness, but it also feels unfair because it's so subjective and, and right. uh comparing apples and oranges. Mm-hmm. I wonder, do you think the Oscars would go? Uh, the ratings would go up or down if they switched from a voting format to a raffle format. So the, the, <laughs> voting, the voting is for the nominees. So there's a meritocracy element, but then it's like, it's just like a Powerball raffle yeah. where it's like, they come out and they're like, everything everywhere all at once. And then they show the little <laughs> ping pong ball. <laughs> Don't you think that people, there would be an element of excitement if they switched to a raffle format? Yeah. Film Twitter would hate it so much. They would. Oh, and that's Twitter why it would be so me. fun, Patrick. That's why it would <laughs> be hilarious. <laughs> George, what was that? Film Twitter can bite me. <laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> hey, you know what? You know what? I got a message for Film Twitter. Uh-oh, here we go. Here, here we go. go. He's George, is about to, George is about to self-cancel himself on Film Twitter. Good, 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 good. I'm leaving it full screen just in case he comes back with a, you know, visual aid or something. Oh, uh, they're really going all out on this dance. Not do not do not do not do. The fact um, that the dance is still going on for you, I'm pretty sure it's over. I know. I know. I'm. I just saw Will Smith uh, slap Chris Rock. That's how far back I am. Whoa! Wait, did that happen? <laughs> God. <laughs> oh hey. <laughs> what does it say? It says red oh, tails. Red tails. Is that your film that's Twitter. message for film Twitter? Film Twitter can bite me. <laughs> that's the clip. That's the clip. Can they don't show a lot of love for red tails. You have that clean. <laughs> yeah. Good, good, good. Guys, you know who I sat next to at SNL when no. Pedro Pascal was hosting? Who? A friend of the show, Darcy Carden. Whoa. Yeah. Wait, did you, guys, each other. did you talk about this? Yeah, of course we did. Well, we really? Did. Yeah. That's fun. Of course, because I know that she's done. She's gone full Irishman, and I was like, yeah. I don't have an indie girl. I know. You're talking and how she's she's gonna do a show on Broadway right now. Yeah, isn't that crazy? It's play, it's so amazing. Yeah, it was actually such a crazy coincidence though. Like me and DJ showed up. I'm like shimmying down the aisle to try to get to my seat. And yeah. I passed like Pedro's family. I said hi to them, and then Darcy was in the seat next to me. It was so fun. Yeah. You know, you know who's in the seat on the other side? If you had looked the other way. Is is it what you're holding? <laughs> Belushi B. Who I'm holding? Belushi B. Sorry. <laughs> George, we should um we should go see Darcy's play when I come out to New York for our show. Can wow. I just say something? Yeah, that sounds great. Richard, when are you gonna be on Broadway? I have to pretend like I don't know the answer or actually <laughs> know me. <laughs> Oh, 
Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm going. So I'm going to the opening night of Parade on yeah. uh, Thursday, uh -huh. and um, and fully Ashen was like, "You're gonna do pictures? No interviews." <laughs> She knows. She knows. I'm, I suck at keeping secrets. I can't do it to save my life. Well, that's why I know. That's why I keep asking you things. I know. I know. Oh, I'm fine. <laughs> Everybody's talking about Ashton in the chat. That's so funny. Ashton's going to love I have her. to say, she is my best friend. I she should so Ashton should come her. on one time. Sorry? We should get Ashton on We should get Ashton time. on. She would hate it. You and Ashton coming on together? It would be great. Oh, my God. Uh, uh, I am... I am excited that Darcy's doing a play. A play is uh, that's a, a play is a very exciting thing uh, to go see. It's an exciting thing for people to do. Yeah, I'll say that now. It's true. I'm just saying. Yeah, and I'm excited that Darcy's doing a play. It's very exciting. I wish more exciting people do exciting plays. Plays are cool. More people should do plays. More very unexpected exciting. people should do plays. Yeah. So you I'm know? excited. I'm excited uh for uh rachel when you make your broadway debut i'm excited mm -hmm. for when that happens please if, um, if sure that happens show. absolutely cool i'm excited for you to see what we've got cooking wow. if anything that's right i don't know i don't know i don't know stop no, no, that's my, don't my bag oh um it, it looks like another award might be announced soon, or or I can't tell if they're introducing. Someone said the word world. I just unmuted mm -hmm. for a second. Last year, I'm doing a much better job this year about uh, not playing the audio because last year I played a bunch of audio and Patrick kept muting me. It's true. Yeah, but I'm doing better even, this year. I believe you. I don't remember that. <laughs> I believe you though. Oh, I am in the revival of Starlight Express. I do want to confirm that comment. Wow. Spoilers. I just want that to be the the takeaway from this show. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, bought, I was very excited. Um, you or just me? No, I feel like I'm frozen. You, can you hear me? Me, you are. I hear you. Oh, no, you're, you're back. You're back. You're back. I, I got very excited because I thought there's a new flavor of Coke Zero, a new limited edition Coke Zero flavor. No way. And I thought this would be perfect. I don't believe that, George. No way. Not a chance. It's a. I thought, what an exciting Oscar night flavor. Because I thought it was movie flavored. Uh-huh. But I just misread it. It's just, it's move flavored. You shouldn't have said that. I think it, we could keep it movie fl flavored. Oh, but here's the thing. Movement. But what movie does it taste like, George? Mm. Well, that's the thing. Move Movement is what's, you know, motion, especially very fast motion, is what I like about movies. Is yeah. that I like that movies are like moving. Like if something goes like, mm, you so love it yeah. still feels cinematic. Like I feel like this is going to be a very cinematic, low calorie, yeah, flavor. All right, so I'm going to try this. I'm going to see. Does this taste movie ish? Hmm. It's very sweet smelling, which is interesting because there's zero sugar in this. You are frozen. Oh no, there no, we go. Frozen, You're back. Right? You're back. Yeah. You keep freezing. Should I go for the bottle or should I pour to the mug? I think go for the bottle, right? Yeah, straight from the bottle. Yeah. All right. Let's see how this goes. Oh, it tastes like the other limited edition flavor that I tried before that was, I don't remember what it was, but I think they just accidentally made some wrong flavors. And they're just uh -huh. like, let's keep releasing this like warped batch as a limited edition. Sure. Is it good though? It's fine, but my preference would be for regular Coke Zero. Is there is there a movie that you do think it tastes like? Yeah. Yeah. I think this might taste like um Shazam for you. What? Shazam. Shazam. Hold on. Doesn't taste like the first Shazam. Hold on. No, no, no. Definitely not the first mm. one. That didn't have hot villains in it. No, it did. Mark Strong is hot. Um, Shazam, I think it tastes a, I'm getting hints of Shazam Fury of the Gods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's it, seems like that. Yeah, I was gonna say the same you thing. You know what soda is officially licensed to the film yet? <laughs> what? No, I, I don't know if we have a soda. We definitely have a Snapple one, uh, because mm -hmm. there's a huge Snapple machine in the back of one of the scenes. There's right. a Skittles <laughs> sponsorship and a Gatorade one. Skittles, Skittles, Skittles. There is a pretty you great line about the skittles in in the movie that actually doesn't feel like a brand deal at all like genuinely i mean that 
I didn't but realize it we were. It totally, you can tell. I mean, like <laughs> the way that it all happens, the way it was shot, uh -huh. it's like, you're like, oh, this is for sure. But, uh -huh. you know. And well, by the way, I just want to tell the chat, I am not spoiling any more than our marketing team already has. So. Also, are you spoiling that they talk it's about the sponsorships? It's nothing about, yeah, it's yeah. fine. Yeah. We're fine. Don't let the chat um, uh, get, get in your head about this. I'm looking to see if there are any uh, beverage tie-ins. Wait, do we want to do, we can adjust a, uh, we had a, a segment that Darcy does when she comes on. Do you want to do your version of it? What segment is it? Yeah, I'll do it. Well, she just reads the comments in the chat. Oh, so great. I will play I mean, the I've bumper. Been, I've been doing that. <laughs> so I'm going to play the bumper for her, and you will then read comments. Hey, guys. I'm Darcy Carden. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Patrick smells like farts. That's a great. Oh, God. Now they're spamming it. Uh, but read them harder, Rachel. Darcy, more like Zegler. Rachel, do not read this comment. Thank you. Wobble, wobble, wobble. Hi, Darcy. I loved you in the good place. Loved you on League of Their Own. We missed you, Darcy. This is getting hurtful. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ashton. That's a fair one. Uh, Rachel hosts the Oscars 2024. Uh, love Darcy and Rachel meeting. Me too. I think we both did. May the force be with you and with your spirit. I sing that song from that thing. Uh, no. I love your <laughs> profile pic. Thank you so much. I think you're the person who made it. So thank you so much because I recognize your profile photo. Um, <laughs> you're so good on George Lucas Talk Show, Rachel. Thank you. Um, Skittles taste the rainbow. My buddy Steve should win. You know, I always think that though. I've always, I no matter what, I'm always like, buddy Steve should win. Love the Zegler spin on this. I don't know how Darcy does it. So if this is a Zegler spin, I don't know what is. Mm -hmm. Hi, Rachel. We have the same birthday. May 3rd, bitches. Uh, I love that May you guys- May 3rd? May 3rd. What's the Star next Wars day, Rachel? Rachel? I know. I know. Do you want to hear a funny story about it? Absolutely. What? So my sister was born on January 4th. Both of my parents are on the 11th of different months. So my mom was like, it would be so cool if Rachel was born on May 4th. Bef before even putting together that it was May the 4th. And my mom is a huge yeah. Star Wars fan. Right. But they weren't doing C-section appointments on Fridays. So I was born on Thursday, May the 3rd. <laughs> but Star Wars <laughs> I Eve. almost had Yeah, Star Wars Eve is just as important. Because it also means you get to celebrate your birthday. And it leads into this other second holiday. I mean, so you can put up your you put up your Star Wars tree, and uh, some families open their Star Wars presents on Star Wars Day Eve. Exactly, exactly, and it's so it's about me. Uh, they just put a, a a QR code on the Oscars. I don't know what for. All right, so that means we're putting another QR code up. Hang on. <laughs> Here we go. You ready? And there you go. Oh God! Right. Wait. Oh, hold, hold on. Wait. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Ooh, this is a good one. Ooh. I like this. This is a good one. I like this. Now we've been, you know, we were revisiting that segment, the Darcy segment, but I, George, can we revisit another segment? Sure. Abigail's bread challenge. Oh, uh, this challenge. Yes. Okay. So this is nervous. This is Abigail who made my Zed Zasso shirt, Rachel. Yeah, that was me. Thanks, Abigail. Uh, such a delight. I was saying earlier to my boyfriend, I was saying like, there are a few things that could make someone more endearing to me than being like super into the George Lucas talk show. I now, just think it's the most wonderful thing. Now, Abigail, yeah. did you, did you have a, is there a way to get a Zed Zasso shirt for, cause I don't think, I don't think that Rachel has one. Of course. I would be happy to make yeah, one. Have one. Yeah. yeah. Now well, that's a swimming. But now you're saying that now, but you haven't seen this segment yet, Rachel. Oh, this this segment genuinely, this genuinely upsets me because I get so scared. Why? I get so scared. You said I'm gonna choke. Okay, Abigail, can you explain what this segment oh, is? Oh no, am I gonna? Yeah, it? No, no, no. It's okay. It's I'm safe. Um, they. I can't remember why it came up. It was it was Who during. Who knows why show. anything happens on this show? A couple of years ago, and. Uh, Someone, some guest said that they had a challenge, I think when they were on set maybe or something, that uh, you can't eat two slices of bread in under a minute. 
Oh. And so, and so at the time they, these guys were trying it and they were like, does anyone want to come on and try it? And I was like, sure. So I came mm -hmm. on and it did not go well. Mm -hmm. And then some, cause you think it's not hard. And then. Oh, here we go. They did it. They apparently used to do it on the Studio 60 set. That sounds right. Yeah. Oh my of course God. they did. Um, um, and so uh, a few times now I've come back on. I mm -hmm. even like made myself a little shirt that says Abigail's yeah. Red Challenge. And yeah. uh, it's never worked. And yeah. um, we haven't done it in a long time. And yeah. it seemed like the right time. So I do. I have. <laughs> I have my okay. And I have a uh, stopwatch. Um, and I want to be clear. Usually what happens is I fail and Patrick immediately cuts the stream. Thank you so much. Um, and so I just wanted to say, uh, Rachel, it's lovely to meet you. It's so nice to meet you. Godspeed. Holy shit. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. I'm going to count down from five and then press start. Five, four, three, two, one. Uh, the Oscars are back. They're doing a, it looks like a Fableman segment. Hey, George, sorry. We're actually going to keep this silent for Abigail. <laughs> hey, Rachel, sorry. We're actually going to keep this silent for Abigail. I'm not going to do it, but it's okay. Well, anyway, my friend, my friend, my buddy Steve was on uh, TV just now. Um, um, they said the whole Fableman segment. Patrick? Oh, I got on mute. You muted <laughs> Rachel. My and and uh, you muted me when my buddy Steve was having his moment. Yeah, moment. that's kind of rude, but. I had to say my favorite comment during that was such obvious Emmys award pandering. <laughs> show that, so, man. It was so funny. Um, I do want and to show one more QR code. This one, uh, and this I didn't tell one, Abigail. I also want to, yeah, okay, hold on. Let's uh, go to Abigail's store where she makes t-shirts. Oh, yeah, go get it. Great. And you, great you should QR all go code. buy t-shirts that Abigail made. I'm actually going to play that one one more time. I do want to um, uh, make an executive decision. Uh, yeah. I, I, I want to make a proclamation uh, mm -hmm. and maybe, I, I guess, uh, sanction or censure uh, Patrick for doing something that this show uh, is honor bound not to do, which is silence mm -hmm. women. You literally silenced Rachel by no, putting I her on mute. I was going to say something, but I didn't want to be dramatic. See, Can that's what happens, Patrick. When you do things like that, and then Rachel feels like she self silences, and it is a vicious cycle. What do you have to say for yourself? I am what I am. No, using only I want using only titles from this year's Best Picture nominees. I want you to explain to me how you can defend yourself. You're making things all quiet on this Western Front. While women are talking. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> yes, you did. Jersey did. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Okay, I'm back. Yeah, Patrick, um, I want to once again take you to task for a really shameful appropriation of the words of an honorable man, Popeye the Sailor Man. Saying I am what I am instead of saying what you should say, which is I'm sorry, and I will try to do better. Yeah, where's the listening and learning, Patrick? I, I'm sorry, I'll try to do better. It was very quick. It was the gut reaction. I just felt like I needed to get ahead of it, but mm. you're mm. all right. Makes you think. Wait, did we? Is it a documentary short subject? It is crazy that they don't do those two together. It's a bit strange. 
Does any of it make sense? <laughs> it's a, well, this is why I think the raffle idea makes sense with the way they do the Oscars, because it's sort of like they should also raffle which category is coming next. Sure. Mm. You know? They should, if they're going to do the raffle, they should just do them all back to back. Like they just pull them out and it's like bingo. They just like keep pulling them out and then you can do all the speeches back to back. Oh, or simulcast all the speeches. Sure. Or give everyone a mic who won and then just say, go. Yeah. And then people at home can remix and, and yeah. bring channels up, pull channels down. Yeah. Mm. Boy, yeah. oh boy. Yeah. Um, uh, My Year of Dicks uh, is one of the titles that's on screen right now. I think that's Oscar history. Probably. It's Must, also be. It's gotta be. It's being spoken think, by Rachel. Jordan Dicks has appeared um, on not. screen during an Oscar ceremony in the in the history of the Oscars. It's also, it's isn't animated it? Animated short film. Oh, sure. And it's being spoken by Rachel's father. Which one? <laughs> Which one? I mean, there's one. Stanley Tucci. We've got Javier yeah. Bardem. Yeah. Not your literal father. Uh, Craig Zegler on this. Who knows? No, maybe. this is one. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Pedro? Pedro. Yeah. My Pedro. Mi Pedrito. No. Oh, this um, looks so good. I love my sweet Pedro. Hands um, down one of my favorite SNL episodes of all time. Oh, it was, it was really good. One. So good. Yeah, it's interesting. So Craigler, I call him that too. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting how much the taste, the 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 comedic taste of the hosts, has such a uh, an effect on. Uh, hey, Rachel, when's it going to be? When you're going to host SNL? Oh God, yeah. I'd love to. Definitely wouldn't be for the rollout of Snow White. Maybe Hunger Games. That would be fun. That'd be good. Yeah. I think. If they'd have me, I would do it in a second. Why don't I you think so? Um, because I have a feeling that Disney probably wouldn't want like that kind of just the, sure. the possible kind of humor that would get linked to my face sure. at that period of time. Probably not uh -huh. right. Sure. You never sure, know. Sure, sure. Yeah. So be careful. You think. I wonder if there's a I wonder if you look back if there's any precedent for a similar kind of uh project having the host um Host, you know what I mean? I wonder how many Disney yeah. films have had their star host SNL. I don't, I can't think of any off the top of my head. Didn't, yeah. didn't the dragon from Pete's Dragon host in like 2016 or so? Yeah. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah, but it didn't, it didn't really end well for him. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of dragons, there's a dragon in Shazam Fury of the Gods out March 17th. Does the dragon have a name? Laden. Laden. L A D O N L A D O N. -L. Is that the song they wanted you to sing in the movie? That's actually the when I'm uh, the musical guest on SNL. That's what I'm going to perform. Yeah, and we did just get a song from Rachel Zegler on the George Lucas Talk Show. You're very get welcome. ready for this. Maybe it's a duet because I joined in. I didn't even know the song. Yeah. Well, I just figured since the last time, well, not the last time, but the first time I was on the show, I got Happy Rap Day from Watto. If anybody out there wants to clip it, strip it, and ship it, uh, love should. to hear love to hear a club remix of the lady. It, it, should should it, each it, of us do the L A D O N, and then they can mix it together in any way. Yeah, that they yeah. Want. Okay, Rachel, you go first, then George, then I'll go. L A D O N. L A D O N. L A D O N. And Layden was the dragon. Okay, you were good. almost in the right key. All right, get those auto-tune. I was trying to go neutral. I was trying to be as neutral as I could on it. Get the auto-tune uh, software ready. Get it going. Get it going. Gear it up. Turn the crank on the old auto-tune Oh, my God. Software. My goodness gracious. Dear Lord. Oh, what song is happening now? There's a song happening. Please tell me it's Hold My Hand. Let's go. By Hootie and the Blowfish? By Stephanie Germanato. Hold my hand. Gaga's on. Gaga's on TV. The best that. The Is best. Is this a Top Gun Maverick song? Probably. Or she's just reciting the lyrics. Oh. 
Oh. Did I just disappear? Oh. You, you froze for a while. I went. And I, thought, I thought you were just listening to the song because you were I like. I wasn't. I wasn't, but like everything just went. Like I fully got just Y two K'd for a sec, where I thought oh. my computer was about to turn against me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. By the way, uh, not to get any everyone too excited, hmm. but I do have a. Uh, uh, a guest who might appear uh, during the show tonight. It's one of the Oscar voters. Oh wow! Um, That's exciting. But they're but the uh, they are only willing to appear if their identity can be concealed. Oh, interesting. Okay. Oh, so are, they, are we going to have like a silhouette with an altered voice? No, I, I there are steps are being taken um, to make sure that this uh, Oscar is voter it, is it Jake Sully. <laughs> No, no, it's not Jake Sully. Okay. Jake Sully has promised that we can uh, get reach out anytime Avatar comes up, but so far, uh, <laughs> so, far it hasn't. so far Avatar. Well, just we haven't gotten to all of the Avatar nominated categories. I really like the close in camera work they're doing on Lady Gaga. It's very like yes, tight. It's more tightly framed than this show is. <laughs> I don't believe in. that, but. Here, I'll I'll show you. I'll show you. Oh well, now they just went to a wider shot, but it's still. Yeah, no, see. Hold on. The lies. When do the no, lies no, end? On. Um. Right, hold on. Here we go. Here we go. Proof of life. <laughs> hold on. Da, da, da. Look how tightly framed that is. Oh wow! They really. That's went tighter than we are, right? It is. Oh, and it's even zoomed in even more now. Hold on. Hold on. I'll get this. I'll get this. Promise me you'll hold my hand. Yeah, look at these. Look at these shots. Look at these shots. See these? Wow. Why are they doing her like that? <laughs> Why do they do her like that? Yeah, I mean, she looks great. She always she looks, looks great. great. I think it's for the intensity because it's like she's singing about the Top Gun airplane. But I want her. I want her like on a plane. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, they might pull out and reveal that she's doing this on a plane. That she's just been on a plane this entire time. time. They flew a plane into the inside of the Dolby Theater. They so there's a functioning uh, a jet plane that is hovering phantom chandelier style uh, in the Dolby Theater. Huh. I can't the prove this. has it that the phantom of the opera is there inside your mind. Mm. Oh, what a rumor. Who, who starts a rumor <laughs> like that? Angela Weber, probably. O-A-L-W. Starlight Express. Oh. Starlight <laughs> Express. Um, would you ever be in a, if they made a Starlight Express, uh, if they brought it back, would you be in Starlight Express? Do you know how to roller skate? So, George, you're just saying you were not paying attention to the show about 20 minutes ago? Yeah, yeah. I literally made this joke, George. <laughs> we did. Well, I'm also the only person who's watching the Oscars, and this is a watch-along. So there are certain portions I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah, but you don't know what. You're you like know five minutes happened. behind, Patrick. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's like of her when she was on with Bradley Cooper years ago, what you're watching. <laughs> um, it's, true. it's true. Oh, they have a dedication to Tony Scott in memory of Tony Scott. That's nice. Oh, that's oh and they have a QR code also. I don't know where it takes you. So what did you say about, about Starlight Express before, Rachel? I, apologize. I said that that was going to be my Broadway it. debut was the revival of Starlight Express. Yeah, that's funny. Should we show another QR code? Yeah, we got to We got to um, Booking.com, booking. Yeah, what does that mean? Her performance is just starting for someone in the chat. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, let's do our next QR code. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, here so we excited. go. Here we go. What can it be? Oh, hold on. I'm too zoomed in. I'm too zoomed in. Okay. Let's see. Well, there you go. Hey, that. pretty good. And look, if you haven't been there before, maybe it's a good time to check it out. Now, um, Patrick. Yes, George. How many viewers do we have right now? Is there a way to see that? We are currently 785, somewhere in there. Wow. Right. Let's say this. When we get to 1,000 viewers, have we ever been to 1,000 viewers during this? During this specifically? Yeah. I think we were, no, I think we were like mid-800s for a while. If we get to 1,000, People are saying 802. All right. If we get to a thousand, then we'll make our big announcement. How about that? Okay. Okay. Maybe Everyone text fair. your friend or go go retweet the post and say, tune into this when we get to a thousand. Uh uh we'll, we'll say what it. we're gonna do. 
they were going to do. It has nothing to do with the and, Oscars. And, listen, and if we don't ever get to a thousand, you're never going to hear. You never find it. out. Maybe you never hear it. Um, the, I um, I'm going to tweet. Okay. Uh oh. You have a can I can you send me a join link right now? Like a join <laughs> the like not the not to join the stream. Can I just send you the link? Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Meh. No, it's okay. It's twitch.tv slash friend zone. I just put it in the private chat for you. Josh and Rivera. Wow. Sorry, he just walked into the room. <laughs> uh, All the Josh is in the room. Did you, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Josh, um, how many devices do you have now? You had three when we last saw you. I he's, only he's down. now have my controller. I have... Oh. No headset. It's dwindling. It's terrible. What, what are you playing, Josh? What are you playing, honey? Fallout 76 with some of my buddies. His buddies wow. from high school. Wow. Games on the weekends. Do you give each other the business when you're playing a game like that? Uh, I mean, no, look, I just we, we, we care about cooperation. It's all about friendship and the journey. Wow, that's admirable. <laughs> Isn't look it? That. Oh, look at that. For Xbox, though, no, this is a PS Xbox. house. I got a PS2. Oh, oh, a I'm so sorry. I have a PS4 also. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got I, I got it. No, oh, I hate too. this bit, Patrick. I haven't forgotten that you silenced me before, Patrick. Ah! Silencing women on the, on the Oscars chat where women talking is a nominee. <laughs> Jail. That's pretty bad. Yeah, see? Stop. Stop. <laughs> I have a mind to call. Or the, the proper <laughs> oh, wow. Patrick, someone is <laughs> potentially potentially going to call the LAPD. A call, a rare call from Brooklyn to Los Angeles. Wow, like, Rachel. LAPD. This is what you want to be calling. It's like, yes. <laughs> Rachel, someone in the chat saying, please tell your Rachel your sister is great and a joy to work with. Oh no. Look oh, at that. she is. She's the best. Oh, that's so cool. Look at that. Jacqueline in her um, famous air. I do want to uh, thank everyone who was donating. It's very nice. Uh, and it's definitely helpful. Um, so we appreciate it. <laughs> right, the Oscars are back on. I want to remind people that is, the Oscars officially are TV 14 DLD. Oh. That's, that is for drama. Language and violence. That V is new after the last Oscars, right? Follow through. Oh, they no. They had to add no. that V. Looks like Triangle Sadness clips are being played now. Great film. Um, Great film. Lit deserved more this year. Seen you haven't seen uh, it? I haven't seen it. It's we, one of the. Oh, one of the so two good. I haven't seen. Yeah. Josh we, and I went to like the only English screening in Berlin. <laughs> We uh, about a year, roughly a year ago, George Lucas Talk Show was doing our first ever show on a boat. Mm -hmm. uh, and is it a coincidence that a year later, a boat based movie is up for major awards? Did the boat, yeah, did you end up getting led by Dolly D to safety? I mean, we ended up almost dying on the way to Disney World. Uh, I will say, she is amazing in that movie. Do you know who else is in that movie, George? One of your friends is legitimately in that movie. Remind me. Thio, Thio Bibble oh, himself yes, yes. is in trying to look at Is he really? Yes. Thio Bibble. Thio Bibble, bro. You have to contact me. <laughs> <laughs> I just got to do it for the for the fans at home. Oh my god! For my buddy George. I love it. I, love so it. I always get to do a line reading for you per show. It's great. Eventually, we'll have enough to edit together a Rachel cut of the whole of the whole film. The whole <laughs> Rachel, will you come on one time and just read the whole script? Yeah, no, I actually will. I think great. it would be. Oh. You want my little Anakin lines. You want Absolutely. them. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Avatar is up for production design. Jake Sully. Wow. All Quiet on the Western Front is one of the nominees. Very good production design. Looked like uh, uh, World War One to me. Avatar, The Way of Water. Oh, my uh, gosh. Wait, George, I'm getting a call from Jake. 
Yeah. He has something you want. Hang on. Yeah. Jake, can I put you on speaker? Way of water. <laughs> Way of water. Wow. Look at that. Hey, Jake, are you expecting you're going to? No, George, he hung up. He hung up. Okay. Me. <laughs> uh, well, let's see if they win. Avatar really has a shot at this because Maybe oh, win. Will wins. Yeah. Buddy Steve. It really looked like his house growing up. Um, yeah. Well, if they win, maybe he'll call back. See. Is it going to be Jim? Is it going to be Steve? Or is it going to be somebody else? Could be Babylon. Could be. I loved Babylon. Unpopular yeah, opinion. I, was... I know. I also loved Babylon. I loved Babylon. Max Minghella Nation, let me hear you. DJ e. Byrne, friend of the show Nation, let me hear you. Come on now. Come on now. Um. Somebody asked if I'll ever be in succession. I hate All to. All Quiet on the Western Front won it. Last it's season like, is coming out now. All Quiet on the Western Front. front. Uh, so it's another Netflix. Da -da Wait, so they lost? Yeah, so Avatar lost. Do you want to call that. Jake? Yeah, hang on. Let's get his reaction. Jake? Jake, are you there? Put him on speaker. Oh, Jake, can I put you on? Okay, great. That's fucking bullshit. Boo! <laughs> Boo! Jake Sully not taking it well. Avatar's second loss of the night. What? Yeah. Or, or is that no? That's the first first loss for Avatar. That before it was just a uh, yeah going. Uh, Wait, who won? Uh, uh, all Quiet what on the Western right? Front. There you go. That'll do it. And if, I mean, if we know anything, we know that Patrick likes things all quiet. Uh, and uh, not a lot of women in that movie. Famously, not a lot of women. <laughs> it's a real. I, I, I mean, I I haven't. It's been a while since I saw the film Sausage Party, but you could, <laughs> that could be the subtitle for All Quiet on the Western Front. A lot of dudes. A lot mm -hmm. of dudes. Mm -hmm. there, I think there might be more geese in that movie than there are uh, human <laughs> women. Not the geese. Yeah. Probably. Or some. Yeah, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm trying no. to think. But um, big night for prequels. Mm -hmm. Big night for prequels with All Quiet. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe uh, so far racking up. I, I don't know what the... Godfather 2 was half prequel. Yeah. Part prequel, part sequel. Um, George, we are at 928. That's not a thousand. No, I know, but I'm just telling you, like... I feel like a couple more uh, bumps and we'll get there. You know what I mean? A couple like, more bumps and who knows what will happen. Yeah. Um, but but I'm feeling that Oscar night energy, we're starting to get to that part of the evening where people start to get um, uh, the symptoms of Oscar fever start to grow even more intense hmm. while some symptoms start to subside. Some people, they've already uh, uh, been cured of Oscar fever and some people are feeling it more intensely than ever at this point in the evening. How, yeah. Let me check in with everyone. How how is your Oscar fever currently? What are your symptoms? Are you experiencing? Good question. That is a good question, Patrick. What are you? What about you? <laughs> oh, oh, you're asking me specifically, not just the audience at large. Uh, I, I'm still doing okay. I feel like in the next hour or so, that's when it'll probably set in. But uh, mm -hmm. no symptoms as of yet. Maybe asymptomatic. I'm not sure. I'm I'm feeling. I love movies. I yeah. like movies when things go fast. Yeah. Um, and I'm really, uh, um, I feel like stories are the way that we uh, help each other understand the way the world is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm Great, not thanks. watching. So <laughs> oh, you are, you are, you are uh, self uh, quarantining. Yeah. I, I, and it's also for self care. I don't need to see it. I don't need to hear it. You just want I'm to hear good. about it, a little bit about it. Yeah, I like. I get to hear. I get the highlights from George. I'm good. I'm Fableman's good. is up. Oh, John Williams original score. Uh, they're announcing. Hold on. Who won? Who won? Yeah, here's the thing. That Babylon, Babylon score is really good. It is good. Uh, you know what I want? All quiet on the Western Front. All quiet on the Western Front. Yeah. Who won for that? Boom, boom, boom. Wow. Did they? Really boom, boom, boom. That's you know it is good. But that um, was uh, that John lost for Fablemans. My, my my friend John Williams lost for Fablemans, and he lost to Bum Bum Bum. 
I feel like the score for All Quiet of the Western Front, remember there was that period, that sort of like inception period in movies where they were doing that inception noise? Uh, I feel like the score for All Quiet of the Western Front is kind of like a descendant of that. Well, that sort of sounds like, what was the Oscar Isaac, Natalie Portman uh not ex machina it was the one after yeah. annihilation. annihilation yeah it was like uh it yeah. was similar to that wasn't it, yeah. it was like, yeah yeah where it's like oh this is so hans <laughs> that's what it was it was that because you're watching all quiet on the western front and sometimes yeah. you're like there's no music it's world war one things quiet. are feeling bad and then all yeah. of a sudden they'll go Bwom, 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 and you're like shit this war is bad uh-huh. i think bad yeah. things are gonna happen uh huh. And this music is communicating to me that you don't want to go within ten miles of World War One. It's yeah. a horrible experience. Yeah, I agree. I, I'm I'm hopeful that we never have to do that. Oh, it takes me back. You know, we had, we touched on that a little bit during Young Indiana Jones Chronicles. A mm-hmm. little bit, a little bit of World War One. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A little bit of World War One. Little boy Indy. Yeah. Having little World War One adventures, but we that was always. Do you ever watch Young India Jones Chronicles, Rachel? You know what it is? I have seen the bits and pieces, but yes, I have seen it. Well, what does that mean, Rachel? You're <laughs> Star Wars Force, George. I don't know. Don't ask me. <laughs> We're getting into a dangerous conversation for you, so I'm going to step back from my rage <laughs> at the fact that Star Wars Detours is in a vault somewhere. Okay? We're not going to talk about it. All right? Uh, but I said, have you watched the Young India Jones Chronicles? And you said... I've seen the bits and pieces as if I would know that sounds very official. Like there's an official like collection, a curated. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, that was the thing pieces. that my, my buddy Steve sent me a collection that's just called the bits and pieces, the bits and pieces, if you will. Yeah. Steve's personal edit of his favorite moments from the young Indiana Jones Chronicles. We didn't go as hard into how bad war is on young Indiana Jones Chronicles as mm-hmm. all quiet on the Western front or, Ak, Akko, Akot, Akot was, uh, Akot Wolf. Yeah, Akot Wolf. What? Are you having a stroke? No, I'm trying to make a fun shortening for All Quiet on the Western Front. It's Akot My question still stands. <laughs> no, no stroke for me. Okay. Uh, I do want toast. Is that, I know if you smell toast and it's not <laughs> happening, that's not a stroke. What if, you, what if you crave toast? Is that? Oh my toast? God. Yeah. Do want hey, some hey George. Fun. Yeah. I have another guest here. So let's bring him in. Uh, this is a very exciting one for me. Our, our next guest has won two Oscars, George. Two Oscars for that's best animated now. feature. No. Wait, I gotta play the bumper. Hang on one second. Please welcome the winner of Best Anime Feature for Coco and Toy Story 3, Lee Unkrich, everybody! Coco's the best movie ever. <laughs> Coco Hello, deserves the best fucking picture. <laughs> are you kidding me? <laughs> How are you? I love Thank you, Rachel. You're welcome. I love your framing. I love the deep focus of the uh, of you being sharp and the background being blurred it looks greatly well you of all people should appreciate that yeah it, it's wonderful um i'm uh, first of all before we get into anything i want to i want to talk about the shining book <laughs> thank you yes we need to do some buzz marketing yeah yeah uh, uh it's uh it, it's it's a wonderful book have you seen it i've seen it yeah <laughs> <laughs> My buddy Steve uh, showed me his copy. I don't think Stephen has his yet, but he will shortly. He doesn't have it. Well, he showed me something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He George, actually, I did. I sent him PDFs of the whole thing. So yeah, that's what that's he was I was like a digital, a digital copy. I love digital stuff. Um, <laughs> and it looks just marvelous. Good. Well, thank you. I'm glad you liked it, George. Um, when is it? When are people going to get their hands on, on this? Uh, when's it going to be out in the world? Well, it's um, it's up for pre-order right now, but this first edition is an edition of only a thousand copies. It, yeah, it's a collector's edition, and it costs fifteen hundred bucks a pop. So right. it's not for everyone, but for the super fans with some disposable income, um, or if for they, billionaires, snapping it up, or for a billionaire like or for me, that's just like, like yeah, 
I'll uh, I'll buy that book. That's nothing. That's like what you find when you're cleaning your car, like under. Yeah, the isn't that? Don't most books cost? Is that the same cost as a normal book? I genuinely don't know. It's pretty close. Yeah, well, he it's hasn't bought close. a book in a very long time. He doesn't yeah. know what the market price is anymore. Uh, but this book has well, I've been in your library for shining fans. I've been in your library, George. It's it's quite a library. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, the the library with the the stained glass ceiling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. And cats. There's like cats sleeping on piles of books, as yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. It's one book, Michael. What could it cost? Sure. How was how has your Oscar night been going, Lee? Pretty good. Um, I cried twice, and I don't think I've ever cried watching the Oscars. Mm. What did you cry during? I cried when Key won Best Supporting mm-hmm. Actor. Yeah. I mean, like I was like, like ugly crying. Like I was so happy for him. Like I mean, a he deserved it completely. B that's yeah. one of my. It's probably my favorite film of the year. Yeah. And um, I mean, he just has an incredible story, and it was just so beautiful to see him up there. So I just like lost it. Yeah, it's really, uh, it's really nice I like- seeing how good everyone has been to him over this whole season, and how like nice and accepting and and welcoming everyone has been. And it's just. Every photo that he posts with someone is delightful, and I'm just very Absolutely. happy that he's been having a good time. Um, well, he completely deserved it. <laughs> yeah. Did you now? Did you I cry? That, uh, I was a little worried that Judge Reinhold was gonna uh, Judge Reinhold. What am I saying? <laughs> um, that Judge Hirsch. <laughs> yeah. Judge yes. Reinhold was also nominated, right? <laughs> um, yeah. I was. I thought Judge Hirsch might get it because you know. Lifetime achievement, but it always bothers me when people get those kind of lifetime achievement Oscars as yeah, one of the categories. So he I was really very, happy. He's very good in that movie, though. He's very good, although he's only yeah. in it, you know, a couple scenes. Yeah. I'm yeah, not, yeah, yeah. not to take anything away from anybody. I mean, my God, yeah. you know, it's like it's a big deal to get nominated for an Oscar. But um, but Key really like uh, it, it was just a beautiful thing. Yeah. yeah. And and what was cry number two? I think I, well, that had already primed me. So I think when <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis won, sure. um, yeah. I, you know, at the end when she was talking about her parents having been nominated, I just kind of lost it again there. But, it, you know, it's like, it's like seeing a movie, like if you ever see a movie like Coco or like the end of Toy Story 3, like it gets you mm-hmm. crying and then like something yeah. else happens and you cry even more. So same kind of thing. That is true. You are responsible for two of the big cry movies in the last couple of years. Like those are my movies life. That people go to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, was that something that you uh, guys wanted to do? Were you like, we're going to make people cry with this? Or was it just a byproduct of the story that you wanted to tell? Well, yeah. I mean, no. I mean, we don't set out to like, <laughs> like we have some formula to make people cry. Um, you know, I consider it um, a huge honor if a, if a film I make has that effect on people because it mm. means that they've really right. connected with the characters and 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 relate to it personally on some level and yeah. um and it means i've you know we've all we've laid the track from a storytelling perspective to that point at the end of the film so that sure. it ha- hopefully has that effect on people well and also like to do that in uh, you know in the second or third film in a trilogy you know to be able to build to lay the track over the course of a trilogy so that you have that additional uh layer of emotional investment uh so you can really deliver uh and and that doesn't always happen in trilogies it's not a given uh because sometimes Mm -hmm. um not all trilogies grow in strength it's a very tricky thing to do um i was in the third film with judge reinhold of the beverly hills cop trilogy (laughs) and best line reading too (laughs) and uh, i didn't have any scenes with judge um but that was a film that I felt like, um, you know, really did deliver like what had been building up over the, over the first and second film to the point where the third one is the one that I have people all the time come up and say, like, I get really hey. emotional. Do they say uh, hey to you? When, yeah, when they, because I'm in a little scene where I'm waiting to ride on a, a, a an amusement park attraction. And then um, mm-hmm. Beverly Hills cop himself, <laughs> Axel Foley, uh, gets in front of me and commandeers the ride. I'm there with a... a uh, a, a lady companion. Uh, I'm on a date, and I'm completely mm-hmm. humiliated. I say, "Hey," and uh, and then he gets on the ride, and 
you know, it's I won't compare it to the scene where all of the toys in Toy Story 3 where it looks like they're about to uh, burn to death in the molten <laughs> in the lava. incinerator. Yeah. But I also yeah. won't not compare it to that moment. <laughs> I just sort of leave I, that for others to make the comparison. I need to watch that third Beverly Hills cop again because I don't remember that part, but I haven't seen it in a really long time. You may have repressed it because yeah. it's too sad. Who's Did you ever consider doing a, a third American graffiti movie? I, I, yeah, I, I really think I should have. Uh, in, in, what George, they're technically, George, they're well, technically, no. yeah. Yes, the, the first American graffiti and then more American <laughs> graffiti, um, I mean, which is the greatest tagline maybe yeah. in the history of movies. You need most. Remember at the end of American graffiti, you wish there were more? Well, there is. <laughs> What's the blame on the viewer? <laughs> Who made this movie happen? You need most American graffiti. And then, but then I sort of went unconventional, a little bit Godfather 2 where Radioland Murders is a prequel because Brian Ben Ben and Mary Stuart Masterson, they are the parents, uh, I believe, of uh, I think Richard, of Richard right? Dreyfus's right? character yeah. in American Graffiti. So, you, so you've got a whole like Pixar theory thing going there. Absolutely. It very much is like for, and there was, you know, it was controversial when Radio Land Murders came out. It was not necessarily the people who've been waiting for the third more American graffiti. It wasn't the story they, they wanted, but I would argue it's the story they needed. <laughs> and then you gave them more the of story it. we got. <laughs> yeah. uh, did you um, cry when you were at the Oscars, Lee? Did I what? When I won? No. You know, it's funny. I, because I told my wife just now, I said, I don't think I've ever cried during the Oscars before. And she said, even when yeah. you won them? And I said, no, I don't think yeah. I did. Because I was just so, you know, I was so freaked out, I think. I mean, the first time I was just like praying that I wouldn't trip on my way up to the stage or yeah. screw up the speech that I had memorized. Because I didn't want to be one of those people who pulls out a sheaf of paper and reads it. Right. Um, but the downside of that is like I spent weeks practicing my speech and that's all I was thinking of the whole show until I went up on stage and it went really well, but um, I didn't enjoy myself. So with it's Coco, I, I just, kind of, just kind of said, screw it. And I took papers out of my pocket. I didn't care. I wanted yeah. to enjoy my time. And yeah. so, but I didn't cry either time. It was more, I think, a relief that it was over because Oscar season can be kind of a slog. Uh -huh. yeah. I don't mean to sound like ungrateful or anything because I'm not, no, but no. it's like it can be hard. It, you know, yeah. you yeah. you want to get on with your life, and that it's a it, slog before you even before the nominations even come out, and then you do the. I imagine campaigning as a nominee is also a slog. Lee, who did you wear at the Oscars? <laughs> um, <laughs> I think I wore John Varvatos at the last one. All right, but I. I and I maybe wore Armani once. I don't know. I mean, I, you know, the best oh, no. um, animated feature people don't get dressed by right. anyone. Sure. Yeah. I don't remember when I got my Thalberg. I I'm tr I was trying to remember who I wore. I I I think it might have been Joseph A. Banks. Nice. Oh, wow. <laughs> Cheap. Nice. You, you, you go for the reasonably priced ones. Did you like it the way you been. look? Yeah, I look fine. They guarantee. <laughs> If you yeah. wear it well, who cares? No one knows. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, had you had you been to the show, the show, the big show before uh, uh, Toy Story three, or was that your first time going? Oh, like going to the Oscars? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been there a number of times over the years. Yeah, because yeah. I had what like I co-directed yeah. Finding Nemo, and we were up for that. I've just yeah, there have been different times I've gone, um, mm -hmm. and it's much more fun to go when you're not a nominee. I think, um, other than yeah. the winning the Oscar part, that's fabulous but yeah. otherwise it's like very stressful um i was with some a bunch of friends from pixar one year and one of my friends brought a friend of his and when we were doing the red carpet he looked around and he said the funniest thing that i've always remembered he, he was looking around and he said i feel like i'm at a wax museum except everyone's alive sure and that's basically yeah. what it feels like it is if, especially if you're not used to hanging out with celebrities Sure, day, seeing, seeing Jack Nicholson 20 feet in front of you or whatever. Mm -hmm. Who was the I person wish. that that got that for you? Like, was there someone where you're like, oh my gosh, that's so-and-so? 
Um, well, I did see Nicholson from a great distance one time I was mm -hmm. at the Oscars. And so that was, I was like, I was actually in the balcony for that one. And I could see him down like a little pinprick in the front row, but I was yeah. still kind yeah. of jonesing over the fact that he was actually in the same room as me. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's just cool to see people. And then you just like, you stare at them and you're like, are they real? Like how much makeup are they wearing? Who's being yeah. real? Who oh, seems wow. really phony? Yeah. Any any surprising heights? Because sometimes that's the thing. It's like they're mm -hmm. either a little taller or a little shorter than you might expect. Charlize Theron is really tall. Hmm. And really yeah. beautiful. Yeah. 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 She um, has not done a Pixar, right? No, she hasn't done a Pixar movie. Yeah, I'm surprised. Um, that's interesting. When, um, when, yeah, when you're I mean, up on the stage, when you're up on the stage, um, was there anyone when you looked out that surprised you because you hadn't seen them before? When you're up there, you're not looking at anybody. Right. You're looking out into this void and you're, and you know that millions of people are watching you on live television and you're mm -hmm. just like doing anything you can to not make an ass out of yourself basically. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I wish I could just like stand there and take it in and look at all the front rowers. <laughs> but no, I just neither time did I do that. Actually, I mean, the most fun thing about the Oscars, honestly, is going to the Oscar luncheon. Like all the people who get nominated get to go mm -hmm. to the Oscar luncheon. Mm -hmm. And um, that's really fun because um, it's not like the Golden Globes where like all the A-list stars are up front because it's a TV show. At the Oscar luncheon, they make it very even. So like you could mm -hmm. be nominated for best sound and find yourself sitting next to Nicole Kidman at a table. You know, they mix everybody up. Like at Coco, my wife was sitting next to Margot Robbie and, and they oh, had wow. a lovely, lovely conversation together, like very lovely woman. Um, and it's also a great opportunity to go up to people and talk to them. Like I sure. went up to P.T. Anderson. I'm a huge fan of his films and I just wanted to like thank him. Yeah. And uh, another time that I was at an Oscar luncheon, my childhood crush, like my high school crush was Annie Lennox when she oh was in Europe next. And I mean, I was just like, I can't even tell you, my room was filled with posters of her. Oh, and oh, she was nominated for singing the song at the end of one of the Lord of the Rings movies. And she actually went yeah. on to win. Um, but I went over to her table and I basically got down on bended knee and, and introduced myself and started talking to her. And she couldn't have been more nice. That's we had this cool. great conversation. And then on the way out, I was like waiting by the doors for my friends to come and other people were filing out at the end of the luncheon. And Annie walked by and she turned and made eye contact and went. Oh, so, that's great. That's oh, great. I oh. wish my 14-year-old, uh, 15-year-old self could have seen that. It's so sweet. Where uh, where do you keep the awards now? Um, you mean these? <gasps> <laughs> and Shit, this? dude. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, baby. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Lee, can you make them kiss? Gorgeous. Oh. Um, what did you get? Where do I keep them? I actually have a cabinet with some awards in it, like a bunch yeah. of junk. Like, not junk, like stuff from over the years from Pixar. Yeah. Um, we just we happen to have a cabinet built into the wall in in our playroom, and so that's where everything kind of lives. I want to say, Lee, there was a, there was a, a nice, very cinematic moment when you were talking before, where your autofocus shifted to the background. Uh, uh huh. Oh, did I go? No, no. Let yes. me see if oh, I can yeah. get them to focus. I have to cover my eyes, I think, because my camera. There we go. Oh, there you go. Ooh, that's yeah. insane. Wow, look at that Ooh. shot. Those are Lee's two Oscars. My boyfriend just walked in the room and said, "What are those?" <laughs> Good stuff. The other really like, weird talking. thing about winning Oscars is that like one year you'll be at the Oscars, like in a tuxedo, yeah. holding a statue all evening and like being able to talk to anyone you want because anyone will talk to you if you have an Oscar. Yeah. Um, and then the next year you're like in a bathrobe on your couch eating pizza. It's yeah. a beautiful thing. Wow. Rachel presented last year and now she's been with us for almost three hours tonight. So. Wow. <laughs> Were you not able to find You her? know, here we are. Mm -hmm. no. Um, that's so fun. What yeah. uh, before when mm -hmm. when you were talking, it was the mask in the background that pulled mm -hmm. focus, and it looked like a moment in a horror movie where like a cursed <laughs> mask suddenly like he's right, um, he's right behind me, isn't he? Moment. I think you might have. It must have been that you looked down for a second, so your eyes went away, and so the you wanted to go to the mask, I guess, the mask. in the back. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Come on. There oh, we go. Oh, there we go. Wow. 
That's a Very. tribal mask from Papua New Guinea. Oh. Wow. And Very it is cursed. Exciting. I got a head pat. Oh, no. That, uh, Thomas has a basketball. Have, you visited, have you visited Papua New Guinea? I have not, although I'm going to Marquesas in November. I'm going to oh. South, the South Pacific for the first time. Um, I'm a, I'm, I'm just smitten with everything Polynesian. Sure. I mean, I'm very tattooed. Wow. So. Oh, wow. Um, and, lady. uh, I, so yes, it's my happy place. Yeah. Um, now I'm, I'm going through, cause I wanted to get your characters that you have played in the movies too. Cause you've oh my done God. Three places. Oh, I haven't done much, but. There's a couple. That's so exciting, though. There's, I see four characters plus three additional voices credits. Yeah, they're all just little teeny things. Yeah. Do you have no. one that you? But I still get you... residuals from them. So yeah. well, that was also my follow-up <laughs> question. That was. I literally on one of the movies, uh, we did these fake outtakes on the early movies, and and my voice yeah. was just saying like, marker. Yes. <laughs> and I'm still getting, I'm still getting residual checks for that. Wait for like the Monsters Inc. ones. Yeah. I remember the Monsters Inc. one yeah. so clearly. Yeah. Oh my god. It's so funny. The set's like you're talking to like the number one Disney fan. I'm sorry to everyone else in the chat, but like yeah. that's my that's amazing to me. <laughs> um, well, you know, we just like I mean, it's fun to stick ourselves in in the movies yeah. in little ways. Um, I thought I wasn't going to in Coco because we we had vowed to have a 100% Latino cast. Mm -hmm. Um, but I thought it, I don't know. I thought it was okay to just do one little line in the movie. So yeah. I do the line in Coco when, um, right after Ernesto de la Cruz gets kind of thrown into the bell at the end mm -hmm. of the movie and it collapses on him uh -huh. and the crowd goes nuts cheering. It cuts to this guy coming back to his seat with a couple of elote and, and he says, what did I miss? And that's what <laughs> That's so cool. Oh my God. That's yeah. So I, I did the same with uh, <laughs> the Star Wars movies. Uh -huh. I sort of like wasn't in them and I wasn't in them. And then finally, when I got to the sixth one that I made, episode three, yeah. decided to put myself in as Baron Papanoida, uh, which is mm -hmm. a wordless cameo, but mm -hmm. I had to do it at a certain point. I'm like, I gotta, I gotta get in here. I gotta be in a Star Wars. And I was waiting for it. it. Right? Yeah. You feel good about doing that, George? I think I did a good job. Yeah. 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 Okay. It, it didn't distract too much. You do what the role requires. Yeah. You know? Do you find it weird um, directing yourself? Uh, yeah. I didn't give myself too much direction. I just sort of did it, and I figured if we don't like it, I I I knew I would be comfortable changing it digitally to whatever we needed afterwards. A lot of actors aren't True. necessarily comfortable with that because they want to feel like they have control but i like to have control of the performance in post being able to have as many options uh as possible and did like, you watch myself, play, did you watch playback on the set like are you one of those people who wants to see your performance or like makes yeah, you uncomfortable I, I i looked to just make sure the frame was right but i knew what the baron needed to do and and what he what i didn't need it was a very low-key very understated performance also lee it's so adorable that you think george uses sets no set. It's well, yeah. Well, the, 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 yeah. There's a set, it's but it's just it's not there. It's it's yeah. the set is in the in the computer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was just a room with the screens, you know. It's now, the same sets that you use on Pixar films, basically. Uh, uh, exactly. Yeah. Would you um when you guys were doing like early storyboards or anything like that, would you ever step in to do voices uh, as like placeholder? Um, yeah, once in a while, I didn't do a lot of that, uh, because I yeah. wasn't asked to, uh -huh. even though I did spend my entire childhood in youth theater. Um, wow. I, I wasn't often asked to do that, but it's, it's for the best because it's like a big time sink for people, for the people at the studio who are called in to, sure. to do the scratch voices because they're, we're sure. constantly rewriting and you're having to bring people in all the time. What was your first play that you did in youth theater, Lee? My first, that's a good question. Or, or any early ones that were memorable. Um, I was in a musical called The Pied Piper of Hamlin, uh -huh. mm -hmm. where I played a rat. Like that's got rats in it. Yeah, I played a rat. Good. You're one of the rats. That's I was good. in a production of Alice in Wonderland. Playing? I played the Dormouse at the tea party. 
very good. Also, also There's sort a of rodent, yeah. rodent theme. Yeah. Yeah. Rodent theme. And, and I had my one lead for a Disney owned company. I had my one lead role as Monroe in the fabulous Fable Factory, which I know everyone has seen. That's uh, it's I mean, our favorite. This spring. <laughs> uh, what was was that a play? Was that a musical? What was the deal? It was a that? musical. Yeah, okay. I think these were all musicals. I was in. I grew up in Cleveland, and so I was like really active at the Cleveland Playhouse. They had a big kind of youth Yay. theater program there. By the way, I feel really bad that I haven't said anything. Rachel, I really, 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 really loved you in West Side Story. Oh, goodness. Thank you so much, my God. <laughs> That's very kind. Thank you. No, you you don't great. have to say that. That is not something I'm that not just <laughs> saying it. You were really, really great, of course. Thank you. Oh, yeah. gosh. Good oh. news, Lee. In five days, you can see her in Shazam 2, Fury of Boy, the Gods. <laughs> I did see the first Shazam, so yeah. I'm looking forward You're to ready. seeing the next one. Thank you. We're really proud. It's honestly quite funny so I, th I think everyone will really like it I'm but like to laugh Lee what's that do you like to laugh I do like to laugh it's it's very funny you funny. love to laugh I do love to laugh like but I'm kind of a tough customer oh you're not an easy laugh no here we go here we what go. kind of what makes well, you my what family knows you? when I laugh like it, it's real yeah oh wow Oh, now, man. was that something when you were at Pixar? Was that something that people strove for? They're like, if we can make, can make laugh, me laugh, we get yeah, laugh. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I mean, no, I don't think anyone was striving for that. But if we were in a screening yeah. of like reels, like a, like an in yeah. progress version of the movie, if I burst out laughing at one of those screenings, they knew they had a good joke. They're like, write that down. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool. Oh, so, Rachel, God. just to bring things full circle, yeah. since you worked with Steven. Yes. I actually got to have a couple of really great conversations with Stephen about The Shining for my book. Yeah. And Stephen ended up writing the foreword. For no the book, way. Which is awesome because he almost never does that. No, no. Well, he's he's hard to book. He's hard to pin down. That's awesome. And you said that it's available for pre-order right now, right? Or like one, one uh, what is it? What's the Kevin Bacon 1, thing? 1, one degree. Yeah, one we're one degree, degree separated, separated from Stephen. There you go. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> I'm glad and to have you. How are you, George? <laughs> so three of us in this and room. And Patrick's met Stephen, actually. And I met him a couple weeks ago at a PGA screen. All of, so look at this. All of us, so there you go. All of us know Steve. We're all, all, all here. Our buddy Steve. Buddy Steve. Um, oh but you also you worked on that book with a man who wrote a lot of Star Wars books, uh, J.W. Rinsler. And who worked for uh, George for a very long time, as you yeah. know, Mr. Jonathan Rinsler. Yeah. yeah, was the was the king of writing behind the scenes uh, Star Wars books uh, for mm -hmm. a very long time. When um, I first worked uh, with him, he was still working for you, George. Um, and, you know, we all know that sadly we lost Jonathan mm -hmm. um, a couple of years ago. He finished writing the Shining book, but he never got to see it finish. So oh. wow. I'm kind of heartbroken about that. But I think I know he would be very proud of it. And it was like his kind of feather in his cap to be writing a book about uh, a Stanley Kubrick film. That's cool. I think he How saw that. How long did you guys work on the book for? Probably uh, about eight years. Wow. It was a long haul. I mean, I, I spent I spent almost 12 years working on this. I found the first email the other day. I'm giving a talk next week at the Motion Picture Academy Library about the making yeah. of the book and we're having a screening of The Shining. And so I've been like digging into old emails, trying to make sure I get things right when I'm talking about like the timeline. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's been 12 years since I first reached out to the Kubrick estate and, and asked if I could do a book on The Shining. Did you spend time in their archives or something? Are there archives in London? Is that where they they're are? In London, yeah. They're at the London yeah. College of Communications. That's where all his archives were donated. So yeah, I was absolutely a kid in a candy store there for sure. Yeah. What was the majority of the stuff they had in archives? Like, did they? Well, it's just stuff that it's all. It's a lot of production stuff, and it's stuff yeah. that that Stanley happened to keep. There's kind of mm -hmm. almost no rhyme nor reason to what he kept or didn't keep. Like a lot of stuff went out into the world. Sure. Like I own that Apollo Eleven sweater that Danny wears in the movie. Oh wow! And, um, and that you know, Kubrick had a sale at the end of production to just try to sell props and whatever to wow. try to make some money back mm -hmm. because. George, not everyone is you who has a ranch with a barn where you can, you know, keep all this stuff. Uh -huh. So Stanley tried to sell stuff and, and, you know, the first assistant editor on the movie bought the sweater, took it home for their nephew who wore it for a few weeks till he outgrew it. And then it sat in her closet for decades until I bought it. Um, Does it fit? 
Uh, I actually, my when I got, first got the sweater, my son, who's now 18, was five years old, and I, mm-hmm. put it, I put him in it and took a picture. And he was really unhappy. He said, I'll put it on, but I'm not going to smile. I said, oh, cool. oh, no. okay. We don't Danny, want a smiling, a smiling yeah. photo with that sweater. Yeah, Danny barely smiled either, so that yeah. makes sense. No. That's been the greatest thing about the book, I think, are the people I've gotten to meet. You know, I've gotten to know the yeah. whole Kubrick family and I'm friends oh, wow. with Dan Lloyd, played Danny, and, you know, I got to hang out for a day with Shelley Duvall. Um, uh, lots of great folks. I mean, really, it was, I really had a blast. It was like, I mean, I saw The Shining when I was 12 years old, and I became pretty obsessed with it mm-hmm. very quickly. Mm-hmm. And I, I would have these moments where I, like, I just, I was my 12-year-old self again, and I was, mm-hmm. like, pinching myself that I was hanging out with Danny from the shining or yeah. going out and getting drunk with the twins or with the Grady twins, you know, uh-huh. just like Crazy. so many amazing experiences. Now, do you buy into any of those conspiracy theories that uh, like, there's the documentary that has all of the wild thought. Do, are there any of those that stick with you or do you think it's all, it's there's all some, like, there's, oh, there actually wild. is some truth to a couple of them. Most of it's, yeah. you know, garbage. Sure. sure. But I mean, there's stuff having to do with the Native American genocide that's that's real. I mean, I've talked yeah. with uh, Diane Johnson, who wrote the screenplay with Stanley, and they definitely were talking about some of that kind of stuff. Wow. Um, and and they also read this essay on the uncanny by Sigmund Freud. Mm-hmm. And Sigmund Freud talked about what kinds of things would give readers of literature or people looking at art like an uncanny feeling. And 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 Stanley definitely studied that. And and there was stuff he put in The Shining. Sure. The, the problem with, the, with that is that like people think that because Stanley put some things in The Shining that had some meaning, then they think everything, like every last little thing, yeah. Yeah. was there yeah. for a reason and and need, needs to have meaning and be analyzed. That leads me to my question: uh, it, Do you deal with uh, at one point in the movie uh, the TV is on in the background and you hear the Roadrunner th- television theme song almost in its entirety? Uh-huh. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with that yeah. song. The if you're on yeah. the highway, and Roadrunner goes beep beep. You know that song? Yes. Roadrunner. Wait, the George. Hang on. You, you, I Road just want Runner. Yeah. If he catches you, you're through. Get him. Um, do you uh, address uh, <laughs> that in the book? <laughs> well, that that's one of those things. Like, there's no meaning to that. That was purely because he could get it for free because Warner Brothers owned it. Okay, so there's so it's sort of a similar to the way that Warner Brothers cartoons, uh, they would use the Carl Stalling, uh, would use the Warner Brothers Library of Music for music in Looney Tunes. He had free reign of that. So now Stanley Kubrick was sort of reversing that using a Warner Brothers own Looney Tunes song within The Shining. Yeah, because he didn't but have the, to pay for it, or he had, to, or he got it like for a song, because he was all large, about saving money. But large portions of the movie are essentially a uh, predator and prey with Danny running from uh, his father, Jack Torrance, wow. very much uh, foiled again and again. But the last yeah. shot of Jack Torrance where he's frozen solid is very much <laughs> like what happens to the coyote in many of those cartoons. Sometimes the coyote Enjoy that. Enjoy that. Enjoy that theory. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not like really serious. Like Stanley, Stanley, he knew that people were going to like try to find meaning in what he did. I have a great story in the book where he finished shooting a shot and then he turned to someone on the crew and winked. And he said, let's let the French film critics figure that one out. So, I mean, he, you know, he toyed with it. And um, I mean, I've gone through the same thing on my films. I mean, there were all these articles written about how Toy Story three was a Holocaust analogy. You know, it's it's Mm -hmm. stuff that's not true, but I still find it interesting that I've created something that people it resonates find that some, deeply. Find some meaning in, even if it's yeah. nothing that I intended, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that happens with anybody who makes films. It, yeah. It's happened to me. Of course it's happened to you. What do people get wrong about your movies, George? Uh, well, I mean, a lot of people don't realize the, the how political they are. You know, that mm-hmm. a lot of people in recent years will say, like, stop adding politics into Star Wars as if, Star Wars wasn't inherently anti-fascist to begin with. Sure. You know, you don't, I wasn't exactly being subtle calling them stormtroopers. You know, that's a pretty direct line. Mm. Not being too coy with that, you know? And then I, and then of course I was anti-Nazi in the Indiana Jones films famously. Sure. Uh, You know, I mean, this this is at that time. It wasn't that didn't feel like that brave a stance. 
to be anti-Nazi. It feels like now it's sort of a little bit cutting edge, if unfortunately. Yeah. Um, yeah. But Nazis don't like Star Wars anymore. Sure. They, they, a lot of a lot of a lot of uh, people grew up and realized that uh, they didn't like the yeah. politics of Star Wars, unfortunately, because they didn't realize they'd grown up into the bad guys. Yeah. <laughs> oh well. Oh, hey, well, you don't need them. Well. You don't need. I don't, them. I don't. I do not need Nazis to like my films. They can go find no. their own films. Yes. Or stop being um, Nazis. That would be the best thing. Was there something that you wanted in those archives that was not there, or something where you're like, "Man, I wish this thing existed still." The only thing that I wish existed that no longer exists is the is the three wheel trike that Danny rides around. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Because at the end of production, Jan Harlan, Stanley's brother-in-law, took that home for his kids, and they basically rode it until it fell apart. And so it's probably in pieces, you know, rusting in a landfill in England somewhere. So sad. So. But uh, I've got a bunch of stuff from the film. I have one of the axes. I have Wendy's wow. knife. Um, wow. Wow. Yeah, I've, I've, yeah, I've actually got a bunch of costumes from the movie. I'm gonna, planning on donating them all to the motion picture academy museum yeah cool. at some you, point. you should donate some of it to the lucas museum of narrative art mm -hmm. that's opening in uh, 2025 is that not not just your stuff no yeah, i mean a lot of it will be yeah i gotta uh it, i'm gonna put a lot of my stuff in there but uh certainly like the, the shining is a great example of narrative art there are many many even even just like i would love to have that you know that big photo that uh the, not the photo the big painting that scatman crothers has Mm -hmm. uh, on his wall, do you know where that is? No, <laughs> it's actually a it's actually a photo. They're both photos. It's a photo. I actually wow. talked to the woman who was right. the model in one of those oh posters. God. Yeah, I went deep on this thing, That's wide crazy. and deep. Yeah. Now, was that for the book, or was that just uh, Lee wants to talk to this person? Thing? Well, both. I mean, okay. honestly, <laughs> everything that I did for the book was Lee wants to talk to these people. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Right. I like that that's now the official name for it. <laughs> and um, uh, how had the, can you tell anything about what, how her, uh, how did she feel about being featured so prominently in that, in the movie, in such an iconic movie? Um, I, you know, she, I think she wasn't even aware of it for many years. I think it wasn't until it came out on video at some point, oh, people right. started talking about it and she found out that she had been in it. I think that she, I don't know. I'm trying to remember what she told me. I actually didn't put anything that I talked to her about in the book because I, I think it was too, it was a little too, it was a little too inside baseball. Sure, sure. Um, That's what we're here for. <laughs> yes. So I think she probably said something to me about wishing she had gotten some money for it. Yeah. Yeah. You would imagine. Yeah. 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 Money you know would be nice. I don't blame her. I don't blame her. She I, had I done say... that for a, uh, she had been part of a calendar in the early 70s called, um, that had like, uh, African American women, um, and uh, you know she has that huge afro in the. Uh, uh -huh. I got my hands outside the frame here. Mm -hmm. She has mm -hmm. a huge afro, and uh, the name of that image was Supernatural Dreams, and it was one of the months in a calendar. Huh. And wow. That's where that that image had come from. I would say if anyone ever put an image of me, a similar kind of image of me, in a movie, I would want to be paid for it. <laughs> As you should. I that yeah. it, it, it does feel like. Uh, um, I mean, so wouldn't anybody if they went to a movie and like their image yeah, was being used? Yeah, big big picture of me that looks like that. I'd be like, "Where's my check?" Do those <laughs> pictures exist? What do you mean? You like, can make uh, anything exist in it? No, I mean, no, I no, 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 I'm, asking, I'm asking George: Is there a chance that this is going to happen, or is this just a? I mean, if someone goes to one of those AI machines and says, "George Lucas in a big afro, provocative photo." <laughs> 30 seconds later it's there this is the world we live in now uh -huh. oh with ai yeah. Yeah. yeah i could do that on my phone like right now yeah please lee please don't <laughs> unless you're willing to take out your checkbook <laughs> do the right thing i know you know you could you're not obligated but i feel like we've had a, an ethical moral conversation here yeah if you do that please <laughs> even just a modest check <laughs> just for your conscience just to be like george i I asked the AI to do this. Now, this I'm assuming was the first book that you had worked on. Is that true? Yeah, I mean, we did like art of books for, sure. for you know, went to the Pixar. Wait, movie. Sure, I just asked asked the question about what you did before you asked. Yeah, what just happened? Wait, did what's going just, on? Did he glitch? I don't know. Patrick, you were talking. Hey, there you go. We are right there. Very good. 
did everyone else experience Patrick's question the same way that yeah, Rachel and I did? Where Patrick went, <laughs> oh. well, well, I mean, I'm like interesting party trick. Like you could like pretend like you were talking out of sync. No, we were. Uh, I was trying to move on from that question. I didn't know how to phrase my next question. So that's when you don't I, have a question, your thought. body starts acting like you're asking a question first. Yeah, it's so fucking weird. Um, one of the weirdest things I've ever seen, Patrick. <laughs> Do you have another book that you would like to work on? Is there another idea for something? Maybe that does not take 12 years, but like it's also. I mean, know. I don't, you know, I, I had no experience in publishing and I, yeah. I basically got thrown into the deep end and had to figure everything out myself. Um, okay. You know, nobody gets rich making books mm -hmm. unless you're like, you know, Stephen King. Sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, I mean, I, I, this was totally a passion project. It wasn't about, making a buck i mean yeah. i'm gonna be so in the red at the end of this whole thing but okay. it's okay i don't care and yeah. even even and i'm a will there be a non-deluxe edition down the road i know sometimes that happens with Toshin books where they'll yeah like with the stanley kubrick archives book there was the deluxe yeah. one and then eventually you get that's happened a number of times with things yeah they're, absolutely i mean they, they've done a bunch of kubrick books and they've done the these collector's editions first it's been so weird doing press for my book because it's it's i feel like i'm going out and doing press for one of my films Mm -hmm. except it's like I'm doing press for a movie that only a thousand people in the world are allowed to see. Sure. Right. You know? Sure. Um, but yeah, you know, hopefully sooner rather than later, basically they need to, they want to sell out the edition and then um, there will be a, a trade edition. That'll be like way, way, way more affordable for sure. Yeah. But the trade editions benefit from the collector's editions having been done because they, right. they put a lot of money into making them really sure. great. And then everyone gets to kind of, um, you know, reap the benefits of that beautiful thing having been created. Yeah. I mean, I have George's two Tashin books right there, and they I had to put them on a different kind of bookshelf because they're so large. These are the Star Wars archives the books? Star Wars ones, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're great. Cute. They're great, but they're gigantic. Uh, Tashin wants me to do another book with them, but um, yeah. I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Um, I've been enjoying my retirement from Pixar. I kind of like having... Yeah freedom it was fun doing the book because it like kept my creative juices going mm -hmm. and of course it's been my lifelong passion this movie yeah, of course but, um yeah i don't know that may be uh, maybe one and done for me we'll see yeah what was your first thing at pixar like what were you first initially hired to do i was 25 years old i think mm -hmm. and i was hired to be one of the two editors on the first toy story movie wow and had you edited animation before that, or was that? No, I had zero wow. experience in animation. Wow. I went wow. to USC film school. Yeah. Just had like traditional live action training. Yeah. Um, and then I really fell into editing, which is, it remains my first love. And I know that it is yours as well, George. Yeah, I love it. Um, so I, uh, yeah, I really, so I started out my career as an editor. And then, um, yeah, they were making Toy Story and they were, they, you know, they, we're making the world's first digital movie. And so they wanted to use digital editing tools, which not many people used yet. Mm -hmm. And I happened to know how to use the Avid uh, editing system. And so I got hired to come up and, and I really got hired honestly, because I knew how to use the software. But as soon as I got there, I really hit it off with the whole creative core at the studio. And, and they, they, I think pretty quickly realized that I brought more to the table than just knowing how to run some software. Yeah. And were they down in LA at this point, or were they no, up here in the in the yeah. Bay Area? Yeah, yeah. yeah. In the East um, Bay. Someone in the chat uh, asked, and I want to bring this up because this is something I think uh, I don't know about Rich, but at least George and I are very fascinated by Toy Story Two. There was an accident at one point. Yeah, where it, I am it, interested in this. It disappeared. It went away. What happened? Can you describe what that experience was like where you're like, yeah. oh no, what do we do? Or was it an immediate, oh, we have this. We know that we're We made a whole video about it at one point that you can yeah. see online on YouTube. Yeah. And, and they tell the story much better than I can. But um, essentially what happened is one day somebody ran a command on our whole network computer system that started the process bit by bit of deleting all of the data for Toy Story 2 all of the animation that had been done, all of the sets that had been built, all of the characters that had been created. Once it started, they weren't able to stop it. And, and they just saw it. Like they just saw everything evaporating. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it could have been 
a disaster of monumental proportions. And the only thing that saved it is that this woman named Galen Sussman, who was one of the um, technical directors on the film, she had been home on maternity leave. And so they had made like a mirror of all the data on the system that she had at home. And so they realized that she had this mirror and they went to her house, they got the computer, they put it in the car, you know, put the seatbelt on it. We're like driving really slowly and carefully back to the studio because, you know, it was like tens of millions of dollars yeah. of investment. Yeah. yeah. Basically what, it came like, down to this. What happens computer. though, if she didn't have it, what happens? Like what, what do you do? I, I it's one of those things you don't even want to think about because yeah, exactly. it, it would have like, been, been horrible. Yeah. Yeah. Been horrible. For you. I don't know what would have happened. It was just like by the skin of our teeth. Is there insurance that covers something like that? I don't even know. Definitely. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that's like, such a like weird. Yeah. In, a, in, a, in an analog world, it would have been the equivalent of, of like a brush fire just destroying the entire soundstage and the all drafts of the script and you know, just like everything gone, you know? But it's like even worse than that because the film, you know, we had a release date and there's like promotional partners and they're like, this yeah. all, it's a big machine yeah, and all that stuff was in yeah. place and happening. And if the film had suddenly not had been delayed by a few years or whatever, so that we could remake it, then, I mean, it would have been a disaster for, for everybody. So, and, and really the lesson for, for people out there, uh, if you like Toy Story 2 and everything that came after it, you have uh, paid parental leave uh, uh, to thank Mm -hmm. for that it's true mm -hmm. and and this is an important thing it saved toy story 2 and, and also we, patrick and also, you did learn something from this a woman <laughs> saved this story uh-huh patrick and also, being sexist a mother a mother look at that and Happy also mother. remember if you're working somewhere always take all the work that you're working on copy it onto a separate hard drive take it home, <laughs> and we'll ever have trouble with it uh, Fermule in the chat says, I'm a digital archivist and use this example to explain why digital preservation is important. So thank you. <laughs> Look at that. And then they said, ha ha at the end. Oh, so Does that negate what that. they just said? Maybe they were joking. I don't know. Um, uh, now, was that before or after? Because it, it, Toy Story 2, correct me if I'm wrong, started as a, it was going to be like a direct to video thing. Was that before it changed to a theatrical thing or after? Oh, so it was, you after, guys, it was well after. You guys were like in the home stretch. Yeah, they were doing a, a, you know, that was kind of the era where Disney was making direct to video sequels of all their movies. And yeah. so, Cronk's new groove. Cronk's um, new and, and Pixar as a studio was really only equipped at the time to make one movie at a time. Sure. And so, when they wanted to do, when they decided to do the sequel, they thought, well, we'll just do it as a direct to video. But at some point, it was, it was turning out so well. And I already had Tom Hanks and Tim Allen in it. So, mm -hmm. like, somebody finally just, had the sense to say, why are we not releasing this as a feature? It's, yeah. a, it's a rare, it's a rare example of it, it's, I don't know. I can't think of another example of someone making a movie. It's like, oops, we made it too good. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> Our movie is too good to be what we planned. We have to upgrade it. Well, but then kind of the flip on that is that once we did decide to make it a feature at a certain point, we realized that it actually wasn't really quite good enough. So we went through a big crisis on that film where we had to kind of make a lot of changes in leadership and rejigger the whole thing. And we, wow. we, we rewrote a lot of the movie, um, but it was a really interesting challenge because we didn't have the time or the budget to make a ton of new sets or characters. Sure. And so we, we kind of had to fix the movie and make it better within the confines of what we had to work with. It's right. kind of like putting on a play and you, they, they, you have the set, you have the costumes and the props. Yeah. You know, all you have are words yeah. at that point, you know, you can kind of change what's happening. And so that's what we did. And we added a lot of stuff like the whole switcheroo with, with the other Buzz Lightyear, you know, mm -hmm. the one who thinks he's still a toy, like a lot of that stuff kind of got added in after we, we started rejiggering it. Wow. It's interesting because I think if you think about it, it's such a good film. And you think about the way those limitations actually lead to some of the greatest moments in that movie. Well, I'll tell you, when when we figured out, basically we all, me and John and Andrew and, and Joe Ramped, we all locked ourselves away when we took over the movie and, and just 
tried to figure out how the hell to make it better. And we finally really figured it out, but we were worried that we weren't going to have time, given how much time we had left until the release date to do it. And I remember going to, I don't remember if I wanted to, or if he called me, but I found myself in Steve Jobs' office at Pixar. And I, you know, he asked how things were going. And I said, well, I, I, we really figured out the movie. I think we can make it really, really great, but I don't think we, we're going to be able to get it done on time. I think we're going to have to delay the release. Mm. And he said, well, we can't do that. <laughs> this is before I understood the implications of all the promotional partners and yeah. everything that, that gets lined up. So, but he said, we have to get it out on time. And I was like, nee. and but he said something to me then that I've always remembered. He said, he said, this is speaking for him. He said, looking back on my career, all the things that I'm the most proud of were done in situations like this, mm. where there's not yeah. enough time and there's not enough money and you'd still have to make it work. Yeah. And, and, and working within, uh, as you said, almost like you, you a play with a set, which is, these are the resources we have. Um, those solves all being things that you, what, what do you have? You have these characters mm -hmm. and you found those solutions by digging deeper into the characters. Yeah. And, we did and mostly, we added a few, like we, we put Buster the dog in who hadn't mm -hmm. been in and Wheezy, the, the penguin squeeze toy. There mm -hmm. were like, there were some minor things that we, that we did build, but they were all, but all the set pieces of the city that had been built, the airport at the end, like that kind of stuff had to stay and we had to figure out how to work yeah. within the confines of that. Yeah. Well, in case no one said it to you, great job. Thank you. Well, George, I have to thank you because, you know, Pixar would not exist without you. Well, you're welcome then. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I had to, I had to sell it off. It's one of my rare times where I made something I had, I just needed the, I needed the money in a different area. So I'm like, you guys, maybe you can make something out of this. And, and, uh, and you guys did. Yeah. But again, like if not for your vision to like advance digital tools, editing, animation, everything. I mean, obviously you, you later made great use of all the things that you kind of financed early on. Yeah. But we did go off on our own and we did our own thing, but we would not have been able to do it without you. So thank you. Yeah. Have you guys ever run into each other before? We or have. It, you have? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or do you Any, remember? Several times. Yeah. Well, George, I was with you at the Venice Film Festival. You gave us all That's our Lifetime cool. Achievement Awards there. Yeah. Several years back. Um, I know I talked to you at uh, Steve Jobs Memorial uh -huh. yeah. um, and we, you know, we've had a number of conversations out at the ranch over the years because yeah. you all are post-production, all our sound work out at Skywalker. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and you know what? You'll recall that when we were in Venice, my wife and I had our, I think it was our, it was, I believe our 10th an wedding anniversary and we were all at a uh, little restaurant in Venice, Italy. And we had a whole moment where a cake was brought out and everybody celebrated uh, my anniversary and you were there. And it was kind of surreal to have George Lucas at my wow. 10th wedding anniversary celebration, wow. but you were there wow. and it's a very fun Good memory. Cake. Good cake. It wasn't uh, I, I, yeah. I, I just had a little though. I didn't fully indulge because I'm famously <laughs> diabetic. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That is true. Um, so have you have you stayed at the ranch, Lee? Have you like, I have, like stayed overnight? Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, we all, we had kind of have a tradition on every film at some point during um during the mix, we bring all of our families out, our kids mm -hmm. and like all the kind of key people working on the film and, and we yeah, we have a whole weekend that we spend at the ranch. You have a favorite meal at the ranch? Uh I don't know. I mean, you've got like, you've got Skywalker great vegetables chili. there that you grow on yeah. site. Well, yeah, I probably have had the chili. I don't know that I have a favorite. I mean, I don't, I don't think of the food. Right. Yeah. It's, it's really like, about the, the the environment because it's a beautiful place. Yeah. And the, I mean, the rooms yeah. at the inn are amazing. I mean, that whole place is impeccably decorated. You've got, as you know, original, Norman um, Rockwell Rock art and, and uh, you know, amazing poster collection. You and I actually share the same frame shop in, um, in Fairfax. Yeah. Wow. wow. Look at that. What a, what a fun uh, 
person who gets to work there who's like, all of these cool people live near me and they all love the same thing, you know, old, old, large posters that I need to get framed. Yeah. yeah Actually, right. George, I'm remembering now the very first time I ever saw you in person. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. It was yeah. when I, it was probably within the first year or so that I moved to the Bay Area to work at Pixar. Yeah. Um, I, I was living, I still live in Marin. I was living in Marin and uh, my wife and I went to a, a now defunct restaurant called the Pepper Mill which was a little bit of Las Vegas in Marin County. Uh -huh. And uh, I went there and you were there with a bunch of your kids. And I later learned that the Pepper Mill was one of your favorite restaurants. So I'm sure love, you're not happy that it's not there anymore. I, yeah, I uh, I wish it was back. Famously I wish it was angry there. about it. Famously. Yeah. <laughs> I will sometimes go to the form, the, where it used to be and I'll just fume. <laughs> just, uh -huh. yeah, you know, for all my, for all my wealth, I can't bring it back. George, you know what I wish you could do with your wealth? There's a beautiful theater in uh, in in the middle of in Corte Madera in Marin, yeah. and I know that you used to always go see your films there when they opened, so that you could yeah. see them with the public. And it's now closed, and um, I'm worried it's going to get torn down, yeah. um, and there's going to be like low income housing built or something there. And I would think that you would want to deal with that, but I can't tell you how to spend your money. Yeah. Well, please don't. I mean, you can, you can, I won't necessarily do it, but I'm, if you have suggestions for how to spend my money, I would consider them. Certainly saving that theater would be a priority. I'll have my people look into it. Lee, what would you do if you had George's amount of money? I would be living in a really kick-ass estate on the island of Kauai. That's what nice. I would be doing, and that's where I would be. And I would be doing good things with my money, trying to make the world a better place. Yeah, I do that. You do a lot of good stuff, George. We're not saying you don't do good stuff, George. I just wanted it on the record. <laughs> <laughs> In case there was any mistake, uh, mistaking it, I, I uh -huh. yeah, put a lot into education. Um, my wife used to work at the George Lucas Educational Foundation, so... Uh -huh. We're just like all these tendrils. I didn't know you had this many connections when I reached out. I, I did not realize this. Yeah, well, I didn't realize either, but I'm remembering them now. Here, here. I yeah. was at Pixar for 25 years, so that's a, yeah. that's a long do you time. Have a favorite, do you have a favorite Normie Rockwell? A favorite Normie. what? Normie Rockwell. Well, actually, there's something you have out at the ranch that I really love, and it's um, it's not one of the paintings. I know you have several original paintings, but... You have in one of the hallways in the inn a pencil study for one of the paintings, and it's two cleaning women, like in a Broadway theater, uh -huh. sitting in the middle of their cleaning. Like after everyone's gone, they're kind of sharing, looking at a playbill, yeah, with all their cleaning equipment around them. And it, I love the painting. And and th like Norman Rockwell did these beautiful pencil studies that are as gorgeous as the final paintings. They're just not painted. And you have one of those hanging in the inn. And it's, I think it's my favorite thing that I've seen that you have. Yeah, that's a good one. Sure. Do you have your favorite normies near you right now? Me? Yeah. We have a couple that we like to show people. Do you yeah, have a couple? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, well, on my phone, I have that one. Um, Let's not. Yeah. Hold on. I know I have that. Yeah. On my phone. That's. I have digital ones on my phone, so I can just look at my phone. That's the one, right? The two. Oh, yeah. That's the painting. That's the painting, but I have the pencil study. You have the pencil study, oh, wow. which is huge. It's like bigger than a movie poster. It's huge. Yeah. I got plates. Butter Boy. There you go. Um, mm -hmm. That's a good one. Butter Boy has bread, and he's buttering it, or at least someone buttered it, but it looks like if, if it wasn't him, he's been framed. <laughs> is it called? Is it actually called Butter Boy, or did you name it Butter Boy? It is called Butter Boy. Called Butter Boy. Oh, yeah, yeah. it's called Butter yeah. Boy. We can't find much information about it beyond I think it was officially created for these plates. That's well, Butter Girl was actually first. Mm. And Butter Girl, she doesn't mess around. Look at this. She she spread a whole like blocks of butter. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, and what do you what do you think draws you to Butter Boy? Well, what I wouldn't like really? What <laughs> wouldn't draw someone to Butter Boy? I do like. Butter. Oh, but yeah, but George like owns it. <laughs> Fair yeah. enough. You like uh, butter? Is that what you said, George? I like butter. Sure. And there's a butter girl bell. Like, <laughs> this. 
Norman, like, <laughs> a real inspiration, not just in the way that he told stories, but just also just the merchandising, you know, just like... Was there know, merchandising in his lifetime? Those came out mid-70s. Yeah. These so were like... Did he die? I don't even know when Norman Rockwell died. died. Yeah. And, yeah. And, 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 and even if he was alive, did he have control over his IP? Like, well, you know? wait, George, hang on. When? What is the year on those plates? 70... Something. Can you Why? look for me? Will I look? Because yeah. he he died. There's a chance Norman saw the first Star Wars story. He died in '78. Hmm. Yeah. He probably saw Star Wars. It was probably. I think he probably could die happy knowing that like. It was so good. Yeah, George. I'm sorry uh, to tell you, your buddy Steve lost. What? Hold on. Uh, what? The Daniels won. The Daniels won. Did they? Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, I'm so happy. I, I, this is the first time I haven't watched the Oscars in forever. That's what I'm doing for you. Don't you feel, free? Don't you feel I think free? I voted for any category that Everything Everywhere All at Once was nominated in because I loved that movie so much. I think I've seen it like five times. I keep Amazing. showing it to friends who never I saw it. You need to see it. And I just times. ball every time at the end. It sort of has a similar visual style to a Pixar movie. Do you know what I mean? Like in like a in a everything looks very appealing. There's like very uh, different aesthetic choices. Like it. Well, and of course they've got the whole Rakakuni thing in there. Of course, which the we, all, we all loved the best. But yeah. I reach, you know, I tweeted something about how much I loved it, and then I yeah. actually heard from one of the Daniels, and we oh. ended up having a little back and forth, and we were both fanboying out. Yeah. Um, well. He made me feel really old because he was talking about how he grew up on my movies. Sure. But whatever, I'm like wow. honored to have inspired yeah. him in any small way, both of them, because um, I mean, I think that they made something that is just completely unparalleled in the history of cinema. And I'm like, I don't mean to be hyperbolic, but no, I really, no. I really feel no, like I mean, they it's did. A game changer for sure. Yeah, it's also it, it's the the Rakakuni joke specifically. Um, it starts off and it's, you know, cause it's a, it's a funny joke about memory, you know, in a way at first you feel like it's a funny joke about, is she remembering it correctly? Mm -hmm. And then it, the joke deepens and deepens and it's both so specific in that it is specifically a Pixar joke, but it's also so strange that if someone had never heard of Pixar, like let's say a hundred years from now, someone watches that film or someone who's been living under a rock and has never heard of a, a mm. Ratatouille, it still makes its own, it has its own internal logic where it's still funny and interesting as its own thing if you don't know it's a reference to something. So it sort of passes every kind of test for yeah. that kind of joke. And the whole film, I think part of why I love it is like my own films, my favorite movies are ones that aren't like just one genre. Like, Sure. That they're genuinely funny, like laugh okay. your ass off, hilarious, but then they'll punch you in the stomach and you'll cry right. or you'll be so scared. Good. Like, and I think our films kind of tick those boxes for a lot of people. The best ones do. Mm -hmm. um, but I look at like my favorite horror movies, like my one of my very favorite horror films is a movie called The Orphanage. Mm -hmm. yes. um, yeah. And for me, it's the same thing. Like that movie is so damn scary, but I can't think of any other quote unquote horror film where I, every time I watch it, I have hot tears streaming down my face at the end. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and that's like, those are just the best movies for me that give you a full range of emotions that allow you to feel intense feelings that that's why we go to the movies, right. To, to feel things, whether mm -hmm. it's being scared or sad or whatever in a safe place, you know, it's cause it's not yeah. real life. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think the the orphanage. I'm trying to remember to make sure I'm not confusing with another film. That's the yeah. one where it's Spanish. It was produced yes. by Guillermo del Toro. It was directed by yeah. Jerry Leona. Directed yeah. by yeah. Jerry Leona, who directed Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdom, which is a sequel to a movie made by your buddy Steve George. Uh, that I also worked on everything after after it was locked. I helped out so that Steve could go uh, work on Schindler's List. So I did, did a lot of work on Jurassic Park. That's true. Um, but the orphanage is the one that has the sequence where. Uh, she keeps turning around and they're getting closer. Yeah. So, knocking on the wall and then turning around. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really a film. It's uh, uh, the, the emotional themes of that um, film are not it's, like, 
uh, most horror films. And then, and not only is it heartbreaking and incredibly depressing, yet somehow it, it, at, in the same breath, it is also uplifting and life affirming. Like, yeah. I, just, I haven't seen another film like it. So mm -hmm. anyone watching this, if you haven't seen The Orphanage, please go see it because- I would also say that's a film because- uh, uh, That is a film that really benefits from watching it in a proper, I mean, all films benefit from this, but like in particular, if you can watch it in a circumstance where the lights are out and you don't have any sound distractions, it, the, the sound elements of that movie are so beautiful in the way that, uh, the way that just the, the mix of that movie is so uh, powerful. I remember seeing that and the parts where it's quiet, you just, I could hear my, I could hear my heartbeat. Yeah. Another movie that's like it for me in a slightly different way is The Babadook. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's also yeah. just a really amazing film that is as scary as any scary film, but it it really also has kind funny. of a, beat, a beating heart at the center yeah. of it, a soul. I mean, yeah. it's a film about grief, and yeah. you know, so many horror films just aren't about anything. You know, they're yeah. just they're just trying to scare the teenagers who are their primary audience. Rachel, yeah. have you seen yeah. The Orphanage? I have, and I you know I saw one pretty recently too that Guillermo produced with it with a new newer uh, female director. Um, and I'm tr I'm struggling to remember the name and, and I'm trying to remember it, but I love that Guillermo has been really dedicated to investing in new filmmakers and young Latinas making movies. And especially in the horror aspect because he does it so well. Um, I'm tr I have to remember the name of it for you because it it, it's, it was another one that tugged at your heartstrings because it's about like mm. um, you know women who were going missing in Mexico uh. and so there's a bunch of kids running around without mothers and they start this kind of like lost boys kind of group together but they're trying to figure out what it is that's taking their mothers oh that's and it's cool. some, yeah it's some supernatural force and I'm trying to remember and what Guillermo it's produced it yeah. He did. Rachel, was it Troll Hunters, Defenders of Arcadia? Yeah, you got it. <laughs> it's Tigers Are Not Afraid. There it is. Right? It was like. Uh, That's the name of it? I got to write yeah, it down. Tigers, Tigers Are Not Afraid. afraid. Tigers Are Not Afraid. Thank you, chat. Los Tigres no tienen miedo. 2017, directed by Isa Lopez. Yeah. So, so gorgeous. So 97 on Rotten Tomatoes. That's pretty good. What yeah. is it? 97 on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, yeah, too much better than that. Yeah. It's pretty good. Uh, I mean, you've you've done better. You've done a little better. <laughs> <laughs> um, would you the ever want to make thing a about tigers? Because tigers are yeah. not afraid. Tigers are not afraid. Yeah. Would you ever want to make a horror movie? Me? I think I would make a good one. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Like, who yeah. Are we talking about? Yeah, Rachel, <laughs> you want to be in a horror movie? Make a horror movie? Francis Lawrence and I talk about doing a horror movie all the time, actually. And then we're connecting this here. Lee and Rachel making a horror movie is like pretty. Wait, are we packaging this? Are we packaging this? Where's the script? I do it. I do it. George can write a first draft and then someone will rewrite it for him. Yeah, I'll write a, I'll write a first draft. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're in. I'm in. Um, Here's my thing now. Here's my thing. After yeah. making Coco, I kind of had a mic drop moment after that, and I <laughs> because and only because I saw the impact that it had on the community and and really the entire country of Mexico. And I thought I can't top that, and I don't want to spend my career trying to top that. It was so I decided to step back. And now my attitude is like, if something comes along that I think needs to be in the world, yeah, then I'll exactly. consider it. There's just, there's so much content now with all the streaming services and everything. Right. And I feel like everything is not as special as it used to be right. because, because there's so much and, you know, something can be really good, but then it's forgotten, you know, a week later. Really, so like if, if I feel like I can find something that like will move the needle and, and change people's lives a bit and make, you know, make the world a better place, then that's yeah, like the kind something, of thing something like on. untitled Rachel Zegler horror film <laughs> exactly. 2025 project. Look, I'm just saying, George, uh, uh, Star Wars was nominated for Best Original Screenplay. Lee has won. He's directed a bunch of movies. Rachel's acting. I'm in PGA. I feel like this is the perfect, you know, uh, group of people to put this together right here. We've seen dead Zazzo. Know. Somebody said Everything happens Zazzo. for a reason, huh? Uh-huh. I think uh -huh. so. Um, what, what, is the, what is left that you want to work on, though? Is there something that you're like, this is my, this is my thing? Honestly, no. Okay, that's great. I'm, I'm like living my life now as a human being on this planet, yeah. and uh, 
again, if something comes along, then yeah. then great. But I'm not. I, mean, not, I needed to get off the. Uh, I needed to get off the um, the treadmill for a while. Mm -hmm. anyway. mm -hmm. Lee, what are you going to have for lunch tomorrow? Do you know? What's tomorrow? Monday. Monday? Tomorrow's Monday. What's a good Monday? Do you have I'm Monday lunch plans yet? Going on. <laughs> I don't have. I don't have plans actually. So. I don't know. I don't know. I have no it's idea. I it's could make up something fun. funny, but it would just be making up something funny. Yeah. No, you don't need to. I don't know. I don't know what I'm having for lunch. And yeah. that's an exciting feeling because you got that. You know, it's it's coming. Do you know what you're having for lunch tomorrow? Um, probably chili. I think. <laughs> George, I don't remember if we told the chili story at our San Francisco show a couple months ago. Can what's the chili story? Oh, <laughs> that. Uh, Lee and Rachel, George uh, brought me to the ranch for the first time when we were up in San Francisco for our sketch oh. in January, and I had never been, and we went and got food in the commissary, and uh, we said, what's good? And they said, well, the chili's really good, the hamburgers are really good, and I said, oh, that's great, I'll get a hamburger. And as we were about to eat it, they said, oh, when you guys were driving in, did you look up on the hills? You saw the cows up there? And we were like, mm-hmm. And that's where the hamburgers that's came from. Chili. And that's where the yep. chili came from. Yeah. And you know what? It was really good. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah. In a way, I'm not that different than I know people probably don't make this comparison often, but have you seen Yellowstone, the, the Kevin uh, Costner show? I'm a little bit like a, a little bit like an art house John Dutton. I don't know what that means. Well, hopefully, some people in the chat will understand that Yellowstone reference is very. Oh, popular Brendan Fraser got a best actor best for actor. Yeah, well. Look at that! He was good in it. The Renaissance continues. Yes. Um, he's had a hard. Said, he's had a hard time of it lately. It's it's really lovely yeah. seeing him have this, this uh, this comeback. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they threw one of his movies in directly into the garbage can. He was the villain in Batgirl, and they just put it right in the garbage can. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Have you ever worked on something, and it got decently far, and then you, you scrapped it for one reason or another? Well, we've had films at Pixar that the plug got pulled on. That's happened a, yeah. a, a few times. Where in the process does that happen? Does it not test well, and then they decide? No, it's, it's, it's much earlier, earlier than, than that. Yeah. It's It's... It's prior to it even having a, a green light to be made. Right, it's right, this right. stuff that's been varying stages of development. I mean, I was developing after um, after I did uh, what was the last one? Finding Nemo. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to work on Cars, but I kind of wasn't into that so much, and so I asked. Mm -hmm. It was kind of time for me to start directing at the studio myself, and so I started developing an idea that I was really into, um, and I ended up hiring Michael Arndt to write it. Uh, wow. He's the guy who wrote Little Miss Sunshine. Yeah, um, so and I, I hired him. Based, the movie hat was was being made. I just hired him based on his screenplay, which I loved. And so we were working on this thing called Pet Peeve for a while. That was just like a working title, and it was basically this kind of rear window esque mystery that took place among all the pets in a big old uh, apartment building in in New York City. Um, so yes, I know secret life of pets happened years later and it wasn't what we were doing, but it was close enough that I was like, wow, that's kind of weird that that, that, yeah. that happened. But, um, we were having a really fun time with it, but we were in the middle of writing that when, um, Disney bought Pixar and when Disney bought Pixar, that freed us up contractually to finally make a, a toy story three. Um, and so John basically tapped me and said, I would love if you could put your film aside and direct Toy Story 3. So that's, that's how that happened. Wow. And we never went back to it. Um, sure. I thought about it after Toy Story 3, but, um, but we ended up not. And then Secret Life of Pets happened. So like, it's not anything we would have made. It was like too close for comfort. Sure. So I made Coco <laughs> instead, which I'm Lee, much happier with. Lee, have you ever heard of Star Wars Detours? <laughs> I haven't, George. Star Wars Christmas Detours Day. was Tom. one of the last Christmas. one of the last Star Wars projects that I worked on. It, it sort of came out of the Robot Chicken folks. Uh, I really liked when they would spoof uh, Star Wars. Uh -huh. and I, would, well, I would cooperate. I'd sort of so I said, "Let's do this for real." So I self financed uh, dozens, literally full seasons, dozens of episodes of a animated Star Wars. Uh, comedy show sort of having fun yeah, with almost. goofing around and you know we had uh, um 
you know, actual, we had great voice cast, uh, uh, Billy D. Williams, Ahmed Best. We had people like star of Shazam Fury of the Gods, Zachary Levi. Yeah. I do know that guy. Yeah. Um, and then, and they announced it at Comic-Con that it was coming soon. You can find the trailer online of Star Wars Detours coming soon. And, on Christmas Day. Star and Wars then, Detours on Christmas Day, George. Yeah. And, <laughs> and the, what happened was I had to sell Star Wars because there was a tax thing coming up and the clock was ticking on it. So I sold everything, fully expecting that they this would get finished and then released. And it never was because it, it, the feeling was they wanted to launch the new Star Wars movies and that this would be confusing if the first thing that came out was sort of a Mad Magazine sort of parody. Right. Star Wars. Do you think it'll see the light of day someday or do you think it's dead forever? I've I've heard that it probably is going to come out within the next few months, but uh, everyone tells me that uh, that won't happen. But I've heard that any second now they're going to release it. But then I talk to people who uh, who know about these things, and they say it will definitely never be released. <laughs> but but then I've also seen it written, and I've also said myself it's going to come out probably any day now. <laughs> you but say I it do, a lot. You say I, it a lot, George. I thought every year we, we think it's going to come out. There's a Michelle hashtag. Yo just won Best Actress. Very oh. big day. Oh, that's awesome. Very big day. That is day. awesome. Oh, I'm going to cry. Oh. I'm going to have um, to watch her acceptance speech. After oh, the my event. God. That's yeah, amazing. I loved you from the start. You Michelle, know? I loved you from the start. Um, yeah. Uh, sorry, George, about detours. I'm sorry. that First Asian me. Best Actress winner. Wow. That's amazing. That crazy? We've only, yeah. Wow. Amazing wow. and sad, but it's amazing. Yeah. It's one of those things whenever you hear first anything about mm -hmm. someone of a different race or ethnicity, you wonder how the hell that's possible. Yeah. Right. And then you see the nominations come out the next year and you're like, oh, that's how. Yeah. And, yeah. If, and if you're in one of the states in America where schools are allowed to teach actual American history, mm -hmm. uh, you sometimes will learn uh, some of the reasons, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, which is why it's important to vote for people who allow uh, proper education and not limit what... Uh, what parts of history can and can't be taught in schools. Apparently one of the Daniels uh, dedicated parts of his speech to talking about the drag ban. Did they win was... for a screenplay? They, they won, won for... for screenplay and director. And oh, they won director. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. They are the sweep Holy is crap. incoming. That yeah. is. And you know, and the amazing thing was I remember I, you know, I saw the film immediately when it opened, I heard amazing things about it. When they got all the nominations, I was watching the today show and all of the hosts were basically saying, what is that? Like, they didn't even know what movie it was. Like, they hadn't even heard of it. And, like, one of them was kind of telling the rest of them about it. Weird. I, I mean, it, it is weird, but I think a lot of people didn't see that movie. Sure. I mean, people who were into yeah. cinema certainly saw it. Um, but It's also, it's also it, very tricky. We live in, I think, a particularly tricky moment in terms of um, there's so much um, quality film and television and theater there's so much we live in a, a an era where we not only have unprecedented access to works of art from the past 100 years and more um but it builds up every year there's more and more stuff to catch up on from the past and more and more you know when i see people complaining about oh there's no good movies anymore odds are you haven't seen at least a dozen of the best movies of the year yeah. For any, regardless of what your taste is in movies, there are at least a dozen movies from the worst year in in recent history that any person would love. Yeah. It, but it's harder and harder as it's easy to access movies. There's so many that, that it's sort of um, it's harder to find those movies that everybody sees because you think there's a movie that uh, everyone's talking about, and you will find. The next 10 people you ask about it haven't heard about that film, you know? There's a lot of people I wish who saw Bardo this year who didn't. Like, there are so many incredible mm. international films, foreign language films that constantly get cast aside. And Bong Joon-ho made such a point of talking about it in his speech, and yet still people don't really seem to get it. Harrison Ford uh, is at the Presenting microphone. Presenting best picture. And they, and they cut to a shot of, of he and he's uh, a short round. And he's clapping. It's a I feel moment. bad that I'm missing this. But if you want to, if you need to go watch it, you can, I don't want to. I don't want to keep you here if you want to go see that. How, yeah, are they announcing best picture this moment? Yeah. Getting ready to. 
Uh, yeah. I, well, I'll watch the playback. It's okay. Okay. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna well, watch the, the instant the replay. Give me now, the slow mo instant replay. Now, George, I do want to say we did get some fan art from yeah. uh, Donk Bronkley. I'm gonna bring this up. You may not like this, George. That's all right. This is George with the afro looking sensual. I don't like well, it. I, hope, I, I hope decided I don't like it. I would like a check. <laughs> I want to be paid for that. Uh huh. Um, I did want to make sure you saw it. Uh, there's also, we got one, uh, from Red Hawk Way saying, remember at the end of more American Graffiti, you wish there were most, well, there is most American Graffiti. Really solid. I thought it said moist American Graffiti for a moment. Well, it it looks like the letters are (laughs) flipping a little bit. Now I will say, uh, I know, I know that, um, it's not one of yours, but, uh, the way the Oscar set is designed, sometimes the curved, um, Sign will say Oscars, but you won't see the OS. So it just uh-huh. looks like it says cars. <laughs> yeah. So it looks like a little Pixar. I don't like that. <laughs> Best picture did it just win? Looks like win. everything everywhere all at once. Yay! Yeah. Wow. Look at that. Yeah. Uh, they did well. Sometimes these things go the right way. Yeah. It's uh, very exciting. Good for them. Yeah. Um, That's great. Really good. It's always nice when good stuff wins, you know. I love it, guys. Yeah. That's who so won? Who won Best Picture? Oh. The, the Coco and Toy Story years. Well, you know, Toy Story three was actually nominated for Best Picture. Yeah, oh, it was. I remember that? Hell yeah, it, it was. was. Yeah, it was only the it was the third time an animated feature had been nominated. You give me Ed Asner voicing a a pear that smells like strawberries. <laughs> I give that shit the Oscar. <laughs> yeah, we lost to um, the King's Speech. Yeah, okay. whatever. <laughs> uh, when you hit the you replay, for, when you hit the replay for this later, there was just a beautiful moment where Indiana Jones is on stage with short round, and then they cut to Buddy Steve in the audience. Wow, oh, that's really nice. oh, so nice. you're gonna make me cry! Oh, what a what a what a nice win! What a nice Oscars! Yeah. And see, you can have a nice Oscars where everyone behaves. <laughs> Oh, God. I don't know. I just think it's weird that like Rachel's first Oscars is the one where people weren't behaving. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to. Patrick, let's just be honest. Nothing about my experience at the Oscars was normal. Let's just <laughs> pretend it never happened. Too it, soon. I wasn't even there. Too soon. Too yeah. soon. Entirely also, too soon. Also, I don't know what kind of. Uh... That's why it says one time Oscar cast in my name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The, uh, what a, what a, what a, and I assume they're making a wonderful speech now. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. It, it's exciting. I, I know it's disappointing to people. You know what that, I especially love about it is that when they were making that film, there was no way in hell that any of those people were right. even politely thinking about yeah. this film being at the Academy Awards, let alone winning, sweeping the way it is. Yeah. It's and, no and when they were when they were conceiving of it, when they were writing it, there was no point where they're like, the you know what, the academy eats this kind of film up. <laughs> of course not. Oh, Tally's there. Tally's on stage. Our friend no uh Tally, our friend Tally Medell, who plays Stephanie Shu's girlfriend in the movie. Oh, oh wow. Um, she is oh my gosh, that short round. Uh, <laughs> now I'm saying short round because you're calling him short round. Uh them on stage is so nice. But um yeah, Tally. Tally's like a comedy person in New York who does a lot of um, clowning. Uh, clowning she, and dance are, are their two it. big things. I love it. She was great. I actually voted for Stephanie. I figured that Jamie she Lee was Stephanie probably going to win. But, but, but Stephanie was really, I kind of voted my conscience on that one. I thought she, yeah. I mean, that was like, there's so many like fine twists and turns in that performance. My I, just, I really admired it. Her fame is that I saw Stephanie play Karen, the computer wife in SpongeBob the Musical on Broadway. And she was uh, just a new yeah. babe. Yeah. I, I believe, let me see if I can get a picture of this. Unless I'm mistaken. <laughs> Unless I'm mistaken. Hold on. <laughs> this is a very high tech stream we have here. Yeah, we're doing great, honestly. I don't, I can't <laughs> confirm that this is, but I believe that Jimmy Kimmel, for his final costume change, is dressed up as Indiana Jones from the cold open of Temple of Doom. Where uh-huh. is his red lapel? Does he have a red lapel on? No red lapel. Well, and Kate Capshaw's in the audience, so they could he's bring also, her up and he's also recreate not it. The master code oh, wow. breaker from the Last Jedi, either. 
it is wild that Kate Capshaw, Harrison Ford, Key are all there. Yeah, uh, that. Wait, isn't that weird? Like that's really strange. A little bit. With Steven. The what's your favorite they, Indiana Jones movie, Lee? Yeah, the first one. Lee. First one. Okay. What's your favorite Star Wars? I, movie? I, I like the first one a lot. I kind of like the second one, and then I. Oh, there's a prequel. I shouldn't. I mean, I'm saying something in public here. Okay. I shouldn't say anything. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. Let's just say you like them all. That's. Yeah, I'm on Facetime with Steven right now, and he's pissed. <laughs> <laughs> The, uh, I told everyone this. has a everyone has a preference order. I, I told him I that. love Last Crusade. I really love Last Crusade, and I don't know if it's a nostalgia thing because I love my dad and that I just love the. Well, sometimes it's like whatever age you were when you saw it. Like, yeah, yeah I mean, absolutely. I, thought, well, I saw Raiders when I was a teenager, and so I mean, that's what people say about so Star much. Wars movies too: is that it's always dependent on how old you are when you saw it. Yeah, and, like, there are people that love the prequels yeah. more, and then there are people that love the Clone Wars the best, and mm -hmm. you know, it's just like. I think it really depends on kind of when you were coming of age and yeah. what you were watching as a kid. Rachel, yeah, what? you're a prequels yeah. gal, Rachel. I do love the prequels, but I am a I'm an Empire Strikes Back girl through and through. That is like we can all agree that that is the best it's Star the Wars. Best. Yeah, yep. and, but the thing is that I have this thing with like Harry Potter movies too, where I'm like, just because it's the best doesn't mean that it's my favorite. But I do yep. think my favorite is the best, which is Prisoner of Azkaban. Sure. I, I can acknowledge that, George. I'm sorry. I can acknowledge that Empire is the best one. I know you you know, you're indirectly, you're indirectly, you're indirectly, but I like, it's not, I like this bit. But it's not but it's not my favorite one, George. Yeah. You my like the one with Stinky the Hutt gets kidnapped. I like when Stinky the Hutt gets kidnapped in the Clone Wars movie. Yeah. No. <laughs> I like uh no, I like New Hope. New Hope's my favorite, George. Uh well, rebellions are built on hope. Oh my god. Um well, so is this live stream. <laughs> I should probably tap out. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how long you guys are planning on going. I I, I hope you have a wonderful people. evening. Did John Hodgman ever show up? He was at the beginning. He introduced our show. He's presenting uh, the whole. Uh, John is a, John's a good friend of mine. I'll let him know you said hi. Please. Um, thank you for coming on. We really. It was so nice to meet you. Thanks for joining you too, us. You too, Rachel. Like a thousand percent. Nice to see you again, Lee. Thank you for spending Oscar night with us. Yeah, yeah. it was really super fun. I did like, yeah. like when you first reached out to me to do the Sketch Fest show, yeah. I was like, well, why do they want me? Yeah. I, I you know, I'm friends with a bunch of comedians and yeah. I kind of, I like hanging out with them because they make me laugh constantly. Yeah, yeah. But I've learned over the years to just keep my mouth shut and not yeah. try to be funny because. Yeah. I always end up falling on my ass and being embarrassed. Like I'm really good friends with Jeff Garland. And whenever yeah. I'm with him, I just let him go and sure. do his thing. And I just do not try to be funny around him. Look, Lee, we, did, we, did we make you laugh at all tonight, Lee? Yeah, I laughed a few times. That's good. Yes. You're notoriously, <laughs> notoriously uh, difficult. Laugh, and I might have so. laughed harder if I didn't think that that um, someone might see this and see me <laughs> laughing. <laughs> That's Listen, if that, if that person, I don't understand it, but I like it. If that person gets four hours and ten minutes into this stream, <laughs> you know, more power to them. More I don't power know who you're talking true. about. Um, that's great. Thank you, Lee. We appreciate it. Happy Happy Lee. Lee. I have no idea how to tap out, but I will tap you out. All right. All right. Have fun, guys. Bye. Lee. Bye. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I think uh, do we have any other QR codes to offer, I'm Patrick? Sure we do. Uh, Let's play Rachel, 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 also, we didn't talk about this, Rachel. You did hit the Irishman. Yes, I fucking did. You are now you in a, it. It's like the it's like the five timers club on SNL. I uh, the number of the number of and and also you're the only. I think you're the only person we've ever promoted a co-host as opposed to just extended guests. I want a name tag. Yeah, I mean, sure. We'll make you a name tag. And yeah. let me say, to quote the Irishman. It's what it is. <laughs> what it is. It's what it is. Uh huh. You know, I'm trying uh, to remember any other quote from the. <laughs> I remember. I remember. I remember I when remember he's a like a couple of quotes. I remember, I remember when he's voices, like, don't, that, don't look, you? He's like, look at me. I'm thirty. Ooh, watch oh, that's this. A good one. That's what a good one. I've never seen a thirty-year-old before. Yeah, yeah, like that. Exactly. <laughs> How old are you? Heard you I'm, 30, I'm 32. Oh, <laughs> man. We're both young. All right, here we go. New QR code. <laughs> We're just going to run through. We're going to run through the other ones we have. QR code. Here we go. Ooh, what's this? What is this? This is a good one. This is maybe the best one we've got. 
Oh, fuck. All right, all right. What's this? Here we go. Oh, dear God. Oh, boy. What the hell? Unfollow. There's something un inherently un sexist un about Unfollow. There's something inherently sexist about this QR code. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wow. Um, let's see. Do I have any more? Oh, we've got this one. We've got this one. <laughs> everyone hates it. Um, yeah, of course everyone hates it. Here's another good one. We haven't shown this one. Or should we wait? Should we wait a second? What do you mean? I think people are done with that first one. Well, now here's the thing, George. We we didn't hit the thousand. Should we yeah, we did. Someone about... said we hit the thousand. Oh, great! Then we hit the thousand. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I, got, I got two new followers. Great. Thank you, thank you, Joe and Smashly. I have some chocolate that I'm going to eat on the stream. Rachel, what time is your flight? Yeah, have you missed? Doesn't your flight matter. Now? Doesn't matter. That's the attitude we like. I know. I keep seeing people in the chat being like, I hope Rachel's not flying the plane. Like, I know when I have to go. Okay. <laughs> right. I'm okay. good. <laughs> also, that also how late you are shouldn't be the worry about whether you're flying. I also hope you're not flying the plane because I happen to know <laughs> that you don't know how to fly an airplane. It has nothing to do with how late do it is. Do you know that, George? Is that do you know can, that? You can, can you confirm that for us? Do you, you know confirm? that? I know confirm it, it, yeah. How do you know that? Some things you just know. You don't think I have a I have a pilot's license? I know you don't have a pilot's license. <laughs> How do you know that? Because it would have come up. There's no <laughs> way that it wouldn't have come that up. That is not something that I tout around because I don't want people thinking that I have a plane. Right. Do you have a plane? No, I my carbon emission is very low, I promise. Yeah. Okay. But the fact that you don't, I think it's a little bit sexist, actually, during Women's Month to assume that I, a woman, don't have a pilot's license. Here's the thing. I don't, here's why it's not sexist, I think, because I think there's a chance you might learn to fly a plane, whereas I know Patrick never will. I fly now. <laughs> Rachel, did you see Watto? He was at the Oscars. He was on the red carpet. Did you, you see, see that? us? Show, show the club. KTLA's Chris Wolf joins us live from Hollywood, where the countdown to the Oscars is on tonight. Good evening. The 95th Annual Academy Awards are just hours away here in the heart of Hollywood, outside the Dolby Theater at Hollywood and Highland. Lots of road closures now in effect for the Oscars. Major roads closed include Hollywood Boulevard, Highland Avenue, Hawthorne Avenue, and Orange Drive. Avoid the area if you don't need to be out here. Enjoy all of the glitz, glamour, and drama from the comfort of home. We'll be back here all night. For now, reporting live in Hollywood, I'm Chris Wolf. John, Kareem, back to you. I have a thought. Yeah. Did you see that it was like it was scripted for Vanessa Hudgens to tell someone that they looked gorgeous? <laughs> it sucks. That sucks so bad. <laughs> I didn't know who it was for, but now that you say it, you're well, like, yeah, that's exactly that was right. Crawley. It really was also Crawley doing that. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I do want to say, look, hypothetically, if people were to go back and watch that video, there is a lot of good ADR of people saying, Wado, Wado, hey Wado, look over here. Give us again. a smile. Give us a smile, Wado. Show us your wings. There's a lot of good stuff. The ADR. Some of them are pitched up to make them sound more feminine. Some of them are pitched lower to make uh maybe them sound more masculine. Um, well, it's it's good. It's good stuff. Um, we have a couple of things before we make our big announcement. Yeah. Uh, uh, Patrick, did you get what I sent you earlier for the Hasht big announcement? Hashtag the big announcement. Oh yes, you just want me to show that one thing. Hang on one second. Just the one thing that I said, but not yet. Now we gotta wait. Don't show it yet. No, I know. Um, um, yeah. All right. So, uh, before, uh, so uh, the thing we were going to do before, I believe we have something that someone sent in. Yes. Jersey Davis, uh, uh, telling us. Something that someone sent in. What are you talking about? I'm looking at the private chat. I don't know. Hang on one second. Let me pull up wow. this other thing first. Uh, you're looking at the private chat. Oh, uh okay let me find that hang on that's a fun um, thing. oh wow <laughs> wait something else came in really? that uh is good for that rachel not another picture of me this is good for, it's not another picture of you not another picture of you unfortunately this is in fact a pitch for rachel <laughs> great oh my god fantastic uh-huh i think we're good. From red hawk way who tonight is a uh fan art mvp i'm gonna say it good stuff. i'm not afraid to say it 
It's been a while. Uh, I missed the fan art. What? It's been a while. I missed that fan art. Yeah. Uh, I do not have the one that uh, was told in the chat, but I do have this. Oh, God. Um, Let's see. L A D O N. L A D O N. L A D O N. And Hayden was the dragon. Wait. Oh, they pitched it down. Was I auto I was auto tuned. You You don't sound like that, Patrick. Cool. You did not sound like that on the day. (laughs) Well done. Well done. That's like watching. That's what. That's like watching uh, Han shoot uh, Greedo in self defense. <laughs> right. I don't. Know, I don't know where the other one is. Uh, Jersey. Well, Dave. Ask Jersey Dave. He seems to know, right? Jersey Dave. Do you know where the other one is? Jersey Dave. What part of Jersey are you from? Here we go. Let's bring him in. Hey, you're hey. frozen. There you are. What Jersey part of Happy Oscar from? night? Uh, exit one fifty one. All right. Pretty close. Oh, I'm right there. That's Pretty amazing. Close. Hell yeah. Yeah. What's your oh, mic's order. What's that? What's your Jersey mic's order? Uh, I don't have a. I don't have a go-to. I'll. I'll. Tr- I'll. I'll mix it up. You call yourself Jersey Dave, and you don't have a Jersey mic's order. <laughs> Do you have a Wawa order? What the hell's going on here? I don't like to get the same thing every time anywhere I go. Variety is the spice of life. That's a good point, Rachel. Did you realize that? I'm yeah, not you trusting that? you, Jersey Day. <laughs> you don't trust me? I don't trust you, I don't think. <laughs> Rachel, you'll like this. You want to see something Jersey Dave made? I do. Dave? Do you want to say his name first, or should we show it first? I think you should show it. Okay. Uh, this was made uh, for our last stream. This is oh, Obi- shit. Obi-Wan Kenobi on an Austin Powers body. I don't know why it's not. There you go. Look at him. And what's his name, Dave? Oh, behave, Kenobi. Yeah. Very good. That's pretty you good. won my trust back, Jersey Dave. Wow, just like that. That's, That's all great. it took. Um, um, yeah. The other thing that we were looking for, I, I mean, I could just say what it is. Just yeah. something I saw in the chat. Alice said that she, uh, she sent a, a remix in. Um, so, Alice, I don't know where you sent it, but we, or Patrick hasn't hasn't found it. So I don't see it, Alice. Um, I don't see it. I would have shown it. Oh, wait, is it on Twitter? I'm getting a text from Bryson. Yeah, uh, check the Twitter, Patrick. What What is Alice's Twitter? That is Alice 69. Hi, Bryson. Oh, oh, uh, just shared it. Okay, here we go. Uh, hi, Bryson. Hi, Bryson. Hi, Bryson. Hi, Bryson. Okay, here we go. You ready? Here we go. L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L L L L L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L L L L L L L L L L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N L A D O N
Uh, hello. Hi, everybody. Well, no one say hello anymore. Hey, hi. <laughs> Not when we're confused. Your, what's your deal? <laughs> well, I've removed my eyes so you can't tell who you can, I say you can't tell who I am. Uh huh. Well, it's so nice to meet you. Welcome to the show. Well, I say, well, I'm happy to be here. Happy Oscar night. Mm hmm. Happy Is Oscar it? night. Everything I voted for won. Oh, that's great. I'm so glad. That's awesome. Congratulations. Is that the interview? Is that yeah, it? Big day no, it felt pretty good. Every this time is the first... I got nervous after a while, like something's going to, I said something's going to break my streak. Yeah. Now, this is interesting because I feel like normally you see those anonymous Oscar voters and you're always like, really? That's what you're voting for? But you, sir, anonymous man, everything you wanted got, got picked. I won't Which reveal is... my gender. Okay, good. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, did I call son. you? Did I call you man? I'm sorry. Yes. Oh, I apologize. Um, uh, so you got you got everything. Uh, uh, was there anything that you wish had gotten nominated that didn't get nominated? No. <laughs> so you just had a great night overall. I had a great night. It was a wonderful night for Oscar. Okay. Isaac. Is there anything else you want to say? Patrick, a joke was just uttered. I believe laughter is called for. <laughs> what was the joke? Well, if you could hear a woman when she delivers a joke, <laughs> unless you're some kind of Christopher Hitchens type who believes that only comedy is the domain of men. I don't like this new wrinkle. I said it was oh, a wonderful like night for Oscar. And then yeah. Rachel delivered a perfect punchline. Rachel, you. Rachel, what did you say? I said Isaac. Oh. Oh. I'm so sorry that that wasn't worthy of your laughter, Patrick. I'm just a mere woman. You've had a second chance. A second wait, chance. Wait, wait Rachel, I'm sorry. You cut out. What did you say? I just said word? I'm a mere woman. No, no, no. What was, what was your punchline? I meant the internet cut out. Isaac. Third chance. Oh. Look it up. <laughs> Isaac. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen this much gaslighting since I watched the movie Gaslight. <laughs> Good one. Any more well, questions, Patrick? Yeah, why are you here? I'm an anonymous Oscar voter talking uh -huh. about my ballot. Who just had Actually, a lovely night. What um what is George doing? Because I see his jacket. He left his jacket here. <laughs> <laughs> he went off somewhere. I don't know where he went. Okay. Do you want to call for him? See if he's around? I don't have his number. No, shout his name. George! Oh my God. <laughs> George! <laughs> now, can I ask this? You're you're an Oscar voter, anonymous Oscar voter. What uh what got you into the to be a voting member? Was it something you worked on? I used to act in motion pictures, son. Okay. Oh. Um, any that I would have seen? You like the Space Jams? <laughs> <laughs> I like one of them. Oh, the you like the most recent one? Yeah, I'm a LeBron guy. Yeah. You're in that one? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. No. Yeah. You still had your eyeballs then? <laughs> I have my eyeballs now. I had them removed for this interview. And then you'll put them back on. Well, I'm not going to leave them on the floor, son. Oh, my God. You, had, you put them on the floor to begin with, though? <laughs> Are you looking around for your eyes? I You're have not a... gonna see them. <laughs> You're not gonna see them. <laughs> oh no. Guys, should I go to that in and out that everyone goes to? You should go. It's kind of close. I can't do this. <laughs> okay. Why me? <laughs> I didn't no one did that. It's because the anonymous Oscar voter left. Oh hey, oh, George. George. You just missed the interview. Did he oh. run out? How did you guys pass each other so quickly? <laughs> what do you you mean? put your jacket on really quick. <laughs> really quick. Wow. Well, yeah. I, I like things that go fast. Are you sure? He's going to like bump into stuff in the ranch and knock it over. He I can't like see anything. I things that go fast. <laughs> yeah. I don't know where he went. Oh, my God. Mm. Well, did you hear him? He was calling for you. He was screaming really loud. Yeah, that's why I came in here. There was no one here. Oh. We should probably announce our big, uh, our big announcement, don't you think, Patrick? Yeah. 
Let's do it. Let me uh, let me get this thing up. Um, now we are we are officially cleared to announce this, correct? We have not. Well, no. I'm gonna do the because you don't know what you're doing. Patrick. That's what I'm saying. I want you to do this. I don't. Yeah, want I'll do it. it. I'll do it. Uh, um. So uh, we've been doing a George Lucas talk show for how long, Patrick? Nine years. Nine years. We're we're closing in on a decade of doing this yeah. show in various formats: comedy theaters, live streams, etc. Yeah. And um, and we branched out into some other projects. We put out a record. Rachel uh, has a track on the on the the LP that we put out. We mm -hmm. published uh, published a book. We published the the first half of uh, Bleak House by Charles Dickens. Part two coming soon. Yeah, uh, to be announced. Uh, maybe not this year. Probably not next year. Uh, but we, well, we've got a we've got a lot of work to do on it. Uh -huh. No hurry though. Uh, um, but we started, I started, and you know, obviously I've been working on the museum, but that's going to be another couple of years before that's ready. And so, uh, George Lucas talk show, um, started thinking about, uh, maybe do we want to do something? I mean, obviously we're going to keep doing the talk show, Yeah. but we're going to do something, uh, later this year. And I'm not going to say too much about it tonight. We're just going to plant the seed. Ah, this thing exists mm -hmm. and it's going to be and you'll be learning more about it uh in the coming weeks in terms of where we're gonna try to start uh the journey of this thing but um let's go ahead and uh do you want patrick do you want to bring up that logo all right so the baron and the junk dealer mm -hmm. is an original play that uh, George Lucas talk show is going to be presenting. Uh, and uh, that's and all we're going to say. Yeah. We should also say this is not a hypothetical thing. This thing is going to happen. There is a place that is very close to being all confirmed and locked in. We're just waiting on the official details. And what we'll say is, um, you know, the hope is eventually to get a run of this play, you know, in New York, various other places. Mm -hmm. um, but initially, although we might do some workshopping in New York, uh, which is the home of where we've done the show. Mm -hmm. But um, the, what, where we're, we're ramping up for the play uh, is not going to be anywhere near New York City. Mm -hmm. And that's all we'll say right now. I'm mm -hmm. so excited. Uh, yeah. And so uh, get get ready. And these, this is an original play. I want to be clear about this. This does not feature uh, any characters that don't belong to the George Lucas talk show, certainly. This is not yeah. a revival. It's not a revival. <laughs> this is not. Uh, this is not us t taking old stuff. This is a new play. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be starring me. Going to be starring Watto. We're going to mm -hmm. do this play together. Can't wait. And, um, and we'll let you know more uh, sure. as soon as we can. As soon as we are uh, free to tell you more. Yes. Um, and uh, and it's going to be, I think, a serious work of of genuine theater. I'll say this, I've heard the script and it's genuinely insane that it exists. I can't wait. I'm so excited. What yeah. do you think of this, Jersey Dave? I am excited. I hope I get to see it. I'm a little worried that I won't get to see it. That's a legit worry. Yeah. It is being performed on Mars, so. Yeah. I I well, oops, I'm so sorry. Oh, uh, Rachel. I'm sorry. We I know we have a deal with Tesla and that we're going to do it in this in space. We don't, right. to, we don't want anything to do with that guy. No, joking. we really we we're don't. But We're just joking. We're just joking. But before that, people can see us a couple other places, George. Now's the plugs. March 29th, you can see us at the Caveat Theater in New York That's City. Yeah. There's an early show. There's a late show. Uh, they're both for Jamie there. Lee. Jamie Lee wants matinees. We're doing it for her. Okay, sorry, uh, sorry, Jamie Lee. Um, no, said there's an early and a late. Oh well, early That's meaning what seven. she wants. I'm saying like, oh, oh, Jamie Lee Curtis. Who else? Was, Jamie Lee someone, is all of us, Patrick. Come on. I thought it was someone <laughs> in the chat. Um, no, there's a seven o'clock and a nine thirty. George, is that correct? Yeah, it's uh, seven o'clock is the first show. Yeah. Right. And 9 30 is the second show. But you know what? Come to both. If you're in the area, come to both. It'll be a, it's one full show. The late show is our after dark show. It's gonna be very silly, very fun, really good guests. Um and then the and there's also a live stream available for that show at Caveat. So if you're not nearby, you can get the live stream for both shows and, and yeah. you can get a ticket for that now. And that that's really will be fun. Um 
April 7th and April 8th. We're in London. We are going to be at the Soho Theater. Uh, tickets are selling very quickly for those. So if you want to get those, you should get those very, very soon. Um, and then, look, if you enjoyed the show tonight and you want to donate, uh, uh, there's our PayPal link. Um, a lot of that will go to help with the Baron and the Junk Dealer and future projects. That UK show is not a cheap show, and uh, we really appreciate anything you want to give. Um, look, I will, you, I will also say each that two or three bucks, it really does add up really quick because there's a lot of you watching right now. I will also say that uh, even though I'm a billionaire and I'll be contributing uh, to the cost of developing the the play, the production. Yeah, there probably will be a point. It might be around Star Wars Day where we might have to raise a few dollars to yeah. make sure it can happen. And we will. And we will. It's the day after Rachel's birthday. Yeah. yeah. How, what could possibly go wrong? What could possibly go wrong for for our uh, second annual describeathon and uh, and day after Rachel's birthday post birthday mm -hmm. celebration party? Yes. I'll be working on something, but I will be I will be I will be there. Wow. And and you can't say what you'll be working on. It's a it's a surprise. I can't say what I. I can you say in the private chat what you'll be I working say, on? Yeah, I'll, say, I'll, say, I'll say it in the private chat. Yeah. And I also say that I have unintentionally referenced it a couple times. Oh my gosh, it's wait a second. Guys. Express. Hang on, I'm so sorry. I'm getting a call from someone who was at the Oscars. Oh my God. Uh, hang on one second. Hello? Rachel, did you tell me you Express? <laughs> Hello? Hello? Who's this? Fucking bullshit. Oh no. Oh, Jake Sully. Jake. Oh no, Jake Sully. Jake You're not happy? Oh. I'm sorry. Is on the phone, Jake so Is Rachel's is Rachel what? Is Rachel still on the stream? Yes. Yeah, Jake. <laughs> Where the hell are you, Rachel, Jake? Rachel, I'm sorry. You could not imagine what it was like to be at the Oscars. Don't you Oh, I can't you? imagine. I've been to the Oscars, Jake, and guess what? They let me present. What did you do? I was fucking doing poppers in the bathroom. <laughs> you understand. If you, Rachel, you would never fucking call in to the George Lucas talk show if you were at oh, the theater. Hey, Jake. You would never Jake, do Jake? that. What? Uh, what? She actually did that last year and she actually called in on video. Yeah, I was backstage you and I called in. Fucking visual of are you kidding me? Yeah, she I called in on video. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about visual. Oh my god, Jake, Jake, are you okay? Jake, Jake, are you okay? Jake? Are you okay? Jake? Sorry, it's the whaler. It's the whaler. You gotta stay away from those guys. Jake, no. Oh no, he's on the water. News. He can't hear us. <laughs> Squizzy lost an arm, but he will not quit. Jake, who won visual effects? Avatar. The only fucking award. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's a good one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Who won art direction? I don't know. All fight on the Western Front for what? Showing Germany as it is? We created Pandora. <laughs> on a worry Wait, tribe please. ever heard of them? I, I mean, I yeah, I saw the movie. Jake, it's a celebration of film. Jake, Jake, Jake. First of all, I want to congratulate you on all the nominations. <laughs> George is congratulating you. Oh, hey, Josh. It feels terrible yeah. losing, George. George, how did you recover? How did how I recover? recover? Yeah. Look, when someone when, when it, it's hard when you don't win, but you know they didn't make any. I don't see them making a bunch of sequels to Annie Hall or prequels to Annie Hall. Star Wars ended up winning the ultimate Oscar, which is more Star Wars movies. He does I still make movies, though. Woody still makes movies. You don't. I don't think seems so. like I something you don't want. That was not one of the movies he was in, and now he can only work in Europe. <laughs> Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Jake, did you I get to that, did you get I to heard, the thing I heard is that one guy who's not even <laughs> that famous did a bunch of tweets while having a panic attack. Uh-huh. Yeah. And now he's uninsurable in the United States. Uh-huh. 
Oh. Now, Jake, what did... do I know? I'm just saying I live in Pandora. You live in Pandora. Did you get to run into anyone tonight that you were intimidated by? Like, anyone cool? Yeah, everyone. Oh, that's cool. Andrea Wiseboro. Oh, She's yeah. She's going to consult on our campaign for Avatar 3. Oh, that's great. Yeah, we think we need to go a little more, like, grassroots yeah. on Avatar 3. You got to get, like, Sarah Paulson posting on Instagram about Avatar 3. I, God, we fucking wanted the Paulson post. Uh-huh. uh-huh. You know what the problem is, though? Paulson went to Juilliard. Yeah. Iacon was Yale. Oh, sure. Sure. So it got split that way. Yeah. There you go. Who did I see tonight? Oh, did it? Uh, great question. Uh, Knuckles? From the Sonic movies? Sonic 2, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, isn't he in the post credits for Sonic 1? Am I making that up? No, he's not. Tails is in the post credits. <laughs> wow. Patrick literally was making that up. <laughs> uh, that's great. Patrick spreading that. misinf- using this show to spread misinformation about uh-huh. the post credit sequence in Sonic 1. So it's you saw disgusting. Knuckles. What else? I. I'm at I'm at the uh, Nickelodeon magazine after party right now. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah, it's all the red pandas from Turning Red are here. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Are I'm they nice? Have you talked here. to them Give yet? Me a second. Have I talked? Yeah, I fucking know them. Yeah, oh. we were all up for the same parts for years. Really? Because they're red and you're blue, so that's just a little surprising to me. Yeah, but you know how it's like. You ever heard of colorblind casting? Probably in this tree. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Rachel, yeah. you understand what I'm talking about. Rachel, you that. do better, Patrick. Do better. Frankly, against women and against this, I'm gonna have to go. Jake, this is Wow. <laughs> she should have just left. Wow, she you left. Really, really... Hey, you just left. That was on you, Patrick. You you our our stream has been going for four hours thirty nine minutes. The opening was about sixteen minutes, and then she came on maybe ten minutes after that. So that probably probably four dumb. hours in 20 minutes? Hey, 420. It's so dumb. Um, well, Patrick, look what you did. Who else is here at the Nickelodeon magazine? Yeah, let's hear about some more people. Uh, two of the Wizards of Waverly Place. Oh, that's, they have that podcast that just started up. Yeah. What, what, what's it called? Waverly Place Ladies? Yeah, it's Waverly Place Ladies. That's what, that's what it's called. They're all writing their own oral histories about that show. Yeah, they 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 are turncoats. They went from Disney Channel and Nickelodeon magazine. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, Jenny, who are the biggest CGI stars in the year? Uh, Bob Stewart. Kevin. They're here. Minions Rise of Blue, here of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've heard of it. Uh, Puss in Boots is here. Oh, that's great. Oh. Or any of the... the, the, the... Softballs is here. Jake, you got to get away from that truck, my guy. It's Pyocon. I told you. Oh. Jake, were any of the... Have, have you heard of him? He's I... the Alcast Tulkoon. He kills the V. But George, what are you saying? Jake, were any of the, the German soldiers way off in the distance? Or, uh, are they at the at the after party? They're so far off, it's hard to see. <laughs> yeah, but they look <laughs> real, <laughs> right? The size is limited. Yeah, but they look real. They look real though, from because they're so far away. They look real, but it's like I mean, it's it's sort of clever allocation of budget. You can render people if they're far enough and small enough away. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they they lost. They fucking lost. Wait, did we you won. see Marcel? What did you Was see Marcel? Marcel? The shoes on? Yeah, of course I saw Marcel. I stepped on him. Oh, oh my Jake! Wow. Why would you I do? Lo- this was Marcel's big you- night, Jake. I'm fucking 12 feet tall. Who doesn't know who's boss? Jake, you missed it. Lee Lee Unkrich was on for like 90 minutes, Jake. Uh, well, J- I, Jake Sully, would not care about such a thing. Maybe other people <laughs> you're friends with yeah. would have a lot of questions for Lee Unkrich, but not me, Jake Sully. Yeah. <laughs> we talked about when Toy Story 2 got deleted. Yeah, that once again, a thing that I, Jake Sully, wouldn't care about, and other people you guys might know intimately and might be on a text thread will be asking you about that very soon. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Is Rakakuni at the... As, is Rakakuni at the... Uh... This is a good, stop talking about beta cucks for a second. George is asking a great question, which is, is Rakakuni at the, at the party? 
No, that motherfucker's practical. I don't, I don't fuck with that shit. That's a good point. Um, how many? Can I ask yeah. this? How many? How many Pinocchios are there? Oh my god! All the Pinocchios are there. All the Pinocchios. Oh, sure. Even the the nineteen forties one. Oh yeah. No. I mean, I I don't want to like bring the mood down. He's catering. Well, sure. He had. I mean, he had that comeback this year in Chippendale. I thought maybe he. Also, be... he looks great. I don't. I, I. He may not work as often, but he looks fantastic. I want to reiterate: he's catering. This is a oh. real party down situation. It's depressing. <laughs> yeah. I thought you said cratering, meaning he was not doing well. No, no. you want to know who's cratering? The sea beast. Yeah. Is he having fun yet? No, no, no. Netflix is the sea beast. Thought he was gonna fucking win to us. Uh huh. <laughs> if he's not having fun yet, he will never have fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A lot of people in the chat are saying Pinocchio down. Um, yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah. Uh, 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 Jake, uh, I want to be clear. A lot yeah. of people aren't saying Pinocchio down. One person said <laughs> yeah. it. I don't want you to a get the of, idea. Uh, a lot of people might start saying it now, but this is a self fulfilling prophecy. This is Ethan Run. Ethan Run said it. Uh, once again, I'm at the Nickelodeon Magazine after party. The cast of Coco Melon just showed up. <laughs> That's huge. The rep company from Coco Melon. I hear the part of a poly people. Oh, okay. Jake. That's what I hear. I Jake. hear they're all fluid with each other. Jake, I have a two part question. Anything, George. Anything for you. Um, do you know or do you not know? Just tell me if you know or do you not know the exact number of people sure. who are there. <laughs> The exact number of what? I'm sorry, say again? The exact number of people who are at the party. Just tell me if you know or tell me if you don't know. I know the exact number of people at the party. Um, all right. Uh, let me think if I can phrase this another way. Um, okay. The uh, You didn't ask me what the number was. You just asked me if I knew, and I do know. All right. Well, do you know or do you not know um, how long the party will go at the, the Nickelodeon after party? The Nickelodeon Magazine after party? Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, at least until 3 a.m. Wow. All right. Did Hour you... time. Hour time. Did you, um, did you run into Watto? We saw some footage of him on the red carpet. Did you see him there at all? Oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I you know, he's in for here. Watto is Blotto, but he's here. Oh, Watto is Blotto? That makes sense. Yeah. No, uh, Watto I mean, the guy, fuck it. This is one night a year where he just rips it off. Is he at the party? Oh, yeah. Can you? Can we talk to him? We haven't seen him in a while. Can we talk to him? Just see if you can I get mean, last, Just see if you can get him. He, he just locked himself in the handicap stall. Let me see if I can get to him. Okay. Okay. okay try. Okay. <sighs> yeah. Hi, Watto. Hello. Watto, how are you? It's Hollywood's the biggest tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have fun? Are we having fun yet? Oh, no. Jesus. Party down back on stars. Has it been big? Watto, it sounds like you're cratering, buddy. No, I'm not. Well, I'm catering. Oh, you are? Wait, but they let you on the red carpet, but you're catering? Yes, it's a work exchange program. It's, it's kind of like when celebrities work at the soup kitchen. But what was the exchange? What did they get out of it besides you catering? Fucking star power on the red carpet. But you got there really carpet. early. You got there early. You got there before they even put out the champagne carpet, Wado. Do you know what tar topped out at domestically? No, but I bet Wado does. Six million. Is that true? Wow. Yeah. Dad, now look up the groceries of Phantom Menace in Attack of the Clones. What are they? Fucking Jumongous. Fucking, I don't know. Clones was like 290. Strange uh, Magic made 13.6 million. Like some shit. I don't know. Eat my ass. Strange Magic made two TARS? Yeah. Yeah. How's that for perspective? Yeah, it looks like Strange Magic is winning the Tar Wars. Disturbing. Why, why the fuck are you calling me? What is, what well, no, is we weren't on? calling you. We were, Jake called us. Well, hold on. Piacon is coming through. The You're friends with Piacon, too? 
Of course, who doesn't know Firecon? Hold on, and the outcast don't go. Jer- Jersey Dave has not seen Way of Water. He does not know Piacon. I don't know Piacon. I'm sorry. He's yeah, he's been here the whole time. Hey, Watto. Put Dave on the phone. Yeah, he's here. Can you hear me? Dave. Hey. I'm so sorry. I didn't wish you a happy birthday. <laughs> oh, Watto. Like yesterday, Dave. It was yesterday. Yeah, yeah. I don't know when it was. And Dave, I've been I've been burning the candle in both ends. I Watto do not wish you a Happy birthday. I'm sure the people you actually work with more directly, in fact, took the initiative and started the texter and reminding everyone else it was your birthday. But I want though, for God. Now, Watto, I hear Subway in the background. Are you at the Hollywood Highland uh, subway entrance? Is that where you are? Hey, Patrick, once again, I kindly ask that you eat my asshole. I ought to be established that is not the subway that's the sound of fire crime. Oh, I didn't. I didn't know that Piacon also made that sound. I thought it was just the truck going by. That was the one sound. How about the SM? Yeah, how about we accept the base reality and build off it? How about we just accept that any mechanical sound in the background of the Piacon instead of trying to fucking poke holes in Watto's beat like a switch cheese? Here I am trying to wish Jersey and Dave a happy birthday. Poking holes. I was trying to give you say you were at the Hollywood Highland subway stop. It's not a hole. I'm not, I'm, I'm not in Nickelodeon magazine. He's not the part. I forgot about that. Except for face reality. Oh, forgot. And by the way, oh, I encourage you to tuck a napkin into your collar, hold up a fork and knife, and eat my asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Is Jake still there? Yeah, hold on. Let Let's me talk look to Jake. Him. Okay, hold on. Jake, the nice one in this situation? Oh, no. I think they're in. No, we're in the men's room. What's up? Oh, that's great. Wait, are you guys in there? So, wait, so it's mostly just animated. Is Electro there? Yeah, hold on. Let me check. We haven't talked to Electro in a while. <sighs> Sorry, post nasal drip. Hey, Electro, it's Patrick Electro. from the George Lucas Talk Show. George is here, Jersey Dave's here. Money, 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 money. Money. Remember when I was the star of the biggest movie of 2021? Yeah. Fucking No Way Home? More like No Way to not fucking uh, lose this momentum? Patrick, what do you think of the ceremony? Well, I was watching it on like a 30 second delay on the screen. I thought it was a lecture file. Sorry, fire time coming through. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Brendan Fraser winning best actor. Yeah. Did you find that? Shocking. Not really. It seemed like he was pretty much gonna do it. You know what I mean? Like there, Austin sort of had a chance, but I always thought it was gonna be Brendan. Patrick. Yeah. Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, my guys are real. Live wire. Sure. Was he good? Did you like him? Oh, he was a little, a little too safe in my judgment. But here's what I'll say: that Lady Gaga. Uh huh. A real spot. Sure, sure. Anyone else you want to talk about? Patrick. Yeah, hey, Electro. I'm going to hand the phone to my good friend. Wh- who? Which Electro? Electro? Vis- oh, wait. Uh, uh, Electro. We're Electro. Talking about George Lucas has a car- uh, question. I, Electro, I just want to thank you for all your up-to-the-minute commentary on tonight's events. It, they feel extremely current. Electro? Hey, Electro? George Lucas, I want to thank you for being a oh, grounding force. Yeah. Look at that. Um, you said you were with Vizier and the Ice Dragon? Is he there? Yeah, he's here. Hold on one well, second. Let's talk to him. We haven't seen him in literal years. <laughs> okay, hold on he was one a one timer. <laughs> okay, hold on one second. I don't want to. I keep. 
I keep saying he should come back. I don't know. He feels a little thin. Hold on. Yeah, hello. Hey, Vizarian, is that what you sound like? I can't remember. Yeah, I think so. I think it's something like this. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> well, it's so good to hear your voice again, buddy. It's been a rough couple of years. Why? Oh. Are you not on House of the Dragon? No, I'm not on House of the Dragons. Have you fucking watched it? No. I, my name's basically in the title, and they didn't call me. Wow. Not even for, like, like stunt. And Edward Furlong sitting on the sidelines while they make three Terminator sequels, okay? Sure. Well, he came back for a little bit of stuff. You know, they reused his image for, uh, uh, what was it, Genesis? Oh, you're right. That makes me feel a lot better that they didn't call me to reuse my image. Well, I'm saying on, like, the fourth Game of Thrones spinoff, you'll you'll at least get some money for, for your image. Uh, I don't know about that. Here's what I'm saying. Yeah. Patrick? Yeah. Why don't you tuck a napkin into your collar? Oh. Pull up a fucking knife. Is this, like, a recurring phrase? Like, do people use this? <laughs> My asshole. Wait, I have a second. Hang on. Uh, uh, people are asking in the chat, you're at this cartoon party with like a bunch of uh, CGI animated characters. It's a Nickelodeon magazine after party. It's the hottest thing in town. Go on. Yeah, yeah. So there's probably stuff from like kids, kids or young adult programming there. Like Coco yeah, Melon. The, the cast of All Grown Up is here. Oh wow, they must be in their 40s at this point. Yeah, yeah. The Rugrats aren't here. Did you see? They, um, they it, got into Vanity Fair, but the All Grown Up only the old versions are here sure people are asking if uh the cast of tough puppy uh-huh captain caveman is he there no he's not that's cartoon network oh they don't they don't cross you over no no it's separate companies the cast of as told by ginger is here sure but sometimes like uh you know like uh Nickelodeon's owned by Viacom. Captain Caveman is owned by work, Time Warp. Okay. Yeah, but there are people One who don't work for Vanity Fair and go to the Vanity Fair company. party. Yeah, yeah. Can George Spring. Spring- hang mm-hmm. on, hang on, Vizier. And George is bringing up a great point. People who don't work what? for Vanity Fair go to the Vanity Fair party. Rachel's on her way right now. So, yeah. Does okay. Knuckles work for yeah, Nickelodeon Magazine? Sure. Great question. Vizierian, does Knuckles work for Nickelodeon Magazine? No, he's a movie star. What do you mean does he work for Nickelodeon magazine? Okay, well, if there's movie stars there, look, if there's movie stars there, people are wondering, have you seen Pip from Disenchanted? Is he at the party? (laughs) Is Pip from Disenchanted at the party? That guy's way too big for this party. Really? You yeah, can't try to find Pip there. Far. You can't find <laughs> Pip anywhere. Sure, Pip's not there. Best reviewed movie of 2022. But wait, Fazirian, have you looked down? He's very tiny. Yeah, he'd be on the floor. Yeah, I know. He's a he's an evil cat. We all loved him. The critics loved him. The movie got better reviews than Spirited. Better reviews than Hocus Pocus 2. Uh-huh. It's not like they gave all the other three movies an easy pass and then ganged up on Disenchanted. Uh-huh. But he's not. Here. He's at the Disney Adventures after party. Oh, okay. Are there people from like Netflix stuff at this party at all? Have you seen anybody from like Netflix? Pokemon. Hey, Pokemon. The Co- Boss Baby is here, but only the TV Boss Baby. And I said the whole cast of Coco Melon. Yeah, so the then, wait, can you go look around? Now, this maybe is a little <laughs> more adult than what this party would be, but is uh, is Orko there? Orko from, from Masters, from Masters of, the of the Universe Revelation? Revelation slash Revolution? Yeah. Love him. The Syrian, while you're looking for Orko, I don't know if he's there or not, but I uh, just wanted to share with you, uh, George R. R. Martin has been texting me all night. Uh, he's been sort of writing like his alternate version of the Oscars. Yeah. If it was like, what if the Oscars happened in the Game of Thrones universe? Yeah. Really yeah. detailed. Like, like he's like, this is just for fun, but he's writing like, what would happen if, uh, if they had the Oscars in the world of Westeros? Yeah. Um, sure. but anyway, George R. R. Martin says hi. He's actually putting a lot of effort into it. It's like these are like long texts, and he's been doing it for hours. And he's like, it's just to give him a little break from working on the uh Song of Ice and Fire books. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, yeah, George wanted to no, say no, hi to you, Vasir. No, no, sorry, George. Uh, what were you saying? Just George R. R. Martin wanted to say hi to you. 
Oh, well, I talk to him all the time. You know who was actually kind of popping tonight? You're not going to say think hi, Matt? Here. I, think he, I think he's at the Entertainment Weekly party, the U party. Yeah, who? Uh, Thunder the Barbarian. Oh, Thunder the Barbarian? Oh, yeah? That's like I'm a trying... little, little known character, but I feel like no, it's time for a comeback. This, this guy is coming back hard in 2023. Wow, okay. Yeah, yeah I'm Barbarian. telling you, he was looking on, but he was like a Brennan Fraser there's a Thunder Fox okay. that I think is going to happen. Everyone's talking about this guy tonight. Wow. But now, it does seem like you avoided the question when we asked if Orko was there. Orko's not here. Yeah, maybe Orko's not there. It's not avoiding the question. He just doesn't see Orko. I feel like you didn't even look. I did look. Orko, Orko doesn't, he doesn't play the game. He doesn't care the story. He's a purist about the word. Was Orko there is any... kind of a DDL type. Is there anyone else there we could talk to? Uh, yeah, I think Jared Kushner from Showtime's Our Cartoon President is here. Yeah, let's talk to him. Sure. We've never met this guy. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. Let me put him on the phone. Oh, boy. Remember um, a few minutes ago. I hope I don't go to jail. I hope I don't go to jail. You hope you don't go to j- Jared, hey, I'm. Uh, my name's Patrick. I'm on the George Lucas talk show. We're here with retired filmmaker George Lucas and uh, Jersey Dave. Patrick, I about you. Oh, really? Why? Yeah, you're even worse than me. Oh, <laughs> is that the word going around town? Yeah, anyway, George Dave, two chance you were. Huge uh, I wish I could say the same. Hey. I don't admire you at all. Yeah, I know. I'm kind of the Patrick Cotner of people. Yeah, well. I like that. That implies that Patrick's not a person. I know, I know. I, that was my girl. I'm glad you picked up on it. Hey, Jared, can you do me a favor? What? Are you sitting? Is there like a table near you? Yeah, of course. I'm sitting at the magazine after. Party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're sitting at the table though. Yeah, I'm eating craft macaroni and cheese. Oh, that's great. So, it, was there silverware laid out? Ooh, and napkins. Um, plastic, it was plastic fork and knife. Okay, can and and I'm assuming it came with a napkin, right? You'd have to like wash your hands a little bit or wipe your hands. No, off. there's no napkin. I'm sorry, I can't. No napkin. It. Can you go up to the table and grab a napkin? No, they told me they're. All, uh, I'm sorry, there's no solution. To well, you're gonna napkin. need a napkin for this. Can you ask Vizirian if he can go grab you a napkin? Maybe they like Vizirian more. You want me to ask my friend Vizirian to leave the party and go get a napkin? I feel screwed. I'm not going to do it. No, no, that's not at all what I'm... Jared, you're not paying attention to what I'm saying. What I'm saying I'm is I think... I'm listening to the letter of what you're saying. I think the cater waiters probably like Vizirian more than they like you, and they would give Vizirian a napkin, but they won't give you, Jared Kushner, a napkin. No, it's turned against me. Anyway, Patrick, can you do me a favor? Can you tuck a napkin into your collar take it a fork and knife and eat my asshole? <laughs> <laughs> Jerry Kushner just fucking got you, man. Wow. Can we talk to Jake Sully again? Hey, what the fuck is up? Whoa, he handed you that phone so quick. Yeah, Jared's quick. He's on the move. <laughs> anyway, I think Piacon's coming in a second. I'm probably going to hang up in a moment or something on Piacon. Now, now. You, ha- you haven't gone on a ride with Piacon. Like, you haven't hopped on Piacon at all. That feels weird. It feels like you should probably do that, right? We're friends. Sometimes you watch a movie and people don't share a scene together, but they're on set at the same location for months. Yeah. I also feel like I'm standing by and like four Piacons have gone by <laughs> and I've been not getting on them. And maybe I should get on the next Piacon. For sure. For sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And by the way, I, I, I'm not making a mistake. I'm not saying multiple tall crews have been going by. I'm saying Piacon is doing the lab. The one Piacon, sure. who is the, of course, the outcast of queen. Of course. Well, uh, congratulations, on, congratulations on a wonderful Oscar night, Jake. No, it sucked. It sucked ass. I know it's you know tough. Would, uh, you know it truly is an honor Academy. just being nominated. I would tell the Academy to tuck a nap into their collar, take out a fork and knife, and eat my asshole. Jake, I'm going to tell you how it's probably going to play out for you if 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 my experience is anything to draw on, which is that you're going to take this experience tonight and you're going to go on and you're you're going to learn from it and eventually they'll they'll probably uh, realize that they made some mistakes and they'll give you a Thalberg. Mm. Yeah, let's hope so. I'm the biggest movie star in the world. Interesting. Uh, okay, and- still be on Piacon. Bye. Oh. Can we talk to Jared or someone? Can you hand the phone back to them? It was Jake's phone. He's If he's on a PyCon, mm. then he's not going to just hand the phone. He's going to take the phone with him. I guess that's true. 
Well, Patrick, it does feel to me very much like we've reached the end of our Oscar special. That is my that is my feeling. Probably that is very much the feeling. I get. It almost feels like we're in a very uh, we're we're winding down. We're in the I would say the final few minutes of this show, or it could go on for hours. No, I don't think so. Um, I I think it's a great time to bring up a couple of those QR codes just one last time, just to remind people that that um, the show. Well, first of all, this is one. If you're like, oh no, what do I do with this money I have that I don't want? Uh, you just donate it. That's one way, yeah. and it helps us out. And only a couple bucks. Look, if you want to donate $5, that would be great. If you want to donate $3, that would be great. If you want to donate $50. Some people were donating big amounts tonight, and it was really very nice. And I thank them all. Uh, but, it, you know, it, we will truly, any amount is very helpful. Um, you know, we have we have a lot of big plans coming up in the next few months. And uh, that kind of stuff really does help out a lot uh, more than you know. Because stuff's very expensive now. And uh, it's 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 truly very helpful. And also, uh, Dave's got baby's mouths to feed, you know. So let's help Dave too. Heck of a way right. to say that. Yeah. Um, wait. Uh, also, I I did just want to say that we do uh, have the the merch store is back up. Um, oh, what the hey? Yeah, We're it's good. been up for like almost a year, probably. Wow. <laughs> we just never mentioned it. We never. We get the occasional. I'll get payouts occasionally that i will think split people out. Uh, have yeah. just like you know googled it like hey i wonder if this is still a yeah. merch store um it is if you so if, if you do have extra money that you don't want anymore you yeah. can get something for it too yeah another option also if you're coming to any of our live shows the new york or the london shows we've got a bunch of posters that we're selling uh and we're signing and uh so if, if you want one that's how you get it Maybe we'll sell more online someday, but it's uh, a real pain to ship them. So, um, George, do you want you want to give these last minute plugs for these UK and New York shows? Yeah, let's see the New York one first. Okay, hang on. That's the one that's happening first. We're going to be two, doing two shows on the same night on Wednesday, March 29th, uh, seven o'clock and nine thirty. Uh, the seven o'clock will just be a normal um, George Lucas talk show, just like we always do. Fun, crazy fun. But then, for the first time in person in New York City, we'll be doing a George Lucas talk show after dark. The 9.30 show, it's a weeknight, and we're going to get crazy. And these shows are going to be... We haven't announced guests for them yet, but mm -hmm. I would go ahead and get those tickets before we sell out, because who knows? Sometimes we don't... Sometimes we sell out, and then we announce the guests, and people say, oh my, I wish I had bought the ticket. Yeah, uh, and then the the next shows for people in the UK, uh, we're doing uh, two nights in London at the Soho Theater, uh, just right around the corner from Les Mis. Um, and that is the same weekend as Star Wars Celebration in London. So if you're going to be there for Celebration, uh, come on out. If, or if you know somebody who's going to be there for Star Wars Celebration, uh, all the Celebration stuff happens during the day. So this happens. Uh, is it nine? What time is 9 it? Nine fifteen, I believe. 9.15 Friday night and Saturday night. It's a great uh, idea for people who have had fun at Star Wars Celebration all day and they want to have some more fun uh, yeah. in the, the nightlife in London's West End. Um, and that we're, we'll be in their downstairs space. I believe if I if I looked at tickets uh, a little earlier this evening, there are not very many tickets left for either night. Um, uh, so do not sit on that. Well, if, you're, if you're hoping to go, I would get the tickets sooner rather than later to avoid disappointment yeah and probably our next live stream is probably going to be on may 4th um we're hoping to do our second annual the star wars day to describe a thon yeah and, and we've got that, look, yeah. uh, if some if something doesn't change we've got a cool guest at least one cool guest do we i don't remember this do you not know about this right, hold on let me know in the private chat i will i want to know who this guest is Oh, that is a good guess. That's a good guess, right? But they'd be really good at describing. Probably, yeah. Yeah, and oh, and that also changes the way I feel like because the the balance of describeathon changes every year. I believe. I mean, we've only done it the one time, but I believe like certain aspects will grow, others will shrink. It will never be the same. I yeah. could imagine a describeathon where the whole shape of it is different just based on that that guest. We could describe all the movies in 30 seconds and then have nothing, you know, and then just have a regular show for the rest of it. That's good. This we could. And of course, as we announced earlier, if you want to bring that logo back up on the screen, the Which Baron one? and the Junk Dealer. Oh. 
uh, a new original play from the George Lucas talk show. This is a play. Currently, we're we're workshopping it, getting it into shape for, and we'll have an announcement about where and when. Um, it's very exciting. The Baron and the Junk Dealer. Yeah. Um, and that that logo should tell you a lot. I think um, that we're, we're serious about this. This we want to do a real work of theater. Yeah. Um, and um, this is this is an exciting thing that we've already put a tremendous amount of work into that we think people who here's the audience for this play <laughs> people who love theater mm -hmm. so theater lovers first of all um, people who like the George Lucas talk show I think will really like this play but also people who um, don't know the George Lucas talk show aren't I familiar with it yeah I'm gonna say this this is not a spoiler in any way don't think you need to have watched the George Lucas talk show to get enjoyment out of this. I don't think so either. I, I, I think sort of also don't even think you need to have watched Star Wars to get. Why would that even be a factor? Why would you even I, bring that up? This is nothing to do with Star Wars. It's a completely original play. I know, but you wrote it, so I feel like the appreciation of right, your right, oeuvre, right, 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 you know, right, 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 right. Yeah, right. So uh, get excited, get get excited, um, and. It's gonna be it's gonna be a big fun thing, and yep. we'll get, we'll have more exciting information about it very soon. I promise. You promise? I promise. And with that, the second annual George Lucas talk show, Oscar night, Oscar show, drew to a conclusion. When Patrick said this, before I said something else. The, uh. And and George, I'm just giving you the alley oop to say a final thing, and then I'll oh, say a thing. Man, when Patrick said this before I said another thing. Hey everyone, thanks for stopping by. And that's when I said, "May the force be with you, always."